All right, so we should be live. I'm going to do a quick recap for people that are joining later or maybe rewatching this stream. Uh, also, let me know in the chat if the audio is too loud or the music. I'm going to play some of that in the background, but I'll try turning that down. So in this stream, I'm going to be building out a streaming application. And this is not going to be a tutorial. I'm just coding. I'm going to have the stream on. I'm going to be doing some work here. So I'll just give you a quick recap of it. But for the most part, I'll be watching the chat and coding along here. So if you're looking to actually build something like this, I'm going to be doing a full course on this or not a course, but a tutorial. So I'm actually prepping for that. And basically what I did up until this point was uh, figure out all the components to this application and just made it work for now. Now, the only thing that you're seeing right here is a template. And I spent some time with my designer, uh, Sharir Shuvo. We put together some things on Figma. I sent him some designs here. And this is kind of the process that I want you to see right here. So this whole build process and how I think through this and basically doing all of this from scratch. So yeah, the full tutorial will be out soon too. So uh, essentially, I'll just give you the idea behind this. So last year around, April, I started on the Mumble project and that was an open source project. And oh, let's see, Salamitha saying the music's a little bit too loud. I'll turn this down. If it's still distracting, let me know. So basically last year we started on the Mumble project and it was supposed to be like a social network. In fact, I'll pull it up here. And that just got really overwhelming to manage. It was a lot of work and uh, it wasn't really returning what it was supposed to and it just became me managing prs the whole time so it just got way too much so i i put it aside and it was kind of you know kind of sucked because a lot of people did contribute to that i think we had over uh, or currently we have still over a thousand members in that discord group or at least close to a thousand so uh yeah i just kind of had to put it away because there was no real way to advance it forward and i really didn't see a future with it now uh, i still wanted to do something with it so this is what we're going to end up doing is i'm actually probably going to pivot mumble to this if not we'll just leave it there's not much you can do with it but i really wanted a streaming application like twitch dedicated specifically to developers so this would still kind of keep the theme of mumble where it's dedicated to developers uh Developers can go, go on there and communicate, but basically it's like a Twitch clone, but without all the distractions of the gamers and all the other crap that comes with Twitch. So this is kind of what we're going to do. It's going to be pretty much the same thing as Twitch, except for uh, any developer can start up a room here, create a profile, and you're going to be able to actually bring people on with you. So uh, it's going to be kind of like a Discord or, uh, or not a Discord, but a, like a Twitter spaces or a clubhouse type of application here. In fact, I'll go through the template here. So let's say we try to join a room here. This is what we're gonna see once the, or I guess before the streamer starts here. So you're gonna see all the participants here. You're gonna see a live chat and then some information about the room here. So this is the entire application. And this is what I'm considering making into the new Mumble. So I'm not sure about it. I'm just gonna have some fun with it. We have the template designed here and let's just go into Figma. So I went through Figma and this is where I started up the first design here. So the designs actually aren't finished. You'll notice there's not a lot of icons here. Uh, this is what I sent to Shuvo, the designer who made this. And I sent him these layouts and this is what he ended up returning was this template right here. So this is what he converted. He always makes my designs look a lot better. So he converted it into that. So uh, in phase one, we're going to start with a room and this is just going to be a chat. So. Uh, the first thing I want to do is establish the the connections, basically the sock or the signaling server, so we can actually have real time chat. So as I'm typing, you can get that real time, and all the users can see a chat or see the message come out instead of having to refresh. So we're going to implement real time communication here. We're not going to be using Django channels. I'm staying away from that. Uh, we're going to be using a service called Agora, and Agora is going to provide us with the uh, the video stream and the real-time messaging abilities. So we're gonna work with that SDK. So anyways, these were the designs. And as you can tell, these are my first ideas of it. And I told him, hey, just do something with it, make it look cool. So he coded me up some templates. And uh, at some point I'm gonna implement that template. So we have a chat room right here or a, a room, a form to join a room. So you specify your name, you don't need to be authenticated. And then you're gonna specify the room that you wanna join and you select an avatar here. So. You're going to select an avatar and later on i might add in the ability to upload your own images but for now we're just going to leave it 
bare bones. So again, up until this point, there's not much to this. Uh, I spent probably the last three days uh, just working on every single feature, uh, things like the real-time messaging and then the video integration. So I have a bunch of spaghetti code that I'm actually gonna be referencing. And because I'm putting this together in a tutorial, I actually want to almost do like a pre-run for this. So this is gonna be like that practice run. I'm gonna be referencing the code and I'll just be trying to piece it together. So there's a good chance I'll be doing this for a while. I might get stuck on a few things. Uh, it may even turn into the next 12 hour stream like I did before, I don't know. It could be done in two, three hours though. So we'll see how I go with this. Um, again, I'm not gonna be teaching as I'm going with this. I will explain what I'm doing, but I'm just gonna be coding along. So again, the stack, I'm gonna use React on the front end uh, in the live application at some point. But because I'm going to be teaching a tutorial for anybody that wants to actually look through this, uh, I will put this source code out there. Um, I'm just going to use JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and the Agora SDK for video streaming. And then uh, at some point, I will probably create a Django backend to create some form of authentication. So specifically for users that are creating rooms, there can be a real big issue if anybody can create a room without some form of authentication. Uh, as an admin, I won't be able to block accounts maybe that are spamming or doing something uh, illegal on the stream. So I have to look out for stuff like that. So people that want to stream at some point will need to be authenticating or will, will need to be authenticated. So that's where the Django part will come in. But today it's just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and the Agora SDK. So. Let's go ahead and um, I guess I can leave the, I can, I'll close out the template actually. I'll leave the Figma design and I'll just close out Mumble for now. So the only thing I have at this point is a simple folder on my desktop. I just have this folder called Mumble. I just added in an ENV file to hide my secret token here and we'll just get started from here. So this is complete scratch. So um, yeah, it's gonna be weird because I'm so used to teaching. I'm gonna try not talking to the chat, but I will explain what I'm doing. So let's just go ahead and do this. This is a, definitely a little bit new for me. So yeah, the first thing I'm gonna do is set up some kind of template for the room. So I'm actually gonna start with a room. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention was that in the lobby, uh, when somebody creates a room and starts streaming, they're gonna be able to, uh, anybody in the lobby will see that room automatically input into their template. So you're gonna see a live feed to all the users. So you're gonna only see active rooms and then you're gonna see the member count in the room. So let me try to open that up actually in Figma since I closed out the original design. So right here, so if you go to the lobby, so you're always gonna have the number of people in a specific room. So this is just that Figma design. So this will always show the active rooms. The second the last user leaves a room, uh, the that chat is, or that room will automatically just be removed from the template. And I see someone saying the music's still too loud. Let's see. Okay, I think I have it down pretty much as quiet as I can. Give me a second, let me, uh, let me call my wife, she's watching the stream, so let me see how loud it really is. Hey, is it really that loud? Is it like obnoxious or? Okay, cool. I just see someone saying that, but okay. As long as you can hear my voice, cool. All right, I'm back. All right, I'm trying to make these streams more raw so you're gonna see stuff like that. <laughs> All right, cool. So yeah, let's make a room file. I'm just gonna get this set up here and I'm gonna start with a basic layout. So if I go to Figma here, uh, I'm just gonna create a div for the messages. So I'm gonna first start with this layout here. I'll create a div for the messages and then the participants. So we'll just start building this part out. Go ahead and set the HTML boilerplate up. All right. Yeah, it's gonna be a little weird, I'm gonna be quiet, so. Praveen saying set volume to 2.69. I don't know how to get it to the actual numbers. I'm streaming it from YouTube. Like I'm just, I have a YouTube playlist going. All right, so I'm gonna start with the main template. So we'll just use the section tag here. Actually we can use a header tag for this. Yeah, 
Yeah, you'll see me start slow. If I'm just getting going here, I'm like getting warmed up here. So typos, all that sort of stuff. So I need a CSS file, so I'll connect all this and I'll just build this out piece by piece. Okay, so we get our CSS files, get the main thing going here. And I'm gonna create a section for the sidebar for the participants. So that's gonna be all the members in the room. Let's give that an idea of participants. I think I'll just give that the name of container actually, just in case I have to use that idea again. Okay, so here we have the chat. I'm gonna create some templates for this. So let's create a div here. This will be the actual message. Okay, let's see. So at this point, I'm just going to have the message itself. So I'm not going to add too much. I'm going to have a, a name and the message. So we'll just keep it simple. This will be the username. So we'll just throw in the name right there and then the actual message. And let's start working on the real time stuff. All right. So I'm going to get some lorem ipsum here. Throw this in. No, at this point, I see someone's asking about a framework. There is no framework. I'm just going to be doing all this from scratch here. Okay. Use live server, get this thing open so we can actually start seeing an output. Okay, so we have our header, a message here. I'll put out a few of these and then I'll start designing that. So just copy and paste this a few times. Okay. Now for the participants, let's throw in a few names here. This is going to have the total too. So we'll just do a participants header. And in here, we're just going to throw in paragraph tag. We'll just leave it like that. And we'll just say, let's see, how do I have that in the demo? I think I just said room members or something like that. I'll change it if anything. We'll focus on styling probably last. I'll just do basic styling for now. So we'll use another paragraph tag here. And this is why I hire a designer. I hate the front end portion of things. Not because I'm terrible at it, just because it takes so long and it seems like the least necessary part of an application in the early stages. Okay, so we have our room members, the chat messages. Let's actually get some members out here. This will be all done dynamically later. All right, let's see. So the first thing I want to do is actually want to have a, like a little active button so it looks like the user is actually active in the room so i'll just do something like this where i'll have that green and then just the user's name oh that's going to be just the icon So mumbles in a mumbles in limbo right now. It's not exactly alive or dead. I guess right now it could be. It seems pretty dead, um, but I don't know. We'll see if this thing works out. If people take to it, uh, we'll we'll reactivate it, and this will be the new mumble. If not, then whatever. We'll just let it go. Um, I don't know if I'll open source this thing though. We'll see. At some point, I might start it like this, where I'll just have it as my own project. I'll let people test it. And then if it actually starts going, I'll open source it, but I'm not going to do what I did last time where all I had, all I had time for was just to manage a bunch of PRs. That was, uh, that was ridiculous. Okay. So let's link this up here. I've got a main CSS file too. So
Okay, and this is gonna be room. Throw this in the styles folder. Right. So let's split the screen here. Okay, so I'm gonna get some styling for the header bar too. So we'll just say now for this. I wanna start setting the dark colors just so it seems like it's a little, looks a little nicer instead of seeing that white there. And I am gonna have to pull in some colors from the template that my designer set up. So let me take a minute and grab those. All right, so let's see, background color, we'll set this to 1A, 1A, a black, give that a height, just do about 50 pixels. And I'm gonna set some body styling too. Let's do that real quick here. So I'm actually gonna import pop, uh, pop in as a font. Wow, what the hell happened to my voice there? So let's go ahead and grab that. I'm just gonna paste that in. So bring in Poppins, I got that from Google Fonts. Just threw that in. Uh, and then actually set the fonts for the entire site. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, so I actually want to also set the entire body background too. So for the body, uh, let's just do the background color. We'll do the same thing that we did in the navigation bar. Then for the actual color of all the text, I want to make sure that this is white here. All right, let's see what other main settings I want to configure here. So. Uh, let's set the default font size. Let's make that 14 pixels, actually. I'm going to do 16, but once I started putting out the messages on the sidebar, that got a little bit ridiculous. So let's just do padding zero and then margin zero. All right, so let's see. Cool, that looks a little bit better. Let's set some kind of border between the navigation bar too, though. Make sure that it's more visible. So someone's asking why I'm not using a framework. I am gonna use React on the front end. It is gonna make things a lot easier, but for now, while I'm doing the initial setup, I don't know when you join the stream, uh, I'm just, trying to piece together all the components. When you're working on a project like this, there's so many moving parts to it that I don't want the distractions of a framework specifically for anybody that's gonna watch the tutorial later on. So I don't want those distractions. So I wanna be able to just do everything completely raw. And then once you actually see some kind of integration with something like React, it's gonna be uh, a lot easier. It's gonna make your life simpler, but that way I'm not limiting it to anybody. Okay, I'm just trying to get the border color. So we'll just do border bottom and I'm just gonna do that for, or set that to one pixel here. And we'll just make that black here. Okay, so we have that section. Uh, now let's start with the layout. So I'm gonna put in some borders to that participants section. So we have this participants container and I wanna add something to that. So let's bring that in right here. Okay, so we have the container and I don't remember what color I used for that in the original design here. Here we go. So border right. I 
once there is a border. Why is the black border at the bottom of the navigation bar? Did I throw that all in one? Okay, so let's try this out. So let's go ahead and get the entire container. Display grid here, we'll use grid. And we'll just do grid template columns. And we'll just do 200, I think. We'll just do 200 pixels for now for the first one and then the other side, we'll just do like 800 pixels. We'll just make everything static for now. This is pretty challenging on one screen actually, because I keep having to refresh. I can't just jump around or I can't just code on one screen and then watch it on the other. Uh, no, this is not with Django channels. Somebody's asking about that. Uh, that's, you could use that and you could do everything raw with WebRTC, but I'm not going to go that route. I'm definitely going to teach it at some point, but I'm not going to spend time integrating that because scaling that out is going to be insane. I definitely don't want to do all of that. So, oh, I put the border bottom on the wrong section. So that was supposed to be on the nav bar. Where did I put that? Oh, I put that on the body tag. That wasn't supposed to be there. Okay, so here's the layout. We have the members, we have the messages. So I'm gonna style these messages, make it look more like what we had in Figma. So we'll just do something like this. We'll just create a chat box here and then we'll uh, start building that out. So let's see, we have the message container. And let me just jump back and forth here. So chat container, message wrapper. Okay, so that's in, hold on a second. Where was I writing all that CSS? Oh, that was in main. Okay, cool. So in this case, I need to grab these two right here and put those into room.css. Okay, message wrapper. All right, I did have a background color for the actual chat box too, or the, the actual message. Okay, here we go. So it's this hex right here, let's set border radius, we'll make the corners round, set that to, I don't know, we'll do 10 pixels and we'll just give it some padding, do 10 pixels all around. And let's set some margin. So we'll just do margin top. So margin top and we'll just do 10 pixels. Again, this is not gonna be the final design. I'm gonna implement the actual design later. Okay, so message wrapper that's in room. Did I import this room CSS file? I did. It's supposed to be room, not rooms. Okay, so here we go. We have some messages. We'll get the chat box or the actual participants here in a second. So that's going to be back in room.css. Let's see, so let's first create that green dot. So there's a shade of green that I wanted to use. So green, actually I'll just paste that in. So we'll just do height and width. I think I can do 10 pixels here. We'll just do background color. And there's a certain shade of green. Let me find that real quick. Here we go. Okay, so that's the hex. Then I wanna make that a circle. So instead of using some kind of icon, we'll just build it out ourselves. So border radius, and we'll just do 50%. Okay, so I'm gonna need to add in some kind of spacing here. So let's see, member wrapper. So I wanna make sure that it's not aligned against the wall right there. Added that green dot to the wrong section again. Close out main right here. Just 
just add in some margin. We'll just do 10 pixels all around for now. Okay, height, width, background color. Is that not called green dot? Try doing display block, even though know, that shouldn't change it. But okay, there we go. So uh, let's just inline these real quick, so the actual blocks or the dot is right next to it. So we'll just do member wrapper, and we'll do not, or we'll do display flex, not block, and then we'll just set uh, justify content. Let's add in space between, and then align items. I want to make sure it's centered vertically too. I guess we don't want space between, we'll just do like that. Okay, cool. So that's our first horrible layout. Let's go ahead and actually start integrating this. So at this point, what I'm gonna do here is we're only gonna have a single room. So we're gonna be able to create multiple, room, multiple rooms later, but the first thing I wanna do is actually implement the chat section. So I'm gonna have to add in the Agora SDK. I'm actually gonna have to download that and then or download the uh, yeah, I guess the SDK itself and then start implementing that. So we're gonna have to configure a few things. So if you're gonna follow along again, this is gonna be in a tutorial anyways, but here's where I can actually find that. So I'm gonna have to go into my Agora console and find the SDK for real time messaging. So we are on web here. So there's different platforms we can work with. We need to find video, real time messaging. Okay, let's get this. And here it is, okay. So I'm just gonna drag that into the JS file. I guess I couldn't just drag it like that. Here we go, real-time messaging. Uh, that autocomplete preview, somebody's asking about it. I have no idea. I was messing around with uh, with VS Code and somehow added that in. Um, if you go to VS Code and go into settings here, so go into settings or preferences, I think, and then settings. There's a bunch of settings like that. I don't know what I clicked on. <laughs> so yeah, it, it just started doing that. I just guess kind of kind of don't mind it. So I left it like that. Okay, so I'm gonna throw in the RTM SDK. So that's what we needed. I'm gonna throw that into the JS file and I'm just gonna go ahead and import that. So let's copy the name, bring that in at the bottom of this page. And I'm gonna put that outside of the body. All right, so we're going to be writing a lot of JavaScript. So the next thing I'm going to do here is create a file specifically for this page. So we have room.js. I'm going to start using this right here. So let's go ahead and bring that in. And for the type here, I'm going to set this to module because I'm going to need to make an import. I'm going to be using a variable here or an environment variable. And yeah, I just need to set that. So let's just do source. And this is going to be room.js. Okay, so let's see here. All right, so let's go into room.js or yeah, not CSS room.js. I need to make some configurations. I'm trying to figure out what demo I'm working with. I keep seeing the template and then the actual original stuff that I was building out before this. Yeah, Agora is paid. I think they charge for like, I don't, I think you don't get charged until you have like 10,000 active users daily. It's, it's like ridiculous. They give you a, a lot of free usage. So I wouldn't worry about that. You're going to be, you know, in most applications, you're going to have a lot of time for testing and even using before you actually get charged for the, uh, the messaging side of things. Okay. 
Oh, I didn't mention JS. I thought, okay, good call. <laughs> I would have ran into an issue there. So JS and then room. Good call. Thank you for that. I thought you were just spamming the chat there. Cool. Okay. Let's see. So the first thing I need to do is set up the app configuration. I just need to find the right demo because I just finished setting all this up recently. So I need to open up the actual thing, the project I was working on before. Okay, so for the configuration, the first thing we're gonna need is our app ID. So I created an app on Agora already, and that can be done from your console if you're gonna do that. Uh, basically in here on the Agora, on in your Agora account. Let's see. So in this section, when you create an app, you can go ahead and go in here, create a project. You're gonna have an API or an app ID. Um, in this case, I'm handling authentication with an app ID only. So I'm not gonna need a token or anything like that. So that's the only thing I'm gonna use here. And I actually put this inside of my ENV file. So just so no one sees that and can't just start using my account, I'm gonna hide that, but I am gonna make that import here. So that's just gonna be a string like this. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. So let's go ahead and import. We're gonna do app underscore ID because that's how I had it saved. And we're gonna do from dot env dot js. And we're just gonna set the app ID. Okay, so where did I have the env file? I guess I should throw that into the js file right here. Cool. Okay, so we have the app ID, got that set up. Uh, I'm also gonna need a token, or at least I need to set the variable. So we are not going to be authenticating with a token. So I can actually leave that as null. And let's see. Next thing we'll need is a UID for the user. Now for this, I'm just going to go ahead and generate a random ID. So I'm just going to get a number between what or between one and two thirty two. So we'll do math dot four. And in this case, we're going to do math random and we'll just do 232 and I do want to make sure it's a string uh, it's going to throw some issues if I don't do this for RPM specifically so we're going to convert that into a string so that's the user ID now um, let's see I also need a room name so in Agora they call these things channels so I'm just going to call it a room channel name it's kind of interchangeable read in the chat someone's saying you told to make audio chat room uh there is going to be an audio chat feature in the actual live project i'm going to do video and audio chat so it'd be the equivalent of like clubhouse or uh, twitter spaces okay so for the room name um what i'm going to do here is i think i'm just going to try to get the room name from the url so if a user adds in a room name like as a parameter we'll get that room name if not we're just going to leave the name as default for now so actually at this point let's just do default so that's going to be the only room name so that's just going to be a string we'll set that value there okay so let's see got the room name and at this point let's go ahead and start initiating this so create a function here called initiate Make it an async function. Yeah, someone's asking if this is going to be accessible. It's going to be a full course or a full tutorial soon. Like this is just me prepping for that. And at the same time, working on the potential new version of Mumble. So I'm just kind of hanging out here and coding along. So yeah, it will be available, but this is more casual anyways.
see. How many people do we have in the chat? 67. Cool. All right, let's go back to this initiate function. So right away, when someone loads this page, we want to call this function. So it's going to initiate everything. So we're going to go ahead and trigger that. And the first thing I need to do is set up a client. So we'll just call it RTM client because we are going to have, we're going to use something called RTC too. So RTM is for the signaling and the messaging. RTC will be for the real-time communication, which is video here. So we're going to create a client. That's the first thing we'll need to do. This is all in the documentation. I'll go over this in the first course or in the actual course here. So go into Agora RTM. I have access to that because I added in the SDK right here and we added that into the room. And we'll just say create instance. Okay, so in this section, we need to throw in an app ID. So we have that, I imported it. I should be ready to go if I imported that correctly. And then just add in or set up the client. So once we create it, we need to log in. So we'll just do login. And to log in, typically you just pass in a UID. So your user ID, in this case, it's gonna be randomly generated. And then we can throw in the actual token. So because we're not, we didn't set up our app to handle token authentication, it's just gonna be null. So that doesn't really matter at this point. We could leave that as blank. It all depends on how I set that up. So, or how I set up the authentication system. RTM client, we're gonna create a channel here. And the channel, we're gonna to have to throw in a room name. So we're gonna throw in the room name to create the channel. That's called default for now. We'll get that from the actual URL later. And let's join the channel. All right, so let's see. Join the channel here. And at this point, I actually want to be able to send some messages to users. So we join the channel and I can send a message right away. So I'm going to go back to this page right here and I'm going to add in a form at the very bottom. So let's see, room container. container will just add in some kind of wrapper around it I don't know if I'll need it but oh thanks for the donation Mike appreciate that <laughs> for the haircut are you saying I need a haircut or it looks good can't tell if you're complimenting me or talking crap. <laughs> okay, so we have some kind of message form here. Did I close that out? Oh, it's somewhere here. So this is eventually going to be on the bottom right here, kind of like you would see in Discord, or I guess in this chat here. I'll close out a few of these. Okay, so the form is right there. I'm going to make sure to change that up a little bit okay form container let's style that i'm gonna do form underscore container and display that as fixed here or position fix not display And let's just put that at the very bottom. kind of hard to work between the styling that I have and then trying to make it up on my own because I'm trying to follow the same practices that I ran through earlier. And then my designer went through and added his styling. So I'm trying to remember all the conventions, all the colors, and that's actually making this harder than it's, you know, it's actually making it 
more difficult while as opposed to you know it's supposed to make it easier i don't know why i couldn't say that so yeah it's kind of interesting that's a background color to the actual form itself Is the music still too loud? I mean, I don't know. It's, it seems really quiet to me and I had Salamitha check and she says it's fine, but I don't know exactly how I'm supposed to control that from here. Let's see. You know what, I'm just gonna hard code it right for now. I'm just gonna set the left positioning to some kind of value. We'll just do, I don't know, 200 pixels just to have it placed more in the center. Okay, so there's our messaging form. And at that point, it's pretty much ready to go. Okay, we can see some text here. So let's change up the color. We'll just do white for the message. Okay, so music's good, perfect. Okay, cool. So we have our message form and now it's time to start writing some messages. So let's go ahead and add an event handler to this. So we have our form, the message form itself and in room JS here, let's see, we initiate this and then I'm gonna need to add the actual event handler to it. I'm gonna create all this inside the initiate function. Okay, so when this form is submitted, I'm actually going to make sure it's required too. So we'll wanna make sure no one submits this with without actually adding something. So it's going to be a required field. So on submission, let's go ahead and actually process this. Okay, let's see. How did I want to put that event handler there? So message form, and then we'll just do send message. So I'll make that into its own function and we'll create that function right here. I'm just going to by default make everything an async function. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I've never streamed with OBS. I'm just doing a, using StreamYards right now. I probably should change and so I can actually customize things a little bit more. But for now, StreamYards is simple enough for me to use, so. I record with OBS all the time. So if I'm actually doing a tutorial. Okay, so with this channel, now that I created it, I can use the send message function and you can send messages directly to other peers and you can also send messages to everybody in the channel. So if we have, let's say 10 people that joined this specific room, they're all gonna call this initiate function, which is gonna go ahead and create the client, create the channel and join it. As long as the room name is the same, we're basically taking this channel that we created and we're gonna send a message to everybody in that channel. Now on the other end, uh, this is all gonna happen in real time. They're gonna have an event listener that's actually gonna retrieve the, this message. And then that's when we can add in some functionality to output the message itself. So let's go ahead and use the send message function. So we'll just go ahead and do text here. So that's gonna be the actual text of the message. And because I wanna pass in an object, I'm gonna to have to do json.stringify. So I'm actually gonna stringify the message itself. 
and then I'm gonna have to parse that on the receiving end. Okay, so we prevent default, get the message, we send it, and then I actually want to add this to the DOM, but we'll do that in a second. So once the message is set or sent, we'll just do e.target reset. Okay, let's go ahead and try this. So to get the message, we're gonna need to add in a channel message event listener or callback. So we'll just do channel.on. And this is like a normal event handler where you can add in like on submit, click or whatever. Uh, in this case, the Agora RTM. See, everyone's asking to turn down the music. Is it really that loud? I'm confused. It seems fine to me. I mean, I'm listening to it, so it makes this feel a little bit better for me. I'm gonna leave it on unless Lamita says it's too loud. So let me know if she thinks it's too loud. I'll let her decide that. Okay, so channel.on channel message. So that's the event that we're listening for. And this gets triggered anytime this function is called. So on channel message, what do we want to do here? I'm just going to go ahead and call the function. Let's see. Let's meet the same. It can be turned down a little bit. Okay, let me know how that is. Okay, so on channel message, we're gonna get the actual message. So we'll just call that message data. And then I'm gonna get the member ID. So I wanna know who sent it. Okay, hold on, I gotta hear this music because this seems fine to me. I, I'm actually gonna go downstairs and see what it sounds like on Solomita's computer. Give me a second. Okay, so apparently it was pretty loud. Huh, I don't know how to turn that down. Let's see, maybe I can go into StreamYards and set these settings. Because it seems really quiet for me. All right, I'll just pause it. to reshare the screen itself then. Okay, there we go, no music. Gotta get rid of the headphones then. Now I have to work in awkward silence and I never do this. I always have music on when I code. Okay, let's see. So channel message, message data. So we pass in the message, get the ID. All right, let's get the data then. So we'll just parse that. So I sent it as a stringify or I stringified it. So we'll get the data based on the stringify. And in this case, we're going to pass in data or a message data dot text. So that's the part that I want to get. That's the stuff I'm going to parse what's oh man this is gonna kill me i'm confused i turned off the music what you're saying i need to do yeah sure i'll do that we'll see how it sounds okay okay cool so all right, parse the data. And let's just console this out actually. Let's see this. So we'll do console.log. Okay, so at this point, if I open up two tabs here side by side, they're both going to join the channel. Let's check the console. So we're not going to actually see the message pop out yet. We're just going to see it in the console if everything was done correctly. Let's see. I need to fix that environment variable.
Let's see, what do I do wrong here? Yeah, so both of us, Lomita and myself, speak Russian. I see someone's asking in the chat. Okay. Okay, so that should fix the issue. There we go. Okay, so if I write a message here, I should see it on the other side right here. So let me just hide this. So you see I have two tabs open. Now if I'm messaging, I can actually see the message here. So that looks good. The other user is actually getting it. So it's not actually being output in the DOM here, but we're gonna go ahead and build that in right now. So it clears it and it's all happening in real time. The other user doesn't have to refresh it. They're just seeing the actual output. Someone's asking, what kind of coding are you trying to do? Uh, I'm just recording myself prepping a course right now. I'm just doing a, like for the project itself, this is gonna be a live streaming application. I have a lot of the demo kind of figured out, but I'm just piecing it together and I'm going through and doing this again, like just for repetition right now. And I figured out just stream. So I know a lot of people are probably confused because I'm just talking nonsense, but, uh, this is supposed to be, I guess, more for me than anyone else. I'm just kind of letting everyone in on it. So, oh, and I'm supposed to parse this, not stringify it. There we go. That's why I look funny. Okay. So the message is sent. And what I'm going to do here is add another function and I'm going to call it add message to DOM. So we actually want to output this. So we'll bring this just above our send message function, add message to DOM. And this message will be in charge of actually outputting it or outputting the actual message let's see so i want to do this okay so at this point let's go ahead and get the messages wrapper so in our room i should have had a messages wrapper somewhere here chat container message wrapper let's just throw this into the chat container so let's just grab it like that so we'll do document dot get element by id and let's just call this, let's see, I'll just call it messages like that. Okay, so that section is called messages now. Okay, I'll by ID, and then we'll just call this. We're going to get the wrapper, then we're going to get the actual message. Now for the message itself, we're going to create the DOM element. Here, let's do this. Let's grab this message right here. Throw that in here, and then we'll just change the actual contents of it. So the message wrapper, then we can get the member ID. And for the message data, that's just going to be the text here. So I can remove that. And we'll just throw in the variable. And here I'm just going to throw in the member ID. Someone's saying it looks like you're trying to build a website. Yeah, I was. I guess I wasn't sure about the question itself. Yeah, I'm gonna be using Django, but like way at the end of this. Right now, I'm just gonna get the messaging part, get all the real time stuff ready, and then we'll actually output, or then we'll actually build in like a backend with authentication. That's the only part I'll need Django in. Messages wrapper. So once we make it, we'll just do insert adjacent HTML. And what I'm gonna do is let's see. This is going to be before end. So I want to make sure that the message appears at the bottom and then we can pass in the message item. So I'm going to change this variable name to message item, throw that in. And at the same time, 
the messages container, let's see. Hold on, I'm looking at some code and it does not make sense and what the hell I did here. So this is code I wrote yesterday and it already doesn't make sense. Okay, so here, we'll do that in a second. So here's, we'll take that message, we'll append it to the DOM. Now what's gonna happen here is as I send a message, I want the current user to actually see the message. So in this section, we'll actually pass in the message and then I wanna throw in the member ID. Okay, so in the add message DOM, we're gonna pass in the message I, or the member ID called the send message function. Oh, this is the current user's ID. So I'm the one as a user sending the UID here. So we're gonna append it to the DOM. That message is basically gonna call the add message function. We're gonna get the wrapper, throw in the message and add it. But we also wanna call this right here in the in the event handler. So when the other user receives a message, we want them to also append it. Now in here, they're gonna take the member ID. So I need to throw that in like that. So I can remove that console, the console log there, and let's test this out. So let me refresh it. So as a current user, now I'm seeing the message. I can see that appear here. And what I wanna do is also make sure that the, the actual scroll bar gets added to the bottom or that the entire page adjusts right away to where we see the message at the bottom here. So let's do this. Let's take the message container and let's just make sure that there's no overflow. So it turns into a scroll bar if we have it. Okay, here we go. So I want to make sure that this is scrolling. Let's grab that at the bot at the top here. Okay, so that should automatically make sure that the scroll bar changes. That should be on the message itself. Okay, let's just grab this, we'll bring it down here. That'll be in the add message to DOM function. There we go. Okay, cool. So we see the user's ID. And if I refresh it, the user's ID is going to change. So we have the messaging. Now, let's go ahead and do this. Let's get rid of the placeholder data. And this is the first part of this application here. So let's see. The first, I guess, cool part is the fact that we can see live messages. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on on one side. Get this going on the other side here. Let's join the room. Okay, so check this out. So at this point, <clears throat> we'll send a message and no, I didn't send it out on the other side. Let's see what's going on here. Message receive function maybe didn't trigger. Callback function, channel message is not defined. Okay, let's see, room.js right here, channel message. Data, so it needs to be data, not message itself. Okay, 
Okay, so in the add message to DOM and the channel message, I need to actually pass in the message itself. So not all of that data. So this is that autocomplete thing is actually really bothering me. Okay, now let's try it. Here we go. So now if this user wants to message back, we'll just message back and forth. And we're seeing that. So it's all real time. Uh, that's the first part of this. So the next thing I'm gonna do, and we'll actually output username. So right now you're, we're, just, we're just seeing the user IDs. But we want to actually see the uh, the participants, so the user names and then the actual participants here. So for some reason, this user has the ID of 98. So this is 62. And then this user has the ID of 189. Okay, that looks right. So 189 sent it to 62. Okay, cool. So let's list out the participants now. So let's go ahead and open this part up. Okay, let's see. So as the page loads, I want to be able to do this right away. So we're going to replace all these default participants right here. Okay, give me a second, actually. Let me get someone on the stream with me right now. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen for like two seconds because I wanna make sure that I don't show anything I shouldn't. I'm gonna open up my Slack here and it's for work, so I don't wanna, I wanna make sure there's no private information there. Okay, cool. We'll go back to the stream here. Okay, so let's see. So there's another callback we can trigger, and this is going to be called member join. So we have the channel message. That's when someone sends a message message to the channel. And at this point, we're going to do channel dot on, and this is going to be member joined. So that means that when someone joins, so anytime they call this join method, every member in the channel is going to get some kind of alert. It's all going to happen in real time. So this is how we can actually see them uh, output here. So let's go ahead and make this an async function because we're going to have to make a call here. And we're going to get the member ID. So we want to know the member that joined. So that's going to be passed in. And then once they join, let's see. What I'm going to do here is add in a function that's going to go ahead and actually make this call and add the user to the DOM here. So. We'll add the function right here. Okay, I'm gonna have somebody join me in the stream here. So I'm gonna have to put in my headphones. Okay, whenever he joins, I'll bring him on. Okay, so we're gonna add a participant to the DOM. We're gonna pass in the member ID. So that's gonna be thrown in. So when we actually call this function on member join, let's go ahead and throw in the member ID. Pass it in right there. We'll make that an async function too. Okay, first we want to get the member wrapper. Oh, hey. Hey, man. How's it going? Uh, 
Okay, I saw, I saw I added you to the actual stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You got some free time? Yeah, just, uh, you know, the casual morning, the usual morning of just losing crypto. So. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. So, so you're building the Twitch app, right? The Twitch, like, yep. live streaming sort of application. Did you just start it this morning? Yeah, so I got most of the functionality kind of figured out. Um, I was doing that for the last, like, three days. And then uh, right now I'm just like, hey, let's just live stream it, kind of let people know about it. Let's see if I can finish in a day. But yeah, we'll see. So this is technically all going to be from scratch because the code I have prior to now is all just dummy code. Man, yeah. so like a whole app like that from scratch, like, you know, Twitch took like, I think, years to build. And oh, it ain't, it's not going to be that quality. <laughs> uh, you gotta, I, think, I, I think like with Agora and everything, you could get pretty close. I mean... Not obviously not as not day as one. Switch, but like, yeah, yeah, exactly. How much have you how, how much have you done now? So, you want to see like like what I did in the stream so far? Yeah. Oh, pretty, nothing. The app looks like crap right now. But <laughs> all we have is some real time messaging though. So I just I just got that part in, and I worked on the template a little bit. So we just built that in. I'm gonna add in participants here, and then I'm gonna start adding in names to the messages. And um, if you actually want to see the design, let me pull that up here real quick. I uh, actually have a full template. So I spent some time in Figma building it out. I'm mm -hmm. so zoomed in, I can't even see anything. <laughs> Here, let me just show it to you. Yeah, it's kind of weird because I'm so used to going into like teacher mode. Like I'm yeah. so used to just like saying everything that I'm doing. And then now I'm like, like telling myself, shut up, Dennis. You're just, you're streaming and you just happen to be, or you're just coding and it happens to be live and that's it. Like, so I have to like convince myself not to talk <laughs> the entire time. It's really weird. And then I try to have music on. And everyone, you know, told me to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's see. Um, shoot, I had it here somewhere. But, I mean, like, what you built there looks already pretty pretty sweet for, what, have you been going for, like, an hour now? Just starting? Uh, yeah, an hour and eight minutes. Not bad. Okay, here, let me... Uh... That is oh. hilarious. So, I it looks like I deleted somehow. I deleted bunch of the files that's so funny okay i i overrid the here let me get it from my let me clone this project real quick so oh wait never mind i was pulling up the wrong one here we go it was mumble template so it's called mumble yeah like so i'm basically replacing the uh the original mumble project at least most likely so here let's um so here's your lobby right it's supposed to look like twitch yeah so here's your lobby. I kind of had to throw something in the top here because we're not going to have a crap ton of users right away. But when you get on here, you're going to see all the rooms live. So basically, like as the room count updates right here, like you see like 135 watching, that's all going to be updated in real time. So anybody can start a stream. If I try to join one, like if I want to create a room, all I have to do go, is go here, select a room, select an avatar, which I'll probably let people add in like their custom logo later. And then um, if I go to an actual room, so that's, this is where the stream is going to be displayed. And here's going to be the live chat right here. So that's pretty much it. Like you're just going to see participants. Yeah. But the whole cool thing about it is because it's uh, it's basically going to be tailored to developers and all that. You're going to see all this without the nonsense of what Twitch has to offer. But definitely a challenge doing this live, man. It's like your brain just shuts off in areas. But yeah. I mean, you're like an expert on on all this live coding, but so what was that that you opened? Like, was that uh, oh, something so, you built before with eight? Like, yeah. So this is just a okay. So this is the template. So basically, I I did the Figma designs and I sent them to my designer, and I just like I paid him to code all this out, like the actual layout. Um, all this functionality I've done at some point already, just not in this layout. So it actually is functional. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't. You want to actually test it? You want to try that? Yeah. Here, let's sure. do this. I'm going to close out all these tabs because this is starting to distract me. <laughs> so here's what I built in the demo here. So I can, um, it, I guess it won't work because uh, I won't be able to actually send you a link because it's not deployed. I guess I could do something like ngrok, but here, let's just start this. I think it's a good idea though, because I, I mean, I've twitched, I, I've streamed on Twitch like a little bit um but there's just so much other stuff and it's not catered towards developers at all so i've seen some cool people some people do some cool things on twitch with develop like development streaming but um 
Yeah. It's, it's just different. It's a challenge. Like I said, you're competing. You're trying to keep people in a learning mode with all these, you know, gaming things going on. Like it's pretty distracting. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to throw in my name. Um, let's just uh, throw in like, let's learn to code or something. So this is that demo that I was actually working on. So this is actually functional. So I have to select an avatar in order to make this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At some point. I don't know. Honestly, dude, I don't know anything about that stuff. Hold on a second. I think because I'm on live server, it's not going to work. Let me try to close out everything here real quick. Just because you're streaming, things don't work when you stream. Yeah, that, that actually could be the case. Weirdly, I got it to work before, but maybe it won't do it right now. So let me. No, yeah, let me... Right, every time I've tried to. Oh, you're like, saying like, because I'm. It just, it just brain goes like numb. Don't remember because, anything. <laughs> yeah, because it's a live stream. Yeah, well, sometimes it does kind of interfere with the actual audio or the, the video feed. No, like, true. Like, because I'm streaming on StreamYards and then I try to do this, you know, from. Oh, yeah, because the camera input and everything. Right yeah. Now. Okay, I was hoping it didn't show like my app ID or something right away. So I had to hide that. Okay, so it's on live server. Let's give this a test. I'm going to open this up in a new tab. We're going to go to host room, select an NFT. <laughs> and then we're just going to say, let's learn to code. Okay, so check this out. So this lobby right here, like right now, like this is why we added in those placeholder images. Because right now, if there's no room, it just looks like crap. But the second I join, you're going to see the room appear right here. So I didn't I didn't select a thumbnail, but it says one join. So if I like try to s share this link with somebody, so if I'm trying to join, I obviously can't select a room name, but I'll just select another NFT, and I'll just say uh, the das here. So right away, that room count is going to update, and now we can see two members in the room here. Yeah. Hold on, let's see this. So this is oh. what I got going. Like the design isn't as good as what my designer made here but it's working so like at this point i guess as the uh, so first of all let's actually try the chat so if i start chatting here go to the other guy here so there we go you can kind of see everything displayed and then if i want to like if i'm the host i can always start a stream oh shit there we go hold on let me mute that so i can turn the camera on or off and i can always share my screen so yeah. Like, so wait, like what's, what's going on here? So is that, it looks like it's done? This, so this is the demo I've been working on. It looks like crap still. So I'm fixing it. There's, it's pretty okay. buggy still, but yeah, like this is technically a functional version of it. So it looks pretty good. Go back to this. See, there was a bug right there. The mic still showed that it was off, but yet I can hear the echo. But yeah, like this is what I'm trying to finish up today, but I'm trying to implement the, the really cool design. If that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I can always stop a stream, start it back up, and the other user can see this. So if I turn on the stream here, let me a second. Anyways, probably a bug in there somewhere. But yeah, so um, because I, I, I'm putting together a full course on this, I'm just kind of doing the test run right now with all this stuff. It looks pretty, yeah. pretty good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> You're just putting it all together here, right? Yeah, so right now, I mean, technically I'm still like off camera, I'm gonna have to fix up a lot of bugs yeah. still just because you're gonna screw up more on camera. Um, I'm gonna have to go through and, and fix all this. But yeah, sorry, what was the question? You're, you didn't catch that. Uh, I said, you're, so you basically have already something implemented that works. Now you're just making it like look a little bit nicer and then like. Yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fixing it, cleaning it, that sort of thing. But obviously, I, I thought your I thought your plan was just completely from scratch, just to build the whole Twitch clone team. Like, damn. Well, technically, damn. it is. I mean, I'm not I'm not using that code. I'm referring oh. to it. But okay. I am. I, I did start with an index.html yep. file. Oh well. <laughs> All right. Never mind. Still impressive. Yeah. So it's completely from scratch. So like right now, let's just start. Like I'm gonna go back to this. Um. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Hold on a second. Need to go back to the original file. Um, yeah, like right now, like I'm redoing all that and all we have is just basic chat. So we just have real time chat right now. Oh, damn. So 
at this point, I, I only have the room page, like nothing else is integrated. So from what I just showed you to this right now. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, anyways, all, all I, I'm gonna keep, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna keep coding. If you wanna just hang out here, let me know, like just chill in here. I figured I'm not gonna be talking to the stream too much or to the chat. I'll try to refer to it, but yeah, like I want to chill here. Do you know someone how to control asked, me? Yeah, someone asked why I use Windows and not Linux. Because uh, there's two things in the in the world that I really hate, and that's Windows people and Mac people. <laughs> or no, not Windows, but Linux people. <laughs> I'm a Mac person. But... I, hate, I hate Macs <laughs> so bad with a passion. And the only reason for that, besides the fact that I don't like using it, is that Mac people get up in your face and tell you you need to use a Mac, and Linux people get up in your face and tell you you need to use Linux. I just get really irritated by that. Uh, I, I like Windows. It works great. But in all seriousness, I'm not, hey, Joe's in here. Um, but yeah, in all seriousness, like, I don't, I don't hate the people. I just yeah, just hate the, the culture behind it, I guess. It kind of bothers me. You, you hate the, you hate the uh, command prompt that actually works. <laughs> that thing doesn't work, man. <laughs> I can't separate two tabs. Like, that shouldn't be a problem. I don't, I don't know how to use that stuff. <laughs> now, the one, the, the reason, like, the reason most developers like swear by Mac and uh, Linux is just because like it's Unix based. So like the command prompt is just a lot easier to work with. Um, but I mean, once you figure it out with Windows, get used to it, it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah. I mean, it depends your purpose and your style, of, like your style and what you do. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I just, I try to use it like when, when I got that laptop, I just could not get used to it. And it just started irritating me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to Windows. And if yeah. Mac is so good, then you can figure it out on a Mac. <laughs> Man, I need a third screen. I accidentally just opened up OBS. I'm like opening up more tabs than I need. Yeah, anyways, I'm going to I'm gonna like talk to myself here because I'm not, I guess I'm not teaching anybody. But yeah, so, ba someone says, so basically you hate everyone. <laughs> no, not true. <laughs> See, Windows people, the reason why I like them and why I'm a Windows person is because they don't tell you to use Windows. They just mind their own business. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, because they can't recommend it to nobody. Exactly. <laughs> I, I use, I have both. I have like, I have a, I built a desktop in my junior year of high school. So like, like almost 10 years ago, and I built a desktop. The only thing I upgraded was back then, like SSDs weren't really a thing. Well, I think they were, they were just super expensive. So I built it with like a normal hard drive and then mm -hmm. I added an SSD to it like two years after, but it's been 10 years and that thing's still going strong. And I use it for like, I don't play much video games, but like sometimes I play some, some, some shitty little video games. And then I do that on windows, but because Macs are, there's two things. Macs are really bad at that. I will, I will definitely admit they just, they can't live stream for some reason. Like it's just really like they can technically, but like you know that. it always starts. I don't know. Every like the CPU gets maxed out and everything. And it's just a mess for some reason. And then obviously gaming, cause there's just none, none on there. Yeah. I mean, if I gave it time, like if I just said, you know, what, I'm going to use this for six months and I'm really going to, I mean, not six months, but whatever, a couple months and just learn it. I'm sure I can be fine with it. Yeah. And I just like, I just feel like at this point, I'm like, I'm too damn old to be figuring this out, trying to get something new going. I'm like, this is insane. I'm just too impatient. Like, I don't want to have to relearn the basics. Like, I did this yeah. crap, you know, seven years ago, like <laughs> using the command prompt. Like, every, like, I'm like, I, I built up a, a Django application and I just had to like relearn how to like get a basic application set up. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm like, unless I need it, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Makes sense. I personally li like to learn all those like little things, but I could, uh, I, it seems like you're very like output driven. You get stuff done. If like, it produces. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. <laughs> that's all I care about. Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me just think here. I'm trying to go ahead. Messing up a simple line of code here, but I got all the members. I I'm getting that and adding it to the DOM. Oh, and I just need to do inner HTML here and I'll just, and I guess I can do insert adjacent HTML, but I'll just do enter like this. Okay, so member item. I just want to see if this works live. Okay, there we go. So perfect. So let me uh, let me show everybody. So I just built that feature, and we're about to do names. But I'm going to go ahead and clear out some of the dummy data. 
And right now we're only outputting IDs. That was actually a fun thing to figure out, like how to do, how to like pass in like timestamps and names all without a database. Like it was actually pretty fun to do. Okay, so there we go. Um, it should be when I join too. Coding phase asked, what are you building a chat? He's building a Twitch replica. Yeah, pretty much a, a new Twitch specific tailored to developers. I told him about this a while ago, but actually since then I, uh, I completely morphed the project. Like it was a social network and then I just didn't want to go that direction. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the only time participants are showing right now, like if I load the page for the first time, it's not going to show anybody in here. And what I need to do, so basically what's happening is it's only going to have an event handler for when others join. So like if I join here, you're going to see a user with the ID of 56, then you're going to see 60 and so on. So I need to basically on the original load now get all the participants in here. So you notice how like if I go through the tabs, like, like when you just load it up, you're not going to see anything. And it's always going to be like one step behind. So I'm going to do that next. All right. Someone in the chat say, who is Tadis? And someone came back with great developer. Shout out to Balaji. Thank great you. Flood, <laughs> great Flutter developer. Yeah. Um, he then later said, famous for Flutter. I don't know if I'd say famous, but I make videos about Flutter too. So. Hey, I love your uh, your production style, like what you're doing. Like you got way into it. Yeah, I, I for some reason, like I, I talked to you about this before. I've, I've been going through a little phase where uh, I'm less driven by development for some reason. Like I still obviously do it every day and still enjoy it, but I've been liking learning how to edit videos and all that stuff. I mean, I still got a, I think I still got a long way to go, but I've just been having fun with it how that works like you, you don't have to fight it either like unless you like need to get something done i remember going through that i think after like my first year and a half of like really developing because i had like that phase where i did front end stuff and i did wordpress and all that yeah and then uh when i got back into it about a year and a half into that process i i don't think i opened up a text editor for like six months at one point like i actually completely stopped just because i just lost it for a second not weird, but yeah, like you kind of go through that and yeah, boom. hoping hoping it comes back. But I mean, like it's not like I sometimes like I'll build something cool again and I'll be like, all right, this was fun, but then like there's that con that consistency is not there anymore. Yeah, but I mean, there's a there's a I think there's a there's some good potential in learning how to edit videos very well and like how to tell a story correctly. That's that's kind of the stuff I've been focusing on. It's a skill you're not gonna be you know you're not gonna be sorry that you learn yeah. it's one of those like there's certain things where it's like do i really want to spend my time on this and then one of those it's like just knowing how to story tell like that that's going to make you very very powerful with anything that you do yeah it's a crazy skill yeah all I've right been, so gonna, uh, yeah. i've been also looking into like no code tools i just I, i'm curious and i feel like now there's some of them are getting like really good and I guess specifically for Flutter, like there's one that came out and it has, been, I mean, it came out like a year ago. It's called like Flutter Flow. Um, I mean, it is built with Flutter, like the whole editor and everything is built with Flutter uh, and you can write an app. So like I built a, I built an Android application, deployed it to the app store without like writing a single line of code. And I was like, damn, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah, now they support like, you can literally write an application for web, I think uh, desktop apps and like normal mobile apps all without coding. And like, I mean, it's not, it's not great. It's not like, uh, you know, I still think there's a lot of progress that needs to be made on, on that specific software. But like, I mean, then I looked into WordPress for like the first time in I think like four or five years. Oh, I get like, nine years looking at WordPress still. <laughs> even though, even though I would recommend it to a lot of people, yeah. I still get nine from it. Like. Yeah, and then I, and then I take a look at Devfolio, and I'm like, wow, that's a <laughs> that's a nice no code solution right there. Yeah, that's like I mean that's completely like that's a, that's a Wix <laughs> dumbed down even. I just got a donation. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Or super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, 
I don't know how I feel about the low code stuff though. Like, I think it's super cool. I just, I don't know. Like I, I always like it when people like even like using like tailwind and stuff like that, like I'm all for tools that help you build faster. Yeah. But when it comes to like lo- no code completely, it just, I don't know. Feels yeah. Weird. You got another donation. Oh shoot. Joe. <laughs> what do you say? If you, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and the site is legit. Might as well check it out. <laughs> Encoding. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. Taking a page out of Joe's book where he just streams with like just like a topic in mind and then you join his stream and it's nothing about what the topic was. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> Usually it's him yelling, yelling at someone in the chat. <laughs> Cause Joe's the type of guy you someone swings at him, he will not just take a punch. He'll he'll full on and start going back and forth with him. I love it. He'll scrap. <laughs> I've seen his uh streams a couple of times. He's pretty pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's definitely entertaining. So I, I have a weird problem here. So basically what's happening is like if I join, so I fix the whole thing, like let's say if I open this up in another tab, we're going to see all the members, right? So we have like right now it's just by the ID. But if I leave, you notice how the ID for this newest member doesn't go away. So I think what happens is Agora by default will, will just remove a channel if that user or will remove a member from a channel if that user is inactive after like 30 seconds. So this is going to take a while. So what I'm going to actually do is add in some kind of event handler that basically allows a user to leave once the browser actually closes. And the annoying thing about this is that there's really no way on web to pay or to, to catch that without throwing some kind of like, guess some kind of error not error but like almost missing it so basically like if a user clicks like leave stream then it's all fine right because you can like trigger a function and it'll call these methods and go ahead and get rid of that but if a user clicks the x on their browser it doesn't always catch that like if like the user was doing a lot of stuff and then happens to click x the like this hold on i'll I'll actually just type it out so there's this function called channel.leave so you leave a channel and that's going to trigger like user left then we're going to go ahead and turn this client or log out this client. So if this user leaves, there's no way to really catch that except for this event handler right here, which is called window. Oh yeah, I forgot. You don't do that much web stuff. I, so I have done it before. And I I mean, my current website is built with Next.js. So like I got a little bit, but I I use a template and I just adjusted the template. So it's not like a... Yeah, yeah. It's not like I'm that legit. But then yeah, me, and, uh, me and a friend also tried to build like a, a little SaaS product like about a year ago probably. And we also built it with Next.js. So, but that was like my first like experience with it. Um, for like two months, I went pretty hard with it. And I mean, I learned a lot, but I mean, I still had a lot to go. So I got, I got a little bit. Yeah. I, I, and I used to like write, I used to make basic websites with like HTML, J, JavaScript, and CSS. Gotcha. Yeah, I was just curious and like how, how familiar you were with the uh, with all these like functions right here, like all the event listeners and stuff. So the event listeners, I'd never really worked with, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, yeah, okay, gotcha. So I was just trying to just get the background. So yeah, that's that's so like, like a weird document, issue. For example, like, yeah, you got document.getElementById. I remember doing that a bunch on the website when you're trying to find a specific uh, div or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's kind of like a weird thing. Like these are, I remember uh, I watched a talk by uh, one of the developers from Netflix and he was talking about stuff like that. Like things that you don't think about. Like imagine if somebody like clicks a, let's say they want to watch a movie, right? And as the movie's loading, um, everything goes fine and then the movie just plays. But what happens if somebody clicks on a movie while it's loading, they decide they just want to turn off their TV or something like that. Yeah. Like you have to consider all this, like it can throw it into an infinite loop. Like there's always these weird, weird things that can come up. And this is like one of those, like you would hope everybody would leave by clicking the leave button, but that's just not, not reality. Like people are going to leave by shutting their, or just closing their laptop. So you have to consider that, like in this case, the, the event listener is before unload. So before the DOM like tears down. So there, I'm assuming that's like a specifically defined Thing. Yeah, yeah. So apparently, in a with React Native in the Agora SDK, there's actually an event listener for that, but they don't have it for web. Which I'm gonna, you know, try to get them to do that. Like, it's definitely something I'd want to add. 
Yeah. So, okay. So when this function gets called, we're going to call the leave channel method, and this is going to trigger a member left event listener. And in that event listener, I'm going to call remove participant from Dom, get their ID and then tear it down. So let me try to remember how to do this. So we'll just do, I believe it was channel dot on and then member left, I think like that. And then in here, we'll go ahead and call remove participant from Dom. In that case, I also need to know what member left. And I believe it passes that in. I like this. This is really good for me. It's really good to do this because it's like getting me to not think about what I'm actually doing as opposed to like just casually just work and put stuff together and I actually feel like it's, it makes it hard, but it makes me better at this. It's kind of weird. I can definitely see that. Let's see member ID. So I need to pass that in. So what I need to do is when a member leaves, I need to find their ID and I need to add in this ID dynamically for when they join. So let's see. We have so um, I, I have a question so you said that the issue here is that it takes like 30 seconds for that user id to actually leave when they click the x right um it, if, it a, never if a so what happens is okay imagine if uh here, one second let me just finish the, okay got it so when you join a channel in Agora, there's going to be like, it's going to store all these, uh, all your information, like your UID, and it's going to be in that channel, right? Like as yeah. a participant, um, the only way to, in theory, leave the channel is by calling the leave, the leave and log out function. That, right. So once this is called, that channel is removed from, you know, from that, or that member is removed from the channel. But if a user just clicks X, this function is technically never called unless this is successfully triggered right here, which in most cases I got it to work like in 99% of the cases, mm -hmm. but there's still cases where a user will leave and this function won't finish being called. So that means the leave function is never called. So what happens to that user? Well, they're still in the channel then. Agora does have a way to actually, to actually try to see if that user is still there, but it takes about 30 seconds. Yeah, so that's my way of trying to like summarize it, but yeah. Makes sense. But it, it, technically, it's not a big issue. Like if somebody leaves, like you go to YouTube, right? Like if you're watching like the live member count, like right now it says we're at 71 viewers. It could be at 74, but it does take like a second. It doesn't like update every second, actually. That makes sense. So I guess it's not really an issue. It's just something that I would like to not have happen. Yeah. Okay, so I distracted myself. Let's see, leave is not defined. What did I call here? So we have... Oh, let's see. This is um, leave channel. That's the function name. All right. So check it out. Now I think I have it. I think I have it working. So like right now, if I open up a room, this is going to be the first time I open up a room, but these members are still technically. Hold on a second. Oh, room HTML. So these members are not actually in the room right now, but because they never called a leave function, they're still in there. Like, they're listed in there. Oh, yeah. So, so okay, if I do this now, let's say I bring in another user, you're going to see that user. So ID 171 just got added right there. Now, if I click X, that event handler should have fired off. Let's see, maybe there was an error. So we have window add event listener before unload, call leave channel, and then in leave channel, Let's see, let me actually reference my dummy code then, or my demo code. So we call leave, and then we have on channel leave. So I'm gonna see if this event handler ever gets fired off right here. So when this gets triggered, we're gonna remove that participant from the DOM. Let's just do console.log. Got a lot of work today. Are you still watching those training stuff, for those videos or streams? The trainings are starting in like four minutes. Oh, I, okay, I, gotcha. I gotta check the schedule. What type? What are the interesting ones today? But have they done web? They haven't done web, have they yet? So they're just going through like every team and uh, what the, I guess what their outcome, what their plan is for the next year. It's uh, it's, it's it's cool to see, but. You know, not necessary, I guess. 
I mean, you probably know everything, right? Like, I mean, it's. No, I've been I've been learning some stuff. Yeah, they got some they got some interesting products coming out. They explain some of those products. Um, I don't know how much we're allowed to say. Yeah, yeah, I got you. That stuff, but. <laughs> Got it. Someone, okay. I saw someone earlier ask, like, what is Agora RTM? And I thought maybe I could explain that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So uh, Agora has like two, two main, I don't know what in the web world, what are they called? Packages? It's SDK, like a APIs. Like a suite of SDKs. Like, yeah, they have like a lot of stuff. How do you? One question. How do you like use it? NPM install, right? No, not here. If you're using React, you could just install. It'd just be like NPM install Agora dash RTC, okay. you know, SDK or something like that. But in this case, uh, from the website, I just grabbed the SDK right here and just okay. added that in. And then I just link it up right here. And that gives me access to all the functions. Wow. All right. Well, yeah. So we got two two types of those. We have the video or the one that's called like the RTC engine, probably most likely. Um, and then there's the RTM. So RTC stands for real time connection, real time communication, communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real time communication. So you can have like video, audio, voice, I guess audio and voice is the same thing, but uh, you can have that type of connection between your application. So setting up a live stream, setting up a audio room, Sending up just a group call, you can do that all with the RTC. RTM is the very basic of it, so it's real time messaging. It's pretty much the signaling between uh, two devices. So, and like if we're getting, if we get very technical with it, RTC is built on top of RTM, but it's just made easier to use. With RTM, so, you can send like anything. You can send so any, right now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I just want to add to what you're saying. So first of all, I fixed the issue. So check it out. If I leave, one of these users will get removed. And you were just talking about RTM. So that's real time messaging. Yeah. So that doesn't actually mean messages. That's that actually threw me off when I first started. Like when I first started using it, it like I thought it was specifically for messaging like chat, that can be anything like if we have, let's say, some kind of like pie chart or something like that, that was tracking users in, you know, by their region or by a category that they're interested in. Uh, that signaling RTM part, that's real time messaging. So it just allows that. So for one computer or one browser to talk to another with the, yeah. you know, all in real time. Yeah. So again, right here, if I move that, boom, it's all working. Cool. I'm going to move on. But yeah, you can keep explaining. How'd you fix it? So <laughs> that's a stupid one. I forgot. So I queried the member by the ID and I forgot to call remove. <laughs> so everything was working. I was like, what the hell's going on here? And I just forgot to call the remove function. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Dennis said, the RTM is just signaling and you can signal like pretty much anything. Like it's, a, it's just any data you want to send between devices. So like even I think the simplest example of RTM is like if you're on Instagram live and you see like people smashing like the heart button or something, and you see the little emojis pop up. If you were to do that with Agora, you would use RTM for that little like you'd, you'd just be like, oh, yeah, send a heart from. Just think, uh, think web sockets. Yeah. It's exactly what it is, except for I think we use UDP for that. Um, but yeah, just WebSockets. It's, it's a signaling server, like how WebSockets work where you keep an open connection. Yep. I mean, yes, very similar. What's Joe saying? <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, I mean, I, I know JavaScript, Joe. Uh, I probably actually use it more than Python, honestly. Um, but I wouldn't say I'm good with it. I, I have a... I have a secret weapon and it's this guy right here in the chat. Let's see. He was somewhere here. His name is Sharir Shuvo. This guy. He's a, he's the genius behind that awesome design that everyone saw. He makes everything function. And honestly, when I have a JavaScript question, he's like a dictionary. Like I'll ask him something and he just gives me the full breakdown, how it works. He'll tell me every environment he wrote up, he wrote up. I think he, when he was studying React or it was like front end development in general, he actually ha like built up his own documentation for it. It looks like the real docs that you would see like for JavaScript. Like it's insane. Anyways, he's he's a genius. Love that guy. Love you too, Joe. You know, but gotta gotta give it to both. <laughs> he's the one who also built up Dead Dev Folio site, right? 
Or, uh, yeah, he's bit. he's built out everything. He primarily focused on front end stuff, yeah. but Dev Folio from start to finish, I only gave him the idea and I basically hired him and I said, this is what I want. Can you do it? And he's he's never done a project that big and he just ran with it. Yeah, so, well, yeah. it, looks, it looks fantastic. I want to give him some props to it. I went to it and like, I mean, it looks great. It seems like it's working great too. There's some new features uh, that we're adding that are really going to fix it up. Like we had... We had some issues with um, with how like you create your site and stuff like that, like how that form process goes. Mm -hmm. So he, he's fixing it up, but we're gonna have like, because that was just like a pre-launch that we did. But yeah, yeah, it's gonna look look a lot better really soon. So at this point, I'm actually gonna allow users. I want to be able to display users by their uh, name instead of ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and build that in right now. So I'm just gonna get rid of everything in here. I'm going to build a form and then I'm also going to have to make dynamic rooms because right now every single room is from uh, it's called default. That's the name of it. So let's see, like right now, if you go to room.js, we only have one. So let me actually fix this up here. Cheat a little bit and go to my demo code. So let's see, at this point, I'm going to get the room from the URL. So we'll just do Room is going to be equal to above it. URL search params, and I'm going to do window uh, location. You know what? I had an idea for a, a video. I'm actually going to do it. It's going to take me a little bit longer to create. And every time I use, uh, basically every time I use JavaScript in a video, Python developers hate it. It cracks me up because they're usually like, if you're developing in Django or Flask, you're usually newer to front end development. So it's like pulling teeth, man. So <laughs> I'm actually going to create a video called JavaScript for Python developers. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up with, a, with just doing comparisons. Like this is a function. This is a variable in Python and JavaScript. So like give it to them in a way that they can understand it. Like let's say, you know, you're using Dart, right? Like how would you create a variable in Dart? Like I would show you that and then I would show you the JavaScript way of doing it. So we'd start with like syntax and then I would go into like use cases and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I figured- Good idea. I think most of your audience is from Python, right? And Django and all that stuff. So. Yeah. It's funny because I'm no, everyone refers to me as a Python guy, even though I have like no Python videos on my channel. It's all Django, but because it's like the same thing, it's not yeah. the same thing because Django is built using Python. Everyone assumes it. Okay, so let me just finish this logic up here. So if the room is not in the URL parameter, then we're just gonna set room to default. So I'm just gonna do that. So let's try this out. Okay, so right now, if we're both in this room, let's try doing some chat in here. Okay, we can both see it, but then if I do room and then we'll just call it test, so I can see that I'm in the room alone and the other person's not gonna see it unless they join using that same room. So it looks like it's working. I'll actually add a way to store previous messages too. Like on YouTube, you usually don't see like chat history mm -hmm. unless you were there like in that moment. But uh, I think I'll do like at least like the last 10 messages. So you don't like open up a room right here and just see a blank. At least I'll fix that. Are you gonna do that with RTM? Yeah, there's a way to do that. So there's a few options. Um, I think RTM actually has a way to even store that. I was talking to Hermes about it. And it sounded like he said there was actually a way to do that. But if that's not the the right way, or like if there's no like official way to do that, I have a few solutions. One is you can add attributes to a channel. So I would just yeah. like have an attribute called, you know, last 10 messages and then just append them to that every time a message is sent. And then... Um, if that doesn't work, I would just create some kind of backend and just send those messages to the backend, save them in a database temporarily, or even use something like Redis and then just only store the last 10. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So I had, I had a question for you. So is there a reason you don't use TypeScript? I've heard a lot of people, at least on Twitter, say that like it's better. <laughs> it's very similar to the Mac Linux thing for me. <laughs> Very similar. I'm a, when it comes to my tech stack, I'm a minimalist. Mm -hmm. Like if I don't need it, I will not touch it. And I'm not saying you don't need TypeScript. I'm actually not opposed to it because I've, I've seen some of the, you know, benefits to it. But 
when when it comes to building things out, I've never found a need and found it to be more overhead than I need. Like for example, like with Re- with with React, there's Redux, right? Like it's a state management library and Redux is great, but in most cases I don't need it. I can use something more lightweight than Redux. So I'm not against it. I just decide when to use it and when not to. So with TypeScript, I found more time setting up than than it, than I need. And I just been able to manage without it. If I need it at some point, then I'll use it. But that's kind of my take on it. Like I just don't add shit to my, my stack. Like right now I'm using vanilla JavaScript. I, I don't even use React until I need to. Yeah, which I will definitely need it for this project. When you're updating the UI, it's going to be a pain without it. Makes sense. I just, uh, I hate going from like, I guess it's just what I'm used to, but I hate going from like Dart to having to write anything in JavaScript just because everything just seems like, uh, what I don't know, whenever I'm writing JavaScript, it just seems like you're just throwing like your chances with every line of code you write. You're like, oh, this might work. It might not. There's no like... Uh, you're saying like, are you talking about using the benefits of something like TypeScript or? I, I don't know. So I don't really know much about TypeScript, but like at least from Dart, like you just get so much um, like analyzation while you're writing the code. Like it analyzes your, it tells you like everything that's, that might be wrong and just like you see everything strong type. So like in JavaScript, you're just like, oh, whatever. I don't know what this variable, what type it is, but like, let's just hope it works. I don't know. I, yeah. I, this also is because I don't have much experience in it. Like I'm sure the more experience that would be coming at the, the more things would make sense. But see, that's the argument I hear, but I just haven't had that issue enough. I've never like wrote such a bad bug where I'm just like, like, I don't, I've never had anything to where I was like, Oh, TypeScript could really fix this. Like it just doesn't bother yeah. me enough. Like most things that I do, I'm like, Oh yeah, I'll just fix it like this. Or it's usually not something that TypeScript could catch anyways. So that's where it's like, is it necessary to, I mean, probably not. All that it seems like it works for you. Like every, everything, different things work for different people. And like, well, I'm sure for someone will be like, there's some people have the opinion that they don't need TypeScript. Like you, other people are like, oh, they can't live without TypeScript. And same thing with uh, with almost everything. Everybody got their own yeah. like little style. I mean, we lived without it for a while. So I think yeah. we're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we lived with only uh, with only C for a while. No yeah, no, you're right. You, you're right there. I mean, but it doesn't add. It doesn't have functionality though. It's just it's no. something that's supposed to improve it. Yeah, like I said, I, I I'm very you know you do what you do, I do what I do type of yeah. thing. I don't really care. I'll never get into those arguments of like which which is best and that kind of crap. I, I think that's really silly and actually proof of an inexperienced programmer. I think real developers don't spend time arguing about that kind of stuff. I agree. Unless you're working on a project, then I can see where you butt heads. Yeah, like I, I actually. Uh, I had to fight my my developer Shubo because he tried to use. Um, we were working on the original Mumble, and he wanted to use uh, SCSS, or I believe maybe it was something even more. What was the other one called? There was a SAS, I think. Yeah, SCS. yeah. He wanted to use that, and I was like, "Listen, if most of the developers on our team are not using are not SAS, like don't know how to use it, then what you just did is you you excluded all the potential developers that we could have had." So yeah. you actually make the process more difficult, even though there is benefits. Um, you eliminate your team and you also can maybe even make your team more expensive if you're, you know, running a company, because now you just, instead of like trying to hire, let's say a job or a, you know, a CSS developer that knows good design, you're going to have to find someone that knows CSS and design and also knows that specific topic, like that component of it. So it's, yeah. Makes sense. Oh shoot! What I clicked there? Yeah, I'm just building out the the form right now. I think you you missed the beginning div. Yeah, this. Oh, right here. Thing. Yeah, I actually think I just deleted it. Like I saw something flicker, and I was like, "Crap! I don't know what I did." That always scares me. You like click like a random key on your keyboard, and you have no <laughs> idea what you clicked. All right. So then we just need a submit button here. Oh, I forgot to add this class. Let's just do that. So there's a there's a good Agora really question says does Agora handle authentication of your app as well? What did you use for the authentication of this app? Different types of authentication for the actual app. No, um, there's a way to authenticate your app ID, but for authentication, I was gonna I'm kind of fighting between this. I was thinking about using Django on the back end, and I still think I will, but I'm actually even considering doing something like Firebase. 
I don't know. Like yeah, I, yeah, I don't, and I, and I don't really use it. Like you actually got me into it. I remember the last conversation we had. You were the reason why I started looking into it. I know. I think, uh, I think Firebase might be like, uh, like your your idea of like only using the tools that you need. I think that's the reason why I haven't really used much much else than Firebase. Like everything just got a couple clicks of a button and things just work. At least with like, especially with Flutter, like it's made so simple for that. Yeah. They do handle authentication though too, right? Yep. Yeah. They handle, they got the four main ones are authentication. Then they have, uh, I guess, three main ones. They have authentication then like some storage. They have two times, two types of storage. There's real time database and then there's a cloud fire store. Cloud fire store is no SQL and then no SQL or I don't know how to pronounce that stuff, but, and then real time database I actually haven't used it in a while. I, I don't want to lie. I, I think the, the they do, they have real time. That's yeah. They have a they have a real time database, but I don't remember what type of database it is, and I haven't really used it oh, in a while. Gotcha. And then they got they have cloud functions, which is something that um, I I love it. I don't know. It's it's really cool. To just have like, I'm sure you could do something similar with Django and everything, where you could just have functions run on your server or something like that, right? Mm. like how, how would you that. how would you have something like if you want your database being updated without anything like there like you're saying like like not actually having to trigger it from the front end or something like that like yeah like yeah. So have something update periodically right like yeah. um like every 10 minutes send out this message sure yeah um there's a you use you'd use like something like Redis usually, and then there's something called Celery with it, I believe, and that allows you to do that, like background processes. And Heroku actually has a good plugin for that. But yeah, I think that's last time I did that, which was like because I, I actually had to do that at my at my last job. Basically, we had to send out PDFs automatically, and they took a while to generate. So I basically like triggered a function, and then like they would run in the back end and send out like 20 minutes later. But yeah, I think it was Redis allowed me to do that. So I'll store it in memory and then, yeah, I, I'm, I'm rough on that. But yeah, something like that. Yeah, so like the, the reason it's pretty like hype is if you want like to have as secure or like most want to offload a lot of the processing and have it pretty secure. So let's say you authenticate your application um, using Firebase authentication, right? And then you want to mm-hmm. create like a user item from it. So you authenticate with Firebase, then have a trigger from a cloud function that like sees like, oh, a new user was added and then create the user in Firestore through that so that you don't have to like, there's no, there's no like finessing from the front end that people could like, maybe like, I've heard someone talk about how you could like, maybe, I don't know, hack it in some way where you authenticate and then send some different user information to the user because it's all coming from the front end. But that way you just have everything executed in the back end. And then like, yeah, if you delete your user profile or something, you can have like a back end service that goes through like all your posts or all the different uh, fields and it deletes everything that might take like a, a long while and you just have it all mm-hmm. executed on the back end. It's pretty neat. Hmm. Yeah. I, I need a, I need a, I definitely need to upgrade my stack for sure. Like I, I, I'll admit I'm lacking there, but I just gotten so far without it. Like to me, like if you were to, if you were to ask me like my skill as a developer, it's not JavaScript, it's not Python, it's not React, it's not even Django. Like to me, it's I can get stuff done. Yeah. Like I, I love problem solving. That's what I've been doing my entire life, and I'll find I'm, I'm able to find exactly what I need. So like if that was the case, like if I needed that right there to get something done, because that's how I learned. Like I remember I I promised my boss, not promise I you know pitched the idea before I even knew how to code. For that one application and uh yeah like i'm able to figure it out but other than that like that's definitely a weakness of mine is not knowing like specifics like getting into that like I, mean, I, I don't know if i necessarily call it a weakness i feel like it's uh like some people like get to go too deep into the learning stuff not necessarily using it i think i think it's definitely the better approach to learn what you need like as you need it and then yeah Right, like I guess the weak, the weakness is the fact that I don't I don't spend time on the other stuff, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah. Okay, let me uh, let me update everyone real quick here. Um sure. what I just did. So I added in this ugly looking form. Again, this will all look better soon. 
So I added in a form. And when I type in the room name and my name here, the room name is going to get attached to the URL. So that's how we're going to pass it in. And that's how a user is going to join a specific room. Now, on submission of this form, what I'm going to do is actually store the name inside of session storage. I'm going to call that display, not channel, display name. So basically, we're going to take the user's name that they added, and we're going to store that in a session. So in the next page, when we go to the room, we're going to be able to pull that name down. And this is, I guess, a disadvantage in using, not using something like React, because you can store that in a store. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it in the session, and it'll do just fine. So uh, as I pass that along, now in the room, I'm going to be able to get that display name. And this is where I'm going to pass this in and actually store this information with this user. So let's actually see how this works. Just want to make sure, because even though this isn't like a coding tutorial, I at least want to want people to know what's going on here. Okay, so we're going to join the room. Let's see an application display name. Yeah, perfect. So now this is the display name is stored. So I can actually get this in this page. And at the same time, at this point, I'm going to add IDs to the rooms later. But like if somebody adds in a space, like that's going to throw some issues. So I want to make sure that users can't do that. So I'll block them from doing that. And I'm going to make sure that they're all capitalized because the rooms are case sensitive. So like if I tell you to join the room called let's learn how to code all in one word, but there's like a capital letter there or somebody writes it that way, that's going to add them to another room. So I want to make sure to remove that too. But anyways, I just wanted to recap that. Yeah. You, can, you can keep going for those. That was good. Someone had a question uh, about Next.js and do you use it? Have you? Yeah, I've used it. So I have this thing. Uh, I hope my mom's not watching. <laughs> I have this thing where uh, certain times of the week, I'll, uh, I'll just take the, the night off and I'll just pour myself a glass of whiskey or or rum and I'll just drink. And that's probably as far as I've gotten into using it. Like I've tested it out and I see the benefits for sure. I just haven't had a use case for it. So I wouldn't say that I'm great at it at all. So um, yeah, that's like, that's been my experience with it, but I love doing that. It's one of my favorite things to do because I, I really enjoy this process. So I'll just get my music going. I'll just get my whiskey and <laughs> have, have my, uh, my stuff. And it's a lot of fun. That's like my unwinding. Like I'm one of those people to where like it, when I'm done with work, this is all I do anyways. Like I kind of a, a loner You're, in that sense. Your unwinding is pretty much the same thing as your job probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Well, I was like that when I was a kid. Like I remember like I used to like we'd all hang out on the train tracks and throw rocks at trains when we were kids. <laughs> and I, would, I would watch the Minimart across the street and I would just sit there and take notes on how many people walked into the Minimart. And I would like kind of calculate like what they walked out with, you know, like, like kind of like what the average spend was, like what they bought, mm -hmm. like a soda, some chips or whatever. And because I really wanted to run a minute mart one day, you know, like I was just any, any kind of business idea, like that type of thing. So <laughs> like, even when I was hanging out, I was always obsessed with stuff like that. All right. So let's try to space. Okay. Perfect. So it just capitalizes everything that looks good now. We can join a room and I'm going to display this name. But yeah, so that like when I got to coding, that's why I loved it so much. It was like, hey, I can do something and I don't have to break my back and you don't have to store inventory and all this kind of stuff. Like digital products are the best. Like I would never go back to selling physical products or services. Like I ran that web development company. It's a freaking nightmare I'm dealing with clients. Let's, I'll never do that again. Like I, I have a client right now that I took out of like, just sheer like pity, I guess, because it was an old friend of mine. And uh, he started, he went to this new company and they were desperate to hire somebody to do their site. So I hired someone and just basically outsourced it. Mm -hmm. And I said, Hey, yeah, we can do the WordPress site. I can set up some AdWords for you, get that going. And they've just been a pain since then. So I ended up firing them like three and a half months later. I basically yeah. said, I'm not going to do this for you. Like they paid well and everything like that. It was, you know, simple, yeah. but I'm not going to be picking up a phone and hearing you basically like talking you off a ledge every single day. It's annoying. It's like dealing with the baby. Damn. So uh, the, the web company is you're freelancing, right? Is that, is that what you referring to? Or yeah, it's something. Well, else? no, I actually had a company at one point. Now, technically I do freelance, but it's very rare. Like I, I'm very picky on who I work with. Um, but yeah, that was a full company. And the one I originally ran it and 
just a lot of work. So what, what was that company like? What were, what were you building? WordPress sites. Okay. So I, I actually, uh, I mean, I, I've shared the story before. Like I actually got into web development by learning Wix. And uh, when I got into that, I realized that I can actually do something with it. Like I did some SEO and it actually worked. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh man, I can start a company around it. So I literally built out like my first three websites, I think all in Wix and sold them. I Meaning like got clients out of it. And then, uh, yeah, like at one point I ended up like hiring friends and, and my little brother and all that sort of thing. And my older brother and, uh, we just started switching to WordPress. So I started teaching them. So I basically like at some point I was like, okay, we're really limited. Like clients started asking for custom features and all that. So we just started learning WordPress and then I learned how to code and like, you know, do HTML, CSS to it. So we can like modify templates and so on. I taught everybody at the company to code Damn. do that. Yeah. That was something I did for about two and a half years of my life. Hell of an experience. I'll never change it. Like, I think that yeah. was good. What'd you do? What'd you do before that? Before, dude, I'm trying to remember. I've had so many jobs. I've had, I've been working since I was 11 years old, probably even younger than that. Damn. Um, I worked construction. I forgot about that. Yeah. I worked construction. Shoveling ice off of rooftop buildings before we start in the work, freezing my ass off. Yeah, it was, it was backbreaking work. I did that for a while. And then uh, I worked in the maintenance department at a church at one point. Yeah. Damn. Crazy. What do you you were when when did you come to America again? How old were you? I was, I was born here. My family moved here in ninety one, I think. Okay. All right, so check this out real quick update. So if you go to the room and you don't have if there's no name, it's supposed to redirect you. Here, let's try this. Let's enter a room. So we'll just do like that. Okay, it's gonna make me add a name. So if I try to go to room, it should redirect me because I don't have a name in the session storage, or maybe I, it actually stored it. Okay, let's try to remove this and then refresh it. Hold on, I'm just writing a condition. I got to think here. So display name. Oh, shoot, I didn't even get the display name. I was supposed to grab that from here. So I wrote the, the condition before I even set the variable. There we go. Okay, cool. So uh, if there's no room name or there's no display name, I'm just going to redirect the user back to the form and make them add that in. So I don't want somebody coming in with no, no room name. So we'll just do room.html. There we go. Perfect. So it redirects me. So I'm just doing a little bit of authentication. Uh, I guess not real authentication, but yeah. I'm going to check the chat here so I'm not like leaving people hanging. Let's see. Shuval says almost two hours. How long are you planning for streaming? Shuval, I don't know, man. I'm just I'm just hanging out. So it's not like I mean, I don't even know if this will be posted after. Um, I was telling Tadas yesterday, if I get if I get into the flow, I can go for hours. So I don't know. Maybe this will be another 12 hour stream, maybe not. I'm just gonna hang out. We'll see. I have no idea. Maybe until it's done. I don't know. What if that takes 24 hours? You said I think you told me. Uh, hold on. I think you told me that uh, you once did a thirty-six hour stream. No, that was a. So I did a twelve hour stream, but I've been on those kind of coding binges, where like I'll get into it, and my wife can attest for that. I'll just, I'll literally just like not leave the room for multiple days sometimes, and I just like just get into it. Like I'll like nap for like thirty minutes, but if my brain is going. It doesn't matter how physically tired I am. Like I can not lift my hands, but if my brain's working, that's it. Like I'm like Ratatouille, you know, when he's like <laughs> pulling the strings, the, that movie, that's how I am. Like if my brain's working. It's, it's not up to me. I just get into the flow and go. Well, it's yeah. been nice after like, a, I think after like three hours, I usually max out. My eyes are just like melting from <laughs> looking at like staring at the screen. If I get into the flow and then, uh, uh that's, that's as good as I could get, but <laughs> Yeah. And I feel like I feel like there's a sharp drop off after like a good like five or eight hours where just just errors just start popping up that don't make sense. Yeah, that's kind of like the... I've reached quit. <laughs> have you ever uh, have you ever fasted for a long time? Yeah. 
So it's kind of like in, with fasting. Wait, what, what's a long time? I mean, I don't know. Maybe like three, seven days, ten days. I've done like five, I think. Got it. So yeah, that, I mean that's a, that's a long time. So when you get to that point, like after three days, like you're starving up until then, right? Like you're kind of going yeah. crazy. You want to fight everyone. Like two or three days, then you start chilling. Like it's not even bad. It, yeah. it kind of goes away. That's how I feel. Like when I did that stream for twelve hours, I was tired at hour three and four. But by hour 12, I mean, my body was tired, but I felt great. Like maybe like maybe by the last hour I was done because like mentally, like you're like, oh, this is the final hour. But I felt more energy at hour eight than I did at hour four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, real quick to update everyone. So um, when I pass in this name, so I pass in the name, I store it in the session. Then we get it from the session right here. I highly doubt anyone's going to rewatch this, you know, and follow along because I'm going to do the course anyways. But just talking and thinking out loud. So we get the name from the session in the room page. And then there's this function right here where when a user joins, we can call add or update local user attributes. So this will actually be stored with that user information. So I'm basically taking that display name and I'm storing it. And then later on, we can actually query this from another user. Like if me and Tadas were both on in this room, when he would log on, it would actually query my username by the ID. So we're just, I'm setting it. And then on the other end, we're going to query that. So this is how I'm making this work. So yeah, anyways, I want to do that update. So after I set it, I'm actually trying to remember what the heck I did next year. My code is so confusing, like early on, because like, I just like, I'm one of those people that doesn't really plan too far. Like I don't plan too far ahead when I start coding, I just start going with it. So like, I have like a lot of like code commented out a lot of functions or variables that I'm afraid to delete because I don't know what they do. Yeah. Like, because I wrote them, you know, five hours ago. And since then I've had all these other things go on or happen. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I, I, I could definitely see where that happened. That happens to me too. Or just, especially if you have to come back to it after a couple of days, like you, if you go hard mm -hmm. for like, you try to, you know, just get something to work and like have it all pop up. And then you come back to it a couple of days. It's all just like in one or two files. You're like, ah, <laughs> what I do in a lot of cases is I'll actually like, like if I fix, if I make something work, what I'll do is I'll just duplicate that file and just store it away somewhere. And then like make a note of like what happened in that file. So that way, like if I like find a better way or remove something, even though the way that I did it earlier might not be the right way, I might like that process or what I, what, what was going on in my brain at that time yeah. might actually be useful. So I'll just like save it so I can come back to it. Like it doesn't work for this, but maybe I can use this later. That's you, usually what I'll end up doing. Do you use Git? or github or anything no no i mean I, I use it but not for that i just yeah. literally duplicate a file and store it locally <laughs> my github would be littered like if you so i have this uh before i stream i have this folder called desktop files and i just drag everything in there because before the stream my my desktop is littered with files <laughs> yeah so but that way i don't actually delete them so i don't delete anything that i actually need you're a straight caveman when it comes to development. <laughs> Just use the very basic vanilla. So, don't use any Git. <laughs> so my wife, my wife posted an Instagram story the other day, and she so she tells me that I need to be active on Instagram, which I hate it. I hate no. Instagram, and uh, I don't know how to use it. So she did, <laughs> she uh, she, uh, she snuck up on me when I was in the hot tub because I was just that's where I go to think. I just go chill in the hot tub for like an hour, and uh, and she videotaped me trying to figure out how to do a boomerang. You know, like on Instagram, I had no idea. Like, I don't even know how to post on Instagram. Like, I'm not techie when it comes to that. I just don't pay attention to it. It's hilarious. I was good at problem solving and getting mm -hmm. stuff done. Well, I feel like a lot of people, like tech people are like gamers and all that. There's like kind of like a stereotype with it. Yeah. And I'm just not that. Like, I don't game. I don't do, any, I don't do any of that. Yeah. Like, to me, like, I'm happy when I'm like in an Excel file. Like, <laughs> that's seriously like where, where I enjoy myself the most. All right, so I'm gonna try not to distract myself. Um, All right. I need to get this participant. I need to get the attribute here. So when I'm adding the participant to the DOM, I need to be able to actually query this. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Okay, so add participant to DOM. This is how I did it. So what I'm gonna do here is from this function because this gets called on both users end, we're just gonna go ahead and destructure the response here and we're going to get the name because we set that somewhere right here by the way thanks for joining it actually helps me it helps me kind of unwind because when i feel like i have to entertain it makes it a lot harder even though i'm trying to get better at that um definitely i'm entertaining 
it's distracting and entertaining at the same time. <laughs> like it actually, like, you know, we get talking, I kind of forget what I'm doing, but yeah. at the same time, it uh, helps me. Like if you're like interacting with the chat or like asking me something, I can kind of do that. So get user attributes by keys. Kelvin said, what are you guys working on? I'm just chilling, but Dennis is working <laughs> on a, on a Twitch replica for not replica Twitch similar style application or website, but targeted for, for developers. developers. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, dang, I, I need to screenshot that template. So I don't have to like keep opening it up, but yeah, I mean, at some point you're going to see it. I'll, I'll link it up or something like that. Um, I mean, we'll deploy it soon too. I'll, I'll launch a beta just to kind of get people using it. But yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone kind of knows what Twitch is. So I don't have to explain that part. Basically Twitch without the distractions. Because here's my thing. Here's here's kind of my problem with it. Because I was talking to like Floor and Pop, Francesco, and a couple of other people that have done that. And the problem with Twitch is that it's really good in the sense of that it encourages streaming like YouTube. Like streaming is not natural to YouTube. So yeah. like they actually get better engagement on Twitch than they would on YouTube. But when someone's watching a coding tutorial, the only problem is they're advertising like all these game, gaming channels, these freaking cam girls, whatever the hell they do there. Like, <laughs> how do you expect a coding streamer to compete with that? Like yeah. people's eyes will wander to something, you know, more entertaining because I'm at the end of the day, that is probably more entertaining to most, to most people. So I'm trying to eliminate that kind of nonsense, like just stuff that isn't relevant. And that way people can go there and start streaming, knowing that there's, there's people on this platform, hopefully, that are here to watch these kind of tutorials. So yeah, just more tailored down. So I feel like it could help that process. Um, and then maybe, like I said, if the, if the platform actually functions well, uh, I, I want to um, I want to get some some users on it and get them doing like a beta test for it, like give them early access to it. By the way, uh, I did um, replace the member ID with a name here. So I just wanted to show that. So right now in the participant section, we should see the names. Um, but yeah, so uh, another feature with that for us is uh, streaming to YouTube. So like Twitch doesn't let you la like stream to both platforms, right? At least right. as far as I know, I've never used Twitch actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I use it sometimes, but yeah, it doesn't let you stream anywhere. So I want to fix that. And that's actually where uh, I was talking to Hermes. I want to actually get your help on that. And uh, I need to work with RTM push and make that happen. Yeah. Check it out. So we got two nights. Oh yeah, looks nice. <laughs> Anyways, Why did you yeah, say six room members? Oh, I haven't updated that. I'm gonna update that right now. So that's static. I'm gonna yeah. fix that. Um, I built. Uh, I don't. I think you saw the app I built. Yeah, yeah you could. Uh, yeah, it wasn't those. a tutorial though, right? Like you just like you talk. I have. I have a course coming out. Oh shoot! Well, I might watch that, even though it's Flutter. Like the SDK is technically still the same. The yeah, same. So. It should be very similar. Um, yeah, that, that course has been coming out for a while, but should be actually coming out soon. Uh, that, that, that video was just like a little entertaining teaser kind of thing and to mm -hmm. lead people to the course so I could like fully explain it. Um, and yeah, so it's surprisingly a lot easier than I thought it would be. I, I feel like just the, the concept of having to stream to YouTube, like from, a from your application would be be tough but like i think it, was, it ended up being like two yeah, lines tell me about other it. than like formatting really so yeah like tell me about that like it's literally like i mean i'd imagine you got, you need to have some kind of like api key to youtube and like, so you know how in obs and i i think maybe even Streamyard, you have to you get like a stream key and then stream id at youtube like on youtube you get when you go to live it gives you like two Two things is a stream key and the stream ID. Um, basically, you just you just need those. So you need to create like a link to push it out to, and it uses those those things to um, create that link. And then the rest is just like formatting how your stream looks. It's called transcoding. So like just uh, basically how you how you want to set it up is like the hardest part. The actual getting it to YouTube part is I think like yeah two lines of code or something like that. It's like push to to rtmp and then start the stream hmm. um well that's yeah, the, the rest is just like i was actually yeah i was look i was uh i mean not stressing it but i was thinking about it i'm like that's another one of those things i'm gonna have to really figure out you know 
But if, if it's actually that simple, that's good to hear. I mean, I can figure it out pretty quick. That's yeah. you know, that's one of my strengths. Yeah. <laughs> I can pick apart documentation really fast. Like, but that's, that's even the board that. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, yes. Like it took me a little bit, but for me, a little bit was like it took me half an hour. Like, yeah. Usually, it's a lot faster. Like I can open it up and like figure out what I'm doing right away. So the the, top, the thing that you might not have had to experience that makes it even tougher for Flutter. Like most of the docs aren't for Flutter at Agora. So it makes it kind of difficult to like understand it. So I usually have to go through like Android docs or iOS docs where the syntax is a little bit different, but I mean, you could you could pick up what you need to pick up. So working with Flutter and Agora, I mean, the basic stuff is pretty good. And there's now, now there's some tutorials for, for all the things that I put out and then some good blogs out there as well. But the documentation is sometimes tough for the more complicated things. That's kind of a, an interesting thing that you're doing there though. Like having to learn from another framework yeah. or language. Like I've done that before. I actually had to, uh, there's something that I'm going to implement here. It's called the most senior method. I don't know if that's the right term, but I had to figure out how, uh, how Max built that out using iOS. I think, mm -hmm. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I, like I have to like, I mean, because you can understand it, you can kind of see yeah. what's going on, even though it's a little bit more challenging. But it's definitely a good skill to be able to acquire to like, you know, that's you know, obviously what everyone talks about learn concepts, not the actual yeah. language, because once you figure those out, you're going to be able to use it anywhere. That's exactly what I had to do for the RTMP because there's just nothing like it doesn't even look like it exists on Flutter from the documentation. But I mean, it's, everything's very similar to Android and all that stuff. Here, I think I'm almost ready to show the participant count. So let me uh, let me update this real quick, and then it looks like I have a bug. So I'm gonna try to fix this real quick. Let's see. So by default, I'm gonna set this to zero. Oh, I see what happened. I didn't add in an ID, so I'm not even updating it. So I assumed that I had the ID, and in this case, I have a function here called update participant total, and I just pass in the array of participants. And I need to add this ID here, which is going to be member count. And let me try to restart this. Console. What the heck? I hate. I'm like clicking a bunch of things and it seems like there's like a lag or something. <laughs> Join syntax result unresolved word. Wait, participants on channel member left. Hmm. I'm going to take a minute to try to figure this out, see what's going on. Let me slow down here a little bit. I think maybe it's the query for the participants. Let me console this out. Like, so there's this function called get participants or get members. Pass that in here. What's up? Someone in the chat with all caps. Make Django chat app using sockets. <laughs> Funny how many people want to see that. And I'm totally going to do that. It's not going to be this advanced, but Django has this package called channels and I absolutely hate it. I did a video on it after using stuff like this. Cause there's like, there's Agora RTM. There's also something like pusher. These, there's these other platforms. And it's one of those things. It's like, if it's been resolved, why, why do it from scratch? Because channels doesn't seem like it's, it doesn't feel like it's managed that well. Mm -hmm. Like, cause there's like web sockets. And then on the back end, you need a socket server. And that's where channels comes in. I just don't like it. Like basically like just to add in like one little feature into your application, you have to rebuild your entire, like not rebuild, but like you have to change up how your application is structured. And I definitely don't like that. All right. So I'm trying to figure out where this thing is being called. So what I'm going to do is comment everything out. No, actually I don't want to do that. Update participant. I spell participant, right? It's one of those words that I always misspell. That looks right. So somewhere in this function, it's thrown an error, but the, but it's not really telling me what it's like what the error is. So there's some so, comments saying async. You forgot async. Ah, async good call. Keyword. 
call. Let's see, where was that? That was um. And then we got make Django chat up using sockets, copy pasted ten times. Maybe you should do it then. <laughs> what stack are you using? HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and Agora. Agora for the SDK. Keeping it vanilla here. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to figure out. So I'm doing the async. So we have a wait for channel members. Oh, right here. This is why I run into this problem a lot. Okay, async. There we go. That should fix it. Probably not. Missing async, async on member left. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, so I just... Just added that, and we have member joined. Async before update participant. Participant. Channel message on channel message. That's where. Okay, so we had it in two areas, on channel message because I'm using a wait right here. So freaking cool! Like I love that. Like people in the chat. Like sometimes I just feel like everyone's just like watching me just to see if I screw up, and then people are actually paying attention to the code and helping. Like that's the coolest thing in the world. I love that. I was building my little, uh, I released this little book tracking application and I was building it live on Twitch too. And like, I mean, there was multiple times where people came in and like helped me out for something that just, I had no idea about. It was, it was it's, it's always like, it's the best feeling. Yeah, for sure. Let's, there we go. So we're updating, hold on a second. Okay. So the member update total is updating in the new one. So on member joined, it looks like it's not updating this right here. So we can see the new member get added, but I must have. Oh, I, I think, think I commented it out there, right? Member. Oh, that's right. Here we go. So I'm just going to copy this on member joined. Oh, it's so satisfying to style these applications because as you're building it, like it looks horrible. So even if you add cool functionality, it doesn't feel satisfying. But then. Then you style it, it looks a little bit better. Yep. All right, let's see. So let's do one more. So it should update the member. Let's see. Um, what's this guy's name? We'll just call him Joe. In, in honor of Joe Santos. I mean, we'll just <laughs> do test. Boom. There we go. Live count. It's updated everywhere, but not exactly. Why didn't it update here? So we have the name here. Here, let's try that one more time. Let's just do this. Okay, so that looks good. And we'll just let the dots rejoin. Go to test. Okay, so that just must have been a lag. Cool. And then if I remove them, we can see these update. Cool. All right. Python Django member left the chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Use async. Yeah, it looks like everybody or a lot of people noticed that. All right. Trying to figure out what the heck the next step was. So we should have some notes written down. So that's actually, I don't know how you structure your tutorials, but in my case, what I do is I always get the demo ready. And then I um, I kind of like write out a layout. And then what I'll do is I'll actually recode the entire tutorial and I'll document every single step, like every function, not every function variable, but basically everything that I'm adding to it, I'll like, I'll write it out and then I'll make my tutorial based off of that so I don't miss a single step. She will say, please make the website look good. Of course, he's offended because, you know, you put in all this time and it doesn't <laughs> look good. We'll make it look good. We'll add it in later. <laughs> <laughs> so you code your tutorials twice before you actually create the video? Yep. Yeah. I'll make the demo. The That's the easy part, right? I'm just coding. You just get the demo going and then I'll go through it one more time. But yeah, because there's a lot of like, it's really easy to forget. Like you think... When someone's watching a coding stream, like as if like I remember all this stuff, it's it's really hard to do that. So yeah, I'll just look at my own notes and then I'll base it off of that. But yeah, I and it's rep it. it's repetition too. Like why not? Yeah, what I, I I do it like, I mean similar but less intense. I guess I I write it out once and then like refactor to try to make it as simple as possible. Because I mean usually mm -hmm. just to I try just try to make it work. You write a whole bunch of stuff, got a whole bunch of things I commented out, do a whole lot of extra stuff. So I try to make it as least as minimal as possible, like using as, using as little code as possible and making it just as easy to understand. And then, you know, structuring it, spacing it out nicely, making sure everything just looks nice, refactor it, and then, yeah, work from that. 
Yeah, keeping it keeping it minimalist is definitely hard too. Like, yeah, you like you can think of all these features, but it's like that one little feature can add in an extra half hour to the tutorial, and then you're wasting someone's time, and they might not you know care for that feature, even though you might like it. Yeah, it's always like you always have to break that down. So I always tell Shuvo too, uh, the my designer, I'm gonna keep referring just so I make sure everyone knows who that is. Uh, he always starts like creating these like super like he adds in like the super smart logic into the site and i'm like no we can't do that that's not what the purpose of this tutorial is like you always want to add it all but that's going to be like a 40 hour tutorial yeah can't do that now what i what i try to do so i i don't i don't do that many tutorials anymore i guess but um what i try to do is always i i made it known that my designs look like just not good um mm -hmm. my designs is something that I mean, I think like people, like I'm not a design expert. So like, who am I to like teach anybody how to make like beautiful designs? So I wanted to teach them like the back end and how things work. So I would make, I'll purposely make everything look like really bad just to keep the mm -hmm. code as simple as possible instead of, you know, putting in all these extra things just to make it look nice. The core concept to understand there is just like, yeah, yeah exactly. There. Yep. Yeah. Like even in this one, the project still looks like crap. Like there's, I mean, there's nothing good in it. Yeah. But I spent like what twenty minutes designing that template. Like it's just unnecessary, like to actually put that in there, even though this is a different style of tutorial. But yeah, that's good though that you make that clear too. Like, hey, we're focusing on concepts, not you know. Yeah, because I think I also like design is something that everybody is going to have something like different about it, right? Like someone like my little might like curves on their borders. Someone might like just str strict borders, and depending on different degrees of the curve and everything like that. So like, it's not, I, I think those it's good to like teach design concepts and everything, like how to make, like I like design course does his, his videos are, uh, very like concept based. They're not like, mm -hmm. Oh, you should do exactly this and this. So, but, um, yeah. So for my tutorials, it's just like make things work. If you could figure out all the, all the core features of how to make things work, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to figure out how to make it look semi-decent. Yeah, end. yeah, exactly. And you're right. Everyone has their, their own yeah. ideas about that. So you might think it looks great, but yeah, someone else doesn't care about that part. A guy asked, what do you think about WebRTC with Django channels versus Agora? Versus? I mean, I'm going to do the WebRTC thing. So I guess I'll let, I'll let him decide for it. Like you're going to see a big difference um, as far as the versus topic. I def I'll definitely use something like Agora. Again, there's other tools out there, but uh, something like this, just because that's not the part of my application that I want to focus on. I want to focus on functionality and not having to scale it. And uh, for something like this, I mean, if I was if I was a WebRTC guy, like I knew that really good. That's all I did. Sure, I'd probably do it that way. But yeah, I, I just, that's not where I want to put my energy. So I'll definitely use something like Agora for that. There's, this is a question I, that uh, I'm curious about too. But so, uh, Louise asked, how do you make SSR on Django when using React? Is it SSR? Possible? What's that? I'm trying to figure out what that is. Rendering. Oh, server-side rendering? So that's like what Next.js is? is like oh, yeah. Like, that's easy. Yeah. Easy? Yeah. So uh, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to build your, you know, run the run build command. Like you'll let the project get compiled and all that, right? And uh, you just put in those into the Django static files. Like you would just create one template. I actually have like a few videos on that. Just look up Django React and then throw my name next to it in YouTube. I have one video where it's like 11 minutes and I, I connect them. Now that's not always a preferred way. A lot of people do like to keep them separate. So whatever you decide, but if you want to actually have Django hosted, do server side rendering with that, then that's definitely an option. All right, so I'm going to throw in the user i'm gonna throw in the username right now oh here we go this is where i want to add it uh, into the chat so right now we have the id but when i throw that in there we go now i can actually see the name and then when we add the dots to this chat let's see this is called test i just want to make sure the recipient sees it too to say yo for us that sounds like something you would say right yeah i'm yeah. definitely a yo type of guy you are <laughs> <laughs> all right cool so we got the names um i think next i'm going to do timestamps, but before then i do have to use the restroom for like 45 seconds all right. i got 
I got a I got a bathroom in my room, so it's pretty sweet. We have a two bedroom condo with three bathrooms. I'm like a little bit excessive, but hey, I'll, I'll take it. It's nice when guests come over. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, here I'll just do the timestamps right now. I can hold it for a little bit. So this part's going to be easy. Uh, all I'm going to do is go to. I mean, this is going to be, I guess, different based on how you want to do this. But essentially, uh, when we're appending the message to the DOM in the add message to DOM function. All I'm going to do is go ahead and generate a timestamp and then just throw that in. I know that there's like time zones and all that. So technically it's going to be converted to your local time zone. Um, but the only issue with this, so this would actually work, but the only issue is what if, what if every second counts and let's say you wanted to order messages by the order that they were sent in. So let's say like you send a message and then I respond to you, right? And it takes too long and then you send another message. Now, if that were stored in a database, um, if we got the timestamp on the receiving end, your message might actually appear before I sent it out. So like, let's say this is like a legal battle and you're trying to like confirm when something was sent, mm -hmm. you know, you can make that argument, but I'd rather take the timestamp on creation and then have that passed over. But then you have to do the converting to like the time zone. Like right now you're in Chicago, I'm in Florida. There's an hour difference between us. So we'd have to like, make sure that the timestamp for you doesn't say 12, 37 PM, you know? Yeah. Makes sense. See. Also, I'll, I'll probably have to. Yeah, sure, sure. Soon, because I got I to go walk this this dude right here. Oh, let me see that. I don't. This this little guy. Oh, I thought that was a pug for a second. <laughs> uh, it's a little Shih Tzu. I got I got to go walk him and then make some lunch too. Cool, cool. All right. So, well, thank you for joining, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank uh, you for thank you for having me. It's been it's been fun and cool. To, I'm excited to see this thing being built out. Yeah, uh, for yeah, sure. I want to see it done today. I'm going to try it. Like I said, you know, it's, we've been streaming for two hours and 32 minutes. I'm going to keep going at this pace. You know, if I want to finish it, it's going to take me probably another 10 hours. So we'll see. <laughs> All right. So All cool. Right. I'll uh, chat with you later. All right. Good luck, man. All right, take care. All right. So I'm going to mute it for like a second here and then we're going to add a timestamp, but I need to take like a, a minute or 30 second long break here. So give me a second. I'll be back. Coffee's starting to get cold already. Let's see. Still have people in the chat. I'm going to spend a second in the chat, then I might as well catch up if Tadas isn't, isn't here. Sure, Shuvo just made the template. Will Tailwind want to check it out? Oh, okay, so you're referring to your design. I thought you were saying this one. I was going to say this one's completely HTML, CSS. I specifically didn't want to use anything, any kind of framework for this. Uh, I'm not using the theme. This is all custom built. So see someone asking about this, the tech stack again, HTML, CSS, and then using the Agora SDK for the video and, and real time messaging. We'll have to add real time audio too. So like, just like you would in Twitter spaces or clubhouse, you can actually bring up a audience member to chat with. So another question, maybe unrelated, is it worth using GraphQL with Django or Django REST framework is all I need for the job? I mean, both both will do. Like this is one of those things, like if you're trying to go for a job, like apply somewhere and they're using GraphQL, then learn GraphQL. If you're doing your own projects and you don't see any reason to use it, just stick with Django REST framework. It's really up to you. 
I don't really get into those kind of opinionated conversations because I think Bolt will do just fine. Like, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't use GraphQL, but I personally don't. I'll be doing portfolio reviews later. And if anything, I'll hire somebody that's, or not hire, but bring on people like Gary Simon who are a little bit more advanced at knowing how to review those than me. I'm not, that's not my skill set. All right, I'm going to get back to adding a timestamp. So right now we have messages here and they are outputting the usernames. So this is all in real time now, but we don't have a timestamp. So I do want to add that in here. So let's go ahead and do that. And to add in the timestamp, I think I'm just going to go ahead and just do that locally. Not locally, but I, I won't send it. I'll just do it in the section where we're adding the message to the DOM. All right. Is there anybody here that's been here from the beginning of the stream? I highly doubt it, but I'm going to watch the chat if you're here. Let me know. That'd be kind of cool to, to see. I personally don't think I'd ever watch a stream this long, but if it's entertaining enough, it's kind of cool. So to local time stream here, we're going to get the current date. And then we just want to make sure we set the format here. So let's see. <clears throat> Just making sure that the face cam was on. I thought I turned it off by accident. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna set the hour. So we want the hour and then the minute time. So we'll just do a two digit here. And then for the minute, the two digit. Okay, so we get that timestamp or the created value. And let's just add that in the message body. Let's just do a span tag for now. We'll do a small actually. So username near, so you've been here the whole time. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for watching, man. All right, we're just gonna throw that in and that should be it. So let's give this another shot. I'm not sure why the, I think that's because of the refresh, but the member name was unidentified or undefined. Perfect, so now we see a timestamp. I'm sure you can, I think you can see that right there. Again, we'll work on styling later, but um, now the timestamp's working. So it's just grabbing the current time, giving us the hour and the minute. All right, what did I wanna do next here? So. We have the timestamps. All right, so this part is going to be kind of interesting. So this is going to be the live feed to the lobby. And I, I guess I could spend time styling up this page. Yeah, let me do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to style this page and actually make it look good. So I'm going to have to rewrite a bunch of stuff here. Um, I'm going to use the, the template that Shuvo built me. And uh, we'll add in the styling. We'll make this look good. And then the next section, what I'm going to do is actually uh, build it into where in the lobby, if you're in the lobby, if a room gets added, it's going to appear live in real time in the lobby. And then the member count will be constantly updated. And then if the room is closed out, you're, you're not going to see it in the lobby. It's going to go away. So the messages, let's say if we have like, here, let me just draw this up here. So let's say we have our lobby right here. I'm using the fancy Microsoft Paint. So if we have our lobby, we're also gonna have rooms right here too. So we'll just do room one, two, and three. Two and three. So these are all different rooms. So as the member count gets updated inside of each room, we're gonna need to send information. So first of all, the lobby needs to know which rooms exist. So these rooms, when someone joins the lobby, these rooms will send a message to the lobby and they'll let them know, hey, we're, you know, we're a room, here's, here's a name, here's how many members are in here and so on. So we're going to send this information. Now, we also want to make sure, I keep adding these extra lines everywhere. We also want to make sure that as members join the room, that this information here, let me just use the actual pencil tool. I probably need to make that thicker as a brush here. Here, let's just use this one. 
So we also need to make sure that as a member joins the room, we update the lobby. So let's say we have 10 members here and a member joins. The lobby needs to know about this so we can see this information in real time, just like you would on Twitch. So that's what we're going to work on next. But real quick, I'm going to redesign this template, make it look cool, and then we'll move on. Uh, I see somebody said, is it Arian watching from Romania? Thanks for watching, Arian. Appreciate you being here. The stack, this is, we're going to use React for the final project, but right now it's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with the Agora SDK. I'll keep mentioning that, but that's the stack. We're keeping it very vanilla right now. Okay, so I'm just going to minimize this because I might pull this up at some point, but let's go ahead and actually fill in some styling here. So what I'm going to do is actually get the template that I have built pre-built out for this, and I'm going to start updating a bunch of stuff. So the code actually might break for a little bit, and we'll just we'll just have to go through and fix it. Okay, so we're just going to redo the main template and the room page. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to go to the main.css file and I'm going to paste in just a whole list of or a whole bunch of code here. So about 187 lines. This is the template that was pre-built. It's basically styling that scroll bar, our navigation, our body, presetting all the fonts, setting the avatar sizes, nav bar, logo, and so on. So we're going to get all that ready. Let's see what I did to my template here. Close this out for now. <clears throat> okay so that broke a few things so that room total isn't really going to show too well okay so from the template i also want to grab the logo too so let's go ahead and grab some images here so This is the mumble file. What I'm going to do here is grab some icons. We'll create an images folder here. Just throw all this in here. Okay, so what did I do here? I think I opened up the wrong file. Okay, so I just pasted all these in. So these are some NFT images that I, I was using. Somebody gave this to me to use for the tutorial. So we're just gonna use those for the options to select an avatar. So we're just gonna grab all of those. So I just added all this in and then we'll go back in here and let's start updating the actual template. Okay, so the first thing is, let's go to the header section. Let's fix some stuff in here. So room.html. Let's see. So based on how my designer set this up, so he has the header tag, he called that nav. Uh, in this section, we're going to want to also create a div here. And it looks like he called it nav list. So I'm just going to review that. And then he has nav links here. So let's just go ahead and rebuild this entire little section here. So okay, actually here, I'm going to, I'm actually just going to paste this in. I realize there's no reason for me to rebuild the template part. That's not what I'm focusing on here. Oops. Then we have our nav links. That's going to be underneath our nav list. Fix the indentation here. All right, so there we go. So we just updated the header. 
So we just threw in the Mumble logo, the text, and then we have our create room button, which takes you to this join room page, which we're gonna have to restyle up. And I also wanna make sure that this message section right here actually looks good. So right now we're writing these messages. They don't really look too good. So I'm gonna have to update the actual room code too. So in this case, let's go ahead and grab some CSS. So I'm gonna grab that also from the template. We're just gonna import all this information. So I'm not using React right now. I'm gonna do it later. Uh, this is because when I'm doing the tutorial, I'm gonna try to keep it uh, framework agnostic. I'm gonna try to stay away from anything that might eliminate the ability to do this for someone. Cause there could be view developers. There could be someone that knows Angular and then I don't wanna limit that. So I'll do it with, with this and then I'll have the React version available too. Appreciate that. I appreciate the comments in the chat. Just kind of trying to keep an eye out on those two. Okay, so let's see. We have our room CSS. I'm just gonna grab all of that. And we're gonna break some code here for sure at this point. So let's just go into, let's see. Where's that CSS file? So room CSS, I'm gonna copy all of that, paste it in. That's gonna break the code a little bit. And then we're gonna have to change some variable names here or some class names. So now if I go to the room itself, room HTML. Okay, let's fix some of these up here. So let's see, so we have our header. I'm gonna minimize all that. So that's taken care of in the main file. Then for the actual container, so someone's asking what this website's gonna do. It's gonna be a streaming website. I already showed a demo in the beginning. If you wanna go back to the intro, I actually show the final result. So I'm gonna keep kind of mentioning that because I don't wanna keep showing it. I've said it a few times. Uh, it's gonna be a, basically like a Twitch-like application for developers. Okay, so let's see. We're gonna set this to container, change this. And again, I'm just following what my designer built for the template. I'm just gonna make sure I'm following all these practices. Okay, so we call that room container. Then we're gonna create another section here. So I'm basically rebuilding it. I guess this is why I should have not focused on all this stuff because I'm going to rebuild it anyways, but I guess it helps for the earlier part of things. Section container. So in this section, we're going to create our participants. And I'm just going to comment out basically everything that I have at this point for now. So I just want to keep the old code if, if I need to rename variables and so on. So I'll just go ahead and fix those. So let's see, we have our members container. And then in that we have the section or the div for the members header. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna paste in some stuff here. So in the members header, we throw in participants, the count here, which we're gonna have to update on the front end. And then we have the members list is gonna be right underneath the header. Close that off and then the actual member. Okay. And then underneath this, we have our messages container. Okay, room container, get another section here.
Okay, so let's see. We have our messages and then our actual message. What I'm going to do is just paste this in here. And then I'm going to have to update a lot of the JavaScript variables there too. Okay, so we have our actual message, the actual messages, and then I need to throw in the form. And the form is going to be at the bottom here. So we have the messages. And let's see. So this should be indented right here. The form will go after the section. Okay, let's check this out. There we go. So that looks better. Now I need to make this actually work. All right, so let's see, what do I need to update? So in the uh, in the room JS file, so we just added in a bunch of HTML and CSS. And in the room.js file, I need to actually use this. So for example, for the section, I need to make sure that all these variables are the same. So in the original code, I called it participant section, participant header, and member count, which is the same name. So that looks good. And we'll just update this to zero. And then for the members list, it looks like it's actually... Let's see, members list. That's where we need to add it to. So in room.js, let's go in here, add participants. Okay, so add participant to DOM. What I'm going to do is recreate this variable then. And we're just going to update the contents of it. So we'll throw in the name. Oh no, so this is just like wrong section here. Let's see. This is going to be member underscore list. Is it members or member? So member list. And then this needs to be that code. And we actually want to pass in the member ID because we need to know what to update. Cool. So I think I can get rid of this. Go ahead and try this out. Yeah, I just made a, an annoying mistake. Um, I think the member is not being rendered out correctly. Let's see, update participant cannot set inner. Oh, okay. So yeah, I had the wrong name here. So in the update total section here, update participant, participant total. So this was actually called member count. I'm not sure why that's getting an or it's giving me an error. So the back end, I'm not using one right now. I'm probably gonna end up using Django though later for that. And that's only one part of it. I don't need a back end for this because I'm not actually storing any of this in a database yet. Right now it's just signaling signaling these messages out. Okay, so this is what's throwing me off right here. So it's saying cannot read properties of null in our HTML. So it looks like it didn't get the member wrapper, so member list. Maybe I didn't save that. Oh, that's why it's supposed to be an ID. Okay, so in that case, I'm gonna have to update the CSS too.
Yeah, for some reason it's not reading the member list. It should be updated. There we go, okay. Cool, so we see that, so I can actually get rid of the placeholder members then. Get rid of all these. Go ahead and get rid of Solomita. I guess they're all the same name right now. And this is our new member list. Cool, so as we join, let's go ahead and try this. I guess that form isn't working. So before I can work on the messages, that, that form uh, needs to be fixed too because uh, it's gonna be hidden. So if I go to create a room, this is a fixed element. So that form is actually behind this section here. So we'll need to update this real quick too. So let's go into, let's see, this entire header. We're going to join HTML. Let's update the entire header. Cool, so that's partially updated. And then we need to actually update the room itself, which we'll need to go get the room CSS or the join CSS. Okay, let's see. Paste that in. All right, so let's see, in join.html, we wanna make sure that join CSS is added. Cool, that's all there. And in this case, let's update the actual HTML. Okay, so the form looks mostly good right now. Let's see, there might be a few class names that are off. Okay, let's see. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm not gonna be specifically responding to things in the chat that are technical. Um, I see some talking about Webflow and so on. Um, I'm just coding along and just having some fun with it. I'll try to engage with the chat, but I won't be getting into specifics outside of what, what I'm working on here. Okay, so let's see. Let's close out the header. So for the entire container, let's update this. So room lobby container, that looks good. Then we have our form container. We have our form header. I'll just throw in this little emoji because it looks cool. I'm just gonna paste that in here, join room, form header container. So this all looks good. And we have <clears throat> the actual lobby form. So that's why all the styling actually worked because I kept the conventions based on what my designer put together. So let's see, we have form wrapper, form field wrapper. Here, let's do this. So he used the, the button instead of the input field. I might actually change this, we're gonna see. Okay, cool, so that's still working. That checks out. Okay, so that's our, our join form. So right now we're just gonna Go ahead and add in our name and we'll just do test for the room. We'll join it. We see the user. Let's try joining as another user. And we'll just do, let's keep using Tadas's name, even though he's not here anymore. And here we go. So we see the room count, everything looks good. Now we wanna work on the messages. So right now as users are messaging, the messages are being output, but they don't look too good. Let's see. Cool, okay, we're ready to go on to messages here. Okay, so for the room page, you have to go to room CSS or room.h or room.js here. So what I need to do is pull in some styling from how my designer set this up here. So we'll go in there and let's see. So room JS, where we're appending the actual message. That's what we want to update. Let's see, this is the message item. So what I'm going to do here is actually comment this out because we're going to re-add this. And I just want to make sure that I can see the original values. A message item. Let's just throw this in here.
Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. Throw this in. Okay, so the message values are actually gonna be the same. So we need to fix those right now. Let's actually change the values, but it looks like the message is being output correctly. So that looks good. Okay, so for the text, we're just gonna grab message data. We'll throw this in here, update the actual message text. Change that value for the author. We'll just do display name. Then we're also going to throw in a timestamp. Then let's just do created for the timestamp. Oh, there's one little thing that I think I need to fix up. So right now, you see how I'm adding the message here? This, let's just do this. This is a new message. Let's see that both users are actually able to see this. Okay, so as I output the message, the timestamp looks a little bit off. So the second we're over the 12 p.m. mark, we have this zero in front of the message. I don't know if you can see that. It looks a little bit weird. So I just want to fix that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do something the manual way, I guess. It's not the best way to do it, but I'm just going to go ahead and convert it. So for that timestamp, I'll just close this out. Let's do created. Okay, so when this is created, we just want to remove the zero if there is one. So what I'm going to do is first check if the string starts with a zero. If it does, we're going to remove it because that's only going to be after 12 p.m. So we'll just do if created that starts with, and we'll just do string for zero. Then let's go ahead and let's set created to equal created dot substring. And we're just going to remove the first character. So now if I send a message between the two users, crap, I think I opened up DaVinci Resolve by accident. Might pop up here in a second. Okay, so let's refresh both of these. There we go. So now we see 109 p.m. and it doesn't have the other stuff attached to it. So it doesn't have the zero there. Okay, so at this point, let's see, I added the timestamp and I think I might want to, I was going to work on the lobby next, but I might jump to the avatar section. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do here, oh crap, what did I do? Okay, so at this point, this avatar is static. So we added some images, or I, I added some images. I'm gonna stop talking like it's a tutorial. So at this point, I have I have a folder here of all these images. So I'm just basically statically linking to them. So what I need to do is, allow, I need to allow a user to actually select an avatar, and then I need to pass that avatar to, uh, pass it in through uh, either through like a session ID or pass it in session storage and then throw the actual URL in the actual messages as we send it. So, so the receiving user, the person on the other end can actually get this message. So let's do this. Let's see what our form looks like. I thought I already had this in here. So we have our lobby form and we're missing a section here where we point to these avatars. So let's go ahead and add that in. I'm gonna paste that in too. That was also added by my designer. So let's see. Okay, so that's going to be in join HTML, and we're going to add this under the room name. So all it is is simply a wrapper that says select an avatar, and then we have all these avatar options, and they're just hard-coded back to that folder. So that's where they're sitting. If I go here, now we have this option here to select an avatar. So as you join, you're going to have to select an avatar, and then we can jump to the next section. So you can't submit or you can't join a room without first selecting an avatar. And then again, at some point I can allow users to, <laughs> Somebody, I'm gonna stop talking like this, referring to, to how I'm going through this. Yeah, because my default is start teaching everything, but I keep forgetting that it's not a tutorial, so I'm, I don't have to explain everything. I'm just simply chatting here and hanging out with you guys. <laughs> Okay, cool. 
So I added this in. So the first thing I'm going to do is allow a user to select an avatar and then pass that into the next section. So I'm going to pull up how I built this section out in the last run at this. Let's see. Okay, just give me a second here. Let me load another file up here. Okay, so inside of our join.js file, so the JavaScript for this page, let's see. So we have our event handlers for the form. Everything looks pretty good here. And at this point, I'm gonna set a state to store our information for the avatar. Is it Zishan? Thank you, man. I'm a big fan. Appreciate that. Thank you for uh, being in the chat here and keeping me company. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create an avatar. Just set this value, and that's just not going to be anything in there. So we're going to set the avatar, and then we don't want a user to submit this form without an avatar. So let's see. What I want to do here is first check if we have an avatar. So if a user submits this, Let's just go ahead and check if we have an avatar. So we're gonna use the not operator. So if we don't have an avatar, let's go ahead and stop the user. So we're just gonna do an alert and we're just gonna say, you must select an avatar before you can move on. Okay, so we're going to stop them and then we're just going to return. So at this point, if they don't have an avatar, they need to select one. Okay, let's give this a shot. So we're going to try to submit the room or submit the form. It's not going to work. So it's just going to stop the code. It's not going to execute and go to the next section. Okay, so a user needs an avatar. So what we need to do is allow a user to select an avatar and then assign this avatar to a string value, which is going to point the file path to the, uh, basically to that folder. Like Carlos, big fan here also. Thanks for being in the chat, Carlos. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do something like this with React later. Uh, at this point, there are no private rooms. So because this is gonna be like a Twitch thing, it's not like a Discord thing. Um, I don't even know if Twitch has private rooms. I don't really use it, uh, but all rooms are public. So this is to stream publicly. That could be a feature you can add to it later. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, if the project starts going and we start getting users on it, why not? You know, if it works. All right, let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and get all these avatars. So what was the class name on these avatars? So we just call it avatar option. So let's go ahead and select those down here. But at some point we're going to add in a add in a room ID, so you'll actually be able to add in spaces for the room name. So we'll remove that, but for now we'll leave it here. So I'll just leave that down here. Avatar options, and this is going to be document uh, get element by or elements by class name, and we're just going to get the avatar options. See, so yeah, avatar options or option. That's what it's called. And then we just need to loop through this. So we're just gonna do for let i is equal to zero. Length of avatar options. How's the mechanical keyboard, by the way? Is this, uh, is this bothering anyone? I got this recently for Christmas, I think, or for my birthday, and I really like it. So I don't know if it's like too loud next to the mic, but I'm kind of curious. I haven't heard anyone complain about it. Okay, so we're gonna loop through all the avatar options. And then what we wanna do here is add an event handler. So we'll just, let's see, for each avatar, we're gonna do avatar options, add in I, go ahead and add an event handler to each avatar option. So we're just gonna do add event listener on click Okay, so let's see, on click, let's go ahead and get the avatar option and we're just gonna do dot class list. 
So what I'm going to do here is just add in a class. So we actually have a class. So I want a user to know that they selected they, uh, they selected an actual avatar here. So let's see. We'll do class list. And I think it was, let's look at the CSS, actually. I want to make sure that I'm following style.class list. Okay. Let's see. I'm getting to, uh, let's see, hour number three. So now, like, I'm getting a little bit fatigued, but then it's, it's just going to go away if I keep going. So let's see. I might be tired for about an hour, then I'll be good. Okay, avatar option selected. Okay, so that's a class thing we want to add to it. So if the avatar is selected, we're going to add in this border so you can actually see it. So we'll add in three pixels and then a border here. So let's see. We'll paste that in. So avatar option selected. So we're going to add an event handler on click. We're going to add in that class name here. Now, once this is actually selected, what, what I want to do here is go ahead and get the actual value of this. So I want to get the URL of the image. So if we go into join HTML here, I need to get this image here. So the source. So we're just going to get that and then we're going to store it in local storage. So we're going to do e.target and then we'll just do dot source. Let's see. Oh, that's, that's going to be the avatar value. So avatar value is going to be equal to that source. So now we have a value. That means that the form can now be submitted because we have an avatar. And then I'm just going to throw in this avatar into session storage. So we'll do session storage set item. See, what do I want to call this? We'll just call it avatar. But I had a different name for it. That's just going to be a string. Okay. Okay, I, I did something wrong here, I just realized. So in this section, I'm simply adding the class. So style or we're getting the avatar we're getting the class list and we're just doing dot add i don't know why heck i thought it was or why the heck i thought it was this way okay I'm actually a little bit mixed up here let's see okay i kind of screwed this up so we're adding the event listener and this is all going to be inside of the original loop. So we're looping through the avatars and we're adding the event listener. And the event listener is simply going to select our avatar, add it, and then throw it into our session storage. Now, before this, what I want to do here, because look what's going to happen. So let's try this out. As I click on these, let's see what's going on in the console. Undefined, add event listener. What did I do here? So avatar options, we're looping through them. We're getting the current avatar. So the title says, doesn't say what this is about because I don't know what it's about. We're just building a streaming app. So I guess that's the description. We'll see. Appreciate the comment, Joshua. Thanks for being in the chat. Yeah, so loop condition is wrong. I noticed that. I'm trying to like think straight here. Let's see. So for loop, we do we're looping through the length. Oh, that's why. I think that's why. Okay, so that's supposed to be I. Then we increment I. Let's see, maybe that was it. Okay, undefined add. Okay, so let's see. So e dot target. There we go. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so on click. Yeah, I realized I screwed something up there. Okay, sometimes you just can't think straight. Okay, cannot read add. 
of undefined. Okay, so e dot target e dot class list. Let me just space this out. Class, yeah. What am I? Oh, it was a capital. Is that right? Is that what the issue was? There we go. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So here's kind of the issue. So as I select these, you, you're seeing that, that purple. In fact, I'm going to change that to green. I want that to be a little bit more obvious. So let me find that green color that I used and I'm going to change this real quick. So give me a second. Okay, let's go into our CSS and we're going to change that purple to green. Let's check this out. So as I select these, they turn green. Now we should only have one selected because that's the one that we selected. So what I need to do here, and there's different ways to do it, I'm sure, but uh, with my sorry JavaScript skills at this point, let's just go ahead and loop through. So basically before we add it, we're gonna loop through all the other avatars in our list here, and we're just gonna remove the class name of selected. And that's it. So we're just gonna make sure someone's asking if I know TypeScript. I've used it before. Uh, no, I don't actively use it. I've just never really found a need for it. I'm sure I might be wrong on that and it could help me, but I've gotten by plenty without it. It's a very common question. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do, it kind of feels weird to create a loop within a loop. I don't like this. Like I said, it feels, oh no. So avatar options. So we're gonna loop through it. Not length, greater than I. Dang, I completely screwed up that for loop in the last round. I had like, five errors and four lines of code. Okay, avatar options, we're gonna get each avatar and we're just gonna do class list and we're gonna remove it. Okay, and then we're just gonna remove this one right here. So basically any avatar that has this class name on it, we're just gonna remove it and that's it. Thanks for the support, see Coding United. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I could use array four too. I don't know. I'm just old habits that hard, I guess. Okay, so cool. Now when I click these, it changes which avatar we're selected or selecting. And then inside of the console or the session storage, as I select it, the avatar URL will actually change. Okay, so now right now we see it's image three, then one, two, one, there we go. So we have the URL. So now this is getting passed on to the next section. So someone's asking how long I'm going to be here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll just keep going until maybe it's done. Okay. So now when we join a room, so right now we can't join without an avatar. I guess that did work. Let's see what's happening here. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay. So it says I have to select an avatar. So let's actually join a room. So we'll do Dennis test for the room. Let's select this one right here for the avatar and we'll join the room. Okay, I just realized the messages for some reason are up there and we need to fix that. Let's see what's going on here. Let's do room.css and then room.html. Just wanna fix that quick issue or hopefully it's quick. Okay, so I'm gonna go back through the template here. So we see room container, then we see messages. I actually need to remove this placeholder. So I don't need this anymore because those are being added dynamically. So we call that messages container and then I think I figured out what's happening. Maybe not. Let's see. Okay, so I removed the wrong thing here. Well, so I see someone saying that there's padding. Yeah, I, I'm going to fix that. I actually have CSS prep for that. I had my designer take care of all that. And I'm just trying to figure out what I did wrong as far as like a class name or something like that. Look right now, if I add in the first message, it's right here. So there's something in the room that I did wrong here. Let's see, we have messages, message container. Oh, I think I, I figured out 
Oh, I'm getting closer actually. Okay, so this is supposed to be an ID right there. Nope, guess not. Yeah, so that's room container. And this is supposed to be the class of container. There we go. Yep, there we go. Cool. All right, let's see the chat here. <laughs> All right, so the avatar is not showing up. So we're fixing that section. Okay, so we pass the avatar into session storage. So right now I'm in this room and I need to display this avatar from session storage right here. So here's the URL. So to get this, let's go ahead and actually, hold on a second, let me pull up my other file here. Okay, so to get this value, we're gonna go into room.js. And in here, we're gonna grab the avatar somewhere. Let's see. So we have the room name and let's just do let, and we'll just call this my avatar. At this point, we're just gonna go into session storage dot get item and we'll get the avatar. Okay, so once we have the avatar, I can actually pass this in the message. So right here where we send a message So when we're sending this message, I want to throw this into add message to Dom. Let's see, how do I want to pass this in? So I'll just throw it in as a parameter. And then in add message to Dom, when we send it, we also want to make sure that it's passed in on the channel message too. So we'll just say avatar right here. See, hello from Russia. Privet. <laughs> Thanks for being in here. Okay. So we're throwing in the avatar here, but now we need to get the avatar actually. So how is the recipient going to see this avatar? Now for this, what I'm going to need to do is query this information, trying to figure out how to do this. So on channel message, once we get it, how did I do this before? We're going to pass in the avatar. So yeah, let's just, um, let's just try this out locally here. So, Right now, if I try to send a message, let's see, let me go back to create a room. Let's select this avatar. I guess that didn't work, give me a second here. I see Denmark's in here too. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, let me fix that too. So the empty messages for now, I'm just going to add in a restriction. Someone's saying, um, seven, seven, even, or seven, that's kind of an interesting way to spell that. Um, let's just do this in room.html. I'm just going to restrict it. So we'll just go down here. Let's delete the old message form and we'll just do required for now. I know there's other ways to do it, but right now we're just going for the quick fix. Well, so now you can't submit it. Okay, so let me see why this isn't sending. So right now, when we send the message, or when we add the the message to the DOM, so add message to DOM. Um, oh, okay, I think I need to add in the actual avatar. That's what's going on here. So let's just do avatar. So it'll work locally, most likely, but it won't work in the remote user. So I'm still gonna have to finish that part up too. So let's see, for the image source, we'll just set that to the avatar string. Argentina here. Nice. Okay, so now let's try this. 
Here, let's just close out this room. I think I opened up the wrong one. Okay, let's go back to create room. Just do Dennis. Test. Select um, this one, so something more obvious. And then if I try, perfect, there we go. I now have the avatar that I wanted to set. Now, the only issue here is if another user joins. So right now, we're not really sending this or we're not actually sending this over. So I actually need to remember how I did this. So let's just do um, test and Tobas will select his avatar. And right now, if I send a message from this user, so we'll say, hey, I see it locally, but on the remote user, we won't see it. And then if I go from this user to the other one, now we're just seeing that, that image uh, tag, I guess. So the placeholder for it. So right now we need to figure out how to send this message. So give me a second to think here, try to figure this out. So on channel message, let's see, we have on channel message. I need to pass in, I guess I could pass in the avatar through the data here or through the message data. Let's see. Yeah, so that's how I'll do it. Okay, cool. So let's see. When we submit it on channel message, I'm going to throw in my avatar in the channel message. So there's no reason to actually store that in an attribute anywhere. I'm just going to pass it along. So in this case, let's see. We're just going to go ahead and add in one more value. Call this avatar. So basically, when we send a message, we're sending all our information, including what our what our name is. Uh, our avatar information and so on. Now there's different ways to do this. We could try to maybe store this somewhere and then just pass in the user ID so we can query all this information. But this works just fine right here without any extra work that we need to do here. So we'll just do avatar and let's just throw in my avatar. So I'm the naming convention is like this for a reason too because I'm actually gonna use the name avatar later. So if I have my local avatar and then another user's avatar, uh, those can actually con uh, conflict there. So I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Okay, so when we receive the channel message, let's go ahead and actually get the avatar now. So we're going to get this and then we're just going to do avatar. All right, let's try this. At some point, if you all want, I mean, I don't know when I'll do it, so it might be a while. Most of you might not even be in here. I might actually make this a live link and see who wants to join and join the chat. And I might do that when we add in the, the video streaming. So we'll just do, hey, oh, here, let's, um, hold on a second, what happened here? It's not sending it. Let's just do console.log. Okay, so on channel message, it's supposed to be passing in the avatar here. So I send the message, I throw in the avatar. Just try that one more time, then I'll see if there's if the issue shows up again. All right, let's see what's going on on the receiving end. get user attributes by keys failed. Okay. Why did this call fail? That shouldn't have anything to do with it either. Someone's asking if I started. So Timothy, um, sort of. I started building this from scratch, but I worked with my designer and I built out the template. So we weren't focusing on that. So most of the template is implemented, but if you go back to the start of the stream, which might be posted later, I don't know, uh, you'll see that we started this just from an index.html file and that's it. So completely from scratch at this point. Okay, so I'm trying to find a bug here. It seems like the first major bug of the stream. And the, the bug actually doesn't make sense or what the console is saying because I'm trying to send a message. I don't know why this part would matter. Let's see if I can 
maybe console this out or comment this out. So on channel message, let's just remove this completely. Because it seems like it started happening right after this. Yeah, okay, so the issue is definitely in this section. So let me try to comment that out and see if I can console out the data because I might be trying to query it and it's just not working. Check where it's getting the image. Yeah, let me, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Because So it's obviously there. Okay, so data, here's the message data, display name, message, avatar. Okay, so I'm getting the avatar. All right, let's try to, ah, I see. Okay, got it. Avatar needs to be passed in as the last parameter to add message to DOM. That's what it was. Okay, so we'll do testing. Boom, there we go. You like them apples. All right, so chat's working. Avatars are there. It's starting to look pretty, pretty neat here. Okay, add to the DOM, perfect. Yeah, yeah, got all that taken care of. Cool, let's see, what's the next step here? Um, room IDs and titles. So I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually create some room IDs. So there's a few things that were going on here. And again, by the, by the time I explained it last, uh, most people probably left the stream already. So basically we're gonna have a lobby and we need to make sure that the lobby is constantly updated and has all basically access to all the room names and the, the room member count. Sorry for the squeaking chair, it's pretty loud. But before then, right now our room names basically have to be a string. Like they have to be a string with no spaces and all that sort of stuff. But I don't wanna have that. Like right now, if I'm streaming, I wanna be able to write in whatever I want into the stream. Like this stream, for example, I think the title was, um, let me see and try to find it. I think it was like building a, a real time chat application. So in there, you're gonna see all this spacing. You're gonna basically see a name of a room. So I need to change it to where the room name is actually an ID as opposed to, uh, as opposed to like a name like that. So we can actually make this name dynamic. So that's what we're gonna start changing up here. No, I'm not using a tailwind. So let me think about this process here. So basically in this join form, and I might, by the way, take a little coffee break here in a second. My coffee's cold, so I need, a, need some more energy and warm coffee. Okay, so somebody's asking about attending the live streams. I don't know, I plan them kind of last second. Like this one I planned five minutes or 15 minutes beforehand. Um, so usually I do like a 12 hour notice. So if you hit the subscribe bell for the channel, um, it'll actually make sure that you're seeing it because I know a lot of times people are subscribed, but they won't see a, a stream or an alert for it. Okay, so first of all, I need to generate an ID. And I think I'm just going to make this pretty simple. I'm just going to make it a long string, but later on you'd want to use something like a UID or a UUID. So it's there's a low chance of duplication. So that way two rooms don't have the same ID. So we'll do that later, but for now it'll just be a, a, a long string or just a number. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, now the fatigue's setting in. Now I'm starting to get a little bit tired. Okay. I'm like blinking out on where to do this. Yeah, I could do the NPM package. That's the easy part though. I'm just gonna do uh U, UID is slow. How, how do you, I don't, what do you mean by that? I've never had any issues with that before. Um, I'm just trying to figure out where to set it. So I think I want to set it in the join form. So basically as a user fills out their information, I want to generate it and then pass it through. Oh, okay. I, I, I see what the issue is. Okay. So here, here's what we're going to do. I need to take a step further back here. So we're going to have the ability to join a room or create a room. So here's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm actually gonna have to create two lobby forms. So right now we can create a room. When a user is 
is trying to join a stream, I don't want them creating a room name. All I want them to do is set their personal name and that's it. So you're only going to be able to find a room like in the in the actual uh, in the lobby and you can click on a room and then that's how you're able to join it. But at that point, there's no reason why you should set a room name. So right now we're just joining by making sure each room has the same name. So we're going to have to completely undo and redo a bunch of stuff here. So yeah, let's do this. So I'm, instead of taking a break, I'm going to ask my wife for some coffee. I'm going to have her see if she's available to get some and then I'll just think right now. Hey, can you give me some coffee? Either make it here or just like pick it up at O A or something. Yeah. Uh, let's just make a fresh batch. It, it like burns out. I don't want to drink it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Yeah, I'm getting tired, but I'm not gonna stop right now. Let's see. Okay. So we're gonna have to undo a few things. I guess again, it's not a tutorial, so I don't have to explain everything. It would be a lot easier to just start doing this. So I want two different forms. Again, if I was using something like React, uh, this is where <laughs> this is where React might help out a little bit. I can add in some conditional rendering. But in this case, I'm just going to uh, create two different pages for this. So let's just go ahead and go to my desktop here. We'll go to the Mumble project. And we're just going to duplicate the join page. So copy and paste that. I'm going to call this, let's see. We'll just do host.html or uh, not join, but create.html. Okay, so this is going to be to create a room. The other one's going to be to join. Someone's saying, I'm lazy. Go get my coffee. I guess I'm pretty lazy. All right. Now in this section, I think I'm gonna have to create it. I'm gonna create its own JavaScript file actually just to not conflict here. I know it's not best practices, but for now we're just gonna do this. So we'll do host.js here. We'll create another file for it. And let's see in create. So we're gonna undo some stuff here. I'll keep the same CSS, but for the JavaScript, I'm gonna call this host. Okay. So now in the join file, I'll remove the room name. So we don't need this. So I'll just comment this out. And I'm going to remove the need for uh, having to capitalize it and, and remove spaces. So I'm going to take that out too. Now the join page is going to look like this. And also in the header section of our pages, what I'm going to do is update room to join here or to create so that top button right here somewhere at the top oh it's in the header section okay so this is going to be going to create.html so i'll update it here and then i'll also update that and join and this will be better if i have some kind of framework to help me make these values dynamic so i'm not having to re update this everywhere. So we create and then create will also go to that. Okay, so create page still looks like this, perfect. And then we have join. All right, now for the create page, we're going to, have to change up some logic here. It's going to be create.js. Oh, I changed it to host. So I'm going to change that to create now. Or I had it as host. So create.js. Okay. Okay. So in create, this is not join now, this is create. Let's see, the first thing we do here is we go through the same process and we're adding, basically, we're basically creating a room. Now, the only difference here is that I don't wanna store the room name here like this. I'm gonna pass it in through the URL 
but I also want to, yeah, we'll do the, we'll do a UI or an ID instead of the actual name here. So that's what we'll change it to. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's do room ID. And then let's see, for the room ID, I'm gonna make sure this is a string and we're just gonna do, um, I'll actually just grab the same thing that I did in the room JS file. So we're just gonna grab this value. So that's how we're gonna generate our ID for now. We can change, we can change it later if anything. I'll probably do that in the live version and I'll just set this to some high value right there. So we're gonna, we're gonna generate the ID. Then in the session storage, we still want to store our display name we also want to get the room ID and pass that along right here. So that's going to be passed into the URL. So that's going to be the new room channel name technically for specifically for Agora to understand that. And then I also want to store the room name, the actual real value of the room. And this is just going to be in session storage. And this is just so we can display it if we need. I guess there is a point where we do need to, we do need to send this to the lobby. So we'll do that too. So at this point, we'll just do session storage e.target, and then we'll just do room. So now the URL is gonna be different. I want it to be room ID. Okay, so let me think. Um, we're passing that on into the ID. We're sending it over. Is there anything I need to do in join? Let's see, in join here. Window.location. At this point, yeah, here's what we're gonna have to do in join. So in join, we're gonna to have to get that room value as a garbage truck outside, so it's gonna be super loud. Okay, so let's just do this. We'll just do room ID, so this isn't join. And we need to get this value. And for this section, we're just gonna copy, actually, here, I'll just write it out. So we'll just do new URL search params. And we're going to do window dot location dot search. Okay, so that's going to be the URL params. So we'll just do URL params, and then we're going to get that room ID. And this is going to be the room. Okay, so when we're joining, we're gonna have to take the URL from the, or the room name from the URL or the room ID. And then we're gonna go ahead and pass in our information. And then we're gonna throw in our display name. Let's see. And then we're gonna redirect the user to the room. So we're gonna set that up. I don't think I need to throw this in session storage. Yeah, so that's not needed. So at this point, uh, what I'm going to do here is just reset the form. So just do lobby form dot reset, just in case a user wants to go back. We just want to make sure that this information is all reset. Okay, so that's joining. Let's go ahead and actually try this now. It still might have to fix up some things here. Okay, so let's go to create a room. So now I can do any kind of name. So let's just do... Um, we are testing the room. Okay, I select my avatar, hit join. Now I have this ID, so that's what I was talking about. Now we're not using this as a room name. Hold on, what did I do here? Oh, it looks like uh, the display name is the room name. See that? That's supposed to be my name. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so that's supposed to be my name. Let's see what's going on here. Um, in create, we're doing session. Oh, display, that's supposed to be room name right here. Okay, let's try that again. There we go, perfect. So we have a room ID. And now if I wanted to share this with someone, I can just take that link right there. And if I give them that ID, this ID is gonna be in their browser, just like you would you know, assume. And 
Let's see. Yeah, I think that's it. So then all they need to do is add in their name. So we're just going to throw in their name. They're going to select an avatar, hit join. And there we go. So now we're in the same room and the room name is more dynamic. Okay. I think that's it for the room name. Let's see. Uh, it might be available after. If you guys think it should be available, yeah, go ahead and do it. It's going to be a course. I'm going to, this is all going to be like a four hour, maybe three to four hour long tutorial, not a course, but a tutorial. Um, I'm just doing like a practice run and also building up like the beta version because this is probably going to be a real project. Those are for you that, those of you that know Mumble, this will probably be the new Mumble uh, just because I want to revive it and change it up a little bit. Okay, so I think that's it for those steps. So we have the room. Now, now it's time to finally do the lobby. Okay, so let's talk about this. Okay, so uh, for those of you that left, basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a lobby just like you would in Twitch or I guess on YouTube where you have like all the, all the videos that you see. In that lobby, that's gonna be a feed of every single room that's currently active for the website or everybody that's, you know, every room that's available on Mumble. That will have to be live. So that means that if you join and there's three rooms and then two more rooms join, those rooms need to be added to that lobby with a live count. So as users join or leave a room, those are gonna be updated. So we need to figure out this method. And this is actually, I mean, it's not complex. It's just gonna be a little bit different, but essentially these rooms need to feed information to this lobby. So whoever's in this lobby needs to receive all this information. Oh, I got my coffee. Thank you so much. You want to say hi to everyone? Hold on a second. I think they're... Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really see me. There you go. Okay, have fun. Cool. Have Thank you. Here. You are? Yeah. Thought I heard an echo. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. Oh, I just realized I was... Never mind. Okay. All right, let's see. I'm trying to rethink all this because I just finished figuring all this out yesterday or the day before. So let's go ahead and build out that lobby, actually. Let's do this. So what I'm going to do is just grab the template. In this case, I'm not going to build it from scratch, or at least the, the HTML and CSS part of it. I'm just going to throw that in here. So let's go back in here. We'll throw that in, and then we'll actually start working on the functionality. So we'll create new file here. This is going to be called lobby.html. And I'm just going to paste in all the code that my designer made. So essentially, we just have the same code for our header and everything like that. And then we're going to see a bunch of rooms output here. So we'll just save that for now. And then we need to add in a lobby.css file. I'll show you what's going on too, so we can break this down. Okay, so let's go back to that lobby. Oh, that redirected me. Here we go. Okay, so let me update those links real quick. Okay, somewhere here. I know there's a logo. Here it is. Create. All right, and then this link should also go back to the lobby. Dang it. So yeah, this is definitely the downside of not using the framework. I have to manually update the navigation bar in every single page. Yeah, authenticating is not that hard. I mean, we'll deal with that. Like I said, if anything, I'm going to make this into a multi-series stream or something like that, because I'm going to do the course. And I don't know if I'll add in authentication or not the course, but the tutorial, because um, this obviously isn't the tutorial. I'm just hanging out here. But uh, in that one, I'll probably add in authentication. 
And uh, yeah, that's like, it depends on how you want to do it. You'd probably want to use something like React for this and then authentication, just use JSON web tokens and that's pretty easy. Hey, I see uh, Sharir Shuvo is back. Did you just wake up or go to, or <laughs> were you just out for the day? I'm trying to figure out what time it's where you're at. Okay, so here's our lobby. By the way, Shuvo, I updated your, I added in your design. Oh shoot, I just realized for the create page, we need to change this one second. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so when we go to create a room, this is the form that we're gonna see. Um, the design's all done already, Shuvo, so the chat looks good. It's all working, but the only part that's static at this point is this right here. So this is what I want it to look like right here. You can all see that. She will say it's midnight. It looks pretty. Yeah, you're the one that designed it. <laughs> um, Shuvo, someone's asking what kind of naming convention. Shuvo, if you can answer that in the chat. Uh, it's, uh, is it BEM, right? BM, I'm trying to figure, I don't remember. I'm not a CSS guy, so that's like, I'm kind of rough when it comes to that. Um, yeah, I think those are the practices that he's using. And no, it's not all static. The only part that's static right now is the lobby. Everything else is dynamic. You can see as I join, again, I just showed this. These are all real users. It's all in real time. Um, so what we're going to do, the only part that's static is this lobby. So these are the rooms that are live right now. This is static. We're going to fix this right here. So we're going to update this to where it's going to show real rooms. And then later on, we'll have to add in something for a user to actually upload and store the images. Okay, so give me a second to think about this then. All right. Okay, someone's saying I have an urgent question. I want to make, make a website in the back end. I made a website with the back end. Should I use a front end framework? What should I use in the front end? Um, I mean, I don't know what you know at this point, but React's always a good option if you're not even familiar with that, like if you're using something like Django, use a Django templating engine, completely depends on your needs, but I think both of those would be a good option. Okay, so. I'm just trying to think of like where to get started right now. So the first thing I need to do is alert every lobby member. Okay, got it, I am, now I'm seeing it. So let's see. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. When you're in the lobby, we're gonna create another room. So the lobby will actually be like one of these rooms right here. It's gonna be like, like using Agora, we're gonna create a channel called, uh, called lobby. So what's gonna happen is everybody that joins this is gonna be in a channel called lobby. And then everybody in a room is gonna be in their current room, but they're also gonna have they're also gonna be in that lobby channel with all the users here. So they're gonna be able to listen in. So when somebody joins, when somebody's in a room and somebody else joins the lobby, a message is gonna be sent to the lobby and, and it's gonna let them know about the current, about the room and the status of the room. So we're gonna give the information to the room name and so on. So that's how the lobby is gonna know about the rooms. Okay, so that's where I'll start. So let's see. Thought I had some notes on this earlier. That's what I'm looking for. Cause I remember going over this. I just wanna, might as well use that to help me out in this process. Okay, so. So let's see in our lobby.js file. Oh, we don't even have a lobby.js file. Let's go ahead and create that. So we had it linked up, but it wasn't there yet. Okay. Uh, 
I have to get throw in my app ID here. Close all these extra tabs. Yeah, I've reviewed. Someone's asking, have I re reviewed subscriber projects? I've definitely done that a few times already, probably like three times. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just grab some information. I'm going to basically follow this method because we're going to have to join also from the lobby here too. So in lobby.js here, go ahead and throw this in. So we're going to throw in our app ID. The token, we're not going to use that right now, so we're going to leave it. Uh, for the UID, we're just going to generate a random string that's going to be random. That doesn't really matter to us right now. And I'll just set this as a higher value just so we have less probability of duplicates for now. And then later on, we can do UIDs for that. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's do this. We'll get the UID and we're just going to get rooms data. So we want to know about all the active rooms on the website right now. So we want to store that in some kind of object and we're going to call initiate. We're going to make this an async function. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is set up our client. So we're going to call this RTM client, just like we did in the room.js file. So I'm going to create that. Starting client. Dang, this chair is really squeaky. Thank you for that comment there. Appreciate that. Okay, so let's see. This is going to be our team for Agora. RTM dot create instance. I'm gonna throw in our app ID. Okay, wait, and then we want to join the channel. Or login, not join. We'll use the UID and the token. Okay. So lobby channel. So we're going to create the channel right now and then join the channel. So every user that goes into our lobby is going to be in that. We're going to join it. So we're going to create it, create channel. And then we want to join it. Await lobby channel dot join. Okay, so let's see. The first thing I want to do is get some information. Um, okay, so here's, here's what's going to happen. We're going to get this information right here. We're going to get this lobby channel setting. And I'm actually going to copy this, and I'm going to bring this to the room. So room.js here. And basically, when a user joins the channel, we're also going to join... Let's see. I'm trying to figure out where the best place for this to join. Oh, wow, I have a donation. Thank you so much. Wow. Appreciate that. <laughs> really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. So in this case, let's just go to our room JS and I'm gonna add in this user in the next step here. So basically when we join our current room, we're also gonna join the lobby channel. So this is how the people in the lobby will know about the users inside of the, the lobby. So when that happens, when a user joins, we want to send a message to everybody in the lobby. So here's what we're gonna do, let's see. Uh, we're going to create an event handler. So we're going to know when someone joined the lobby. So in this case, we have a member joined method and we're going to call this on 
the lobby channel now. So when someone joins the lobby or goes into our lobby, we want to go ahead and trigger this function. Initiate, I misspell initiate, initiate. There we go. So we're going to trigger that function or call it right away. Hold on, what the heck looks wrong here? Okay, so when someone goes into the lobby, we're going to get the alert on the lobby channel when the member joins. Here's what we need to do. We're going to send the message or we're going to send a message to the person in the lobby letting them know about our room. Now, because this message is going to be sent out to everybody, so everybody in the room will know that somebody joined the lobby, we don't want to just send the message back a bunch of times. We want only one user to send this message. So in this case, we're going to find who the most senior member in the room is. Well, actually, I guess we can find a random member of the room and then just send that one out. So we want to make sure we only send one message back to our user. So let's see. By the way, someone's asking about Agora. If if how can you build the app if Agora is paid? Um, Agora gives you a lot of free usage minutes. Trust me, most applications you're going to build, you probably won't even cross the, the paid tier unless you're adding in video. And even then they give you like 10,000 free usage minutes every month. So you don't need a card on file, nothing like that. So yeah, you can definitely test this and build this out if you need. Okay, so lobby channel, um, when they join, let's see. So when someone joins, let's go ahead and first get all the participants. So we'll just do let no do participants. And this is gonna be equal to lobby channel. So we specifically want all the participants from the lobby channel. Hold on, we're gonna get our channel members. Okay, so wait. We wanna make sure that not all users send this out. So we're gonna get our current channel members. So everybody in the room, we're gonna get all the members. And then we're going to ask a question. So we're going to say if participants, so if this is equal to zero, what's going to happen here is we're going to send, or one second, if the current participant, so the first one in that list, we're just going to grab the first one is current to our UID, then we're going to send a message. So we're going to be responsible. If not, then we're not going to worry about it. Somebody else in the room is going to let the lobby know that a user has joined. So that's why we're just getting that and we're checking this up against our UID. So this is going to be an array of participants and we're just going to go ahead and send the message. So if we are, then we're going to go ahead and get the lobby members. And we're going to call cha lobby channel. It's lobby channel dot get members. Now we want to get all the members that are currently in the lobby. And I feel like I could clean this code up a little bit better. Get members, so we're gonna get those members, and then we're just gonna go ahead and loop through this. Yeah, we're gonna add uh, video um, video streaming. I don't know about audio. I mean, I guess audio would work. You just can turn off your camera, but I'll decide on how to do that. I could integrate this later. Like I said, if if this goes on and I really want to extend this project and people really like it, um, let's say we get users on it, then I might just start doing this more regularly and start adding in like a series for it. Wow, I couldn't assign a simple variable. Okay, so lobby members dot length, and then okay, so we're gonna loop over every single lobby member, and we're gonna call the RTM client. So that's us if we're the most senior member in the room, and we're just gonna do send message to peer. So earlier on, we used the send message method or I use the send message method, and now I want to send it to a specific peer. So the peer I'm going to send it to is the current peer in this iteration. So every peer that's in that lobby, we're going to send that message to them. So in this case, let's go ahead and write this. Funny, because I'm talking as if people have been watching this all along with me. I know, I know most people that started are not even here. It's not like a tutorial or anything like that. And I've been going on for a while too anyways. Okay, so we're gonna stringify the information. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna send the lobby our room name. So we need the lobby to know who we are and, or we need to know the lobby to know about our room. And then we're also gonna specify the type of message. And for this, that's gonna be the type of message. This is gonna be room underscore added. 
Okay, and who I'm gonna send this message to is gonna be the next value. So this is gonna be after That's going to be lobby members and then the current iteration. You know, where else supposed to place that? Something looks off here. Let's see. Stringify ends right here. Okay, so send message. Wow, I completely made that confusing okay cool i think that's it if there's an error i'll fix that i don't know i people have asked me about the for each loop i don't know why i've just gotten used to writing my loops this way and i just stick to it I just i feel like i know exactly what's happening here for each loop i mean it, it's the same thing i just it's habit i guess um okay so now in the lobby channel what we need to do is we need to listen for whenever we get a message from a user. So we'll do RTM client, let's RTM client dot on, and then we have the message from peer method. So whenever we get a message from peer, we have this event handler that fires off so we can actually do something with this. So we'll create an async function. Okay, and then here we're gonna pass in a message and then a peer ID. First thing I want to do is get the message data. Okay, so we'll get the message. Let's actually console this out. Let me see this. Make sure it's working. Excellent, open up OBS, turn that off. Agora RTM is not defined. Oh, I didn't add it here. Okay, grab this, bring it into lobby.html file. Yeah, I'm sure the tutorial for this is going to be like three to four hours of the complete project. So it's going to be a lot faster than this. Why is Agora RTM? Okay, so I added the SDK. I can see that's working. Did I misspell? Oh, RTM is supposed to be capitalized. That's why, okay. Create channel, failed. Okay, my brain's kind of fogging up right now. Give me a second to think. Someone's saying, always feel limited while using CSS frameworks. Yeah, and thanks for the donation. Wow, I just realized you donated again. Um, that's how I feel. I'm not against them at all. I just don't like the idea of using something like Tailwind and then needing to customize something and not knowing how to do it. Like I, I, I've used Bootstrap before, but I, I try to stay away from it. Anytime I've used like a template or bought one for a project, I just felt like I would have to redesign it just because there's always that one little thing in there that makes you unaware of like, you don't know exactly how someone else designed their template or if it's like a framework, you don't know what what variables or what IDs or class names you can use. I just realized I spilled my coffee. Yeah, so that like makes it more difficult. If you know how to use them and you know how to use CSS, then absolutely you can make it faster. Okay. Like a leak in my coffee. All right, let's see. What's the error? 
Okay, create channel is not working. Oh, I must have not used a wait, I'm assuming. That's usually what happens here. A wait, wait. No, that looks right. Okay, create instance, app ID, create channel, lobby. That's what happened, okay. All right, so this is the lobby channel. That's the name of it. And that means that in the room file or room page, I also wanna make sure that as we join it, we're joining the room. So everyone's in the same room. Luby, that's not right. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try this. Let's uh, let's have another peer join the room. Okay, so when is this supposed to get called? So I said on message from peer. That looks fine. Um, when is this message fired? Room JS. So whenever we join, oh, okay, I see. All right, so I have a, I have the room open and it looks like I just closed everything out. So when we join the room, we're supposed to receive a message from peer. So we joined it, that message is, let's see, maybe it's not sending it. So let's go into room on member joined, send the message. Okay, so I want to see if in the room, I'm like too zoomed in here, let me try to zoom out. I want to see if in the room I can get this message. Oh, I think my light died out. Give me a second. So I'm trying to keep the ambience up in the room, yeah? Make sure that feels nice in here too. Okay. Let's just try to see if I can find this in the console. It seems like this function is not triggering whenever a user joins. Channel member joined, but that's not the right one. Okay, let's just close these out again. Oop, we gotta select an avatar. Let's go ahead. Okay, I'm just gonna put this in the other screen and see if I can get the, oh, there we go, perfect. Okay, so channel or member join called. So it did work. So did we send the message here? No, for some reason it's not checking this. So let's just, I mean, we are the only participant in the room. Let's console out a few other things here. So let's just do console.log. Uh, let's get this participant. Let's get this information and see if that's us. Then if this is working, then it must be somewhere in the channel send. Yeah, maybe there. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm not completely ignoring the chat, but oh, uh, I see Shu. Okay, cool. Shuvel's entertaining everyone, <laughs> giving everyone a uh, the wisdom on CSS because he's a legend when it comes to that. Okay, channel member join called. It looks like I'm getting an error because, well, let's see. Okay, so I'm seeing participants. So participant zero is 45 and the current UID is 45. Okay, so that means that this message should have been sent out to the user. Now, why is this not being sent? So 
console.log, let's just do And let's console out uh, lobby members. Oh, I figured it out. I was supposed to call a wait here. I always do that. That's probably why. So here we go, message from Pierre. So this is the lobby and we just got this message. So this user in the current room sends out the message to this person in the lobby, letting them know, well, at this point, nothing, that there's just a message sent. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove all this. All right, so now that we send this message, what are we sending? I'm sending the room name and the type of message. So in a lobby, let's go ahead and retrieve this information. Let's close out create.js. Patrick says, hey, Dennis, I just want to thank you for your Django tutorials currently doing A-level CS projects to get into university and your videos helped me so much thank you patrick i'm very happy that you reached out and said that that actually means a lot to me i like that's put a lot of work into these things i mean this one's i'm just having fun so whatever but the tutorials yeah like it's really rewarding and i've actually for the first time met a fan in real life i don't like to yeah i guess i don't like that term but i met a viewer in real life and it was pretty cool like it was really fun to actually like put a you forget that people on the other end are also people trying to learn like you just kind of like, i guess there's like a there's a disattachment to who's watching and it means a lot to actually like see that kind of feedback he was a university of nebraska football player it was fun to be able to chat with him okay so i'm gonna get back to this okay so let's see when we send the message um, in the room or in the yeah in the lobby, all right, let's go. Let's get the message data. So we got the message from the peer, and the peer is sending the room information. So I have this room data variable right here, or this object, and I just want to add in this information. So we're going to do room data, and then we'll just do message data, and then in this section, I'm just going to throw in message data dot room. So that's the room name. Go ahead and throw in the member account. So do members and we'll throw in count. Now I also need to get the count. So I wanna get the live count from the room. So let's just do count. This is gonna be equal to RTM client dot get channel member counts. So that's the main thing is we need that room ID. In this case, uh, yeah, that's the room ID. So we can leave it like that. We're just gonna go ahead and get channel member count. So this is another function that we can use. And in this case, in this function, we're just going to pass in a list like or an array because this is JavaScript, not Python. And we're just going to pass in the room ID. So room. And it's going to go ahead and try to, it's going to get us the channel member count for this specific room. So all we need, the second we have that ID, we can pretty much get any information from that room. So that's why that first message is important back to the lobby because we just need to know what rooms are there, then this can pretty much take care of itself from here on out. We'll, we'll build all of that in. So we're just gonna add that in. So we're throwing in the count. We just wanna store that information. And let's see. We see Jonas, also wanna thank you for, also wanna thank you, started learning Django and other Python stuff all the way from Germany. Thank you, Jonas. That's so awesome. Well, it's so exciting. I know one day we're going to be meeting up, so it'll be kind of fun to actually see everyone in real life. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So right now we have some static data. And what I want to do here is output the rooms in here. So there's a class or an ID here called rooms. just want to make sure. So somewhere right here, rooms list, room container, room content. Room item, okay, so room container. The room container is where we're gonna add all the rooms to. So I'm just gonna minimize these and let's get rid of most of them. Let's just leave one. Okay, so now we have one room in there and then we're just gonna use this item to uh, replicate. Or replicate what this is gonna be. So let's go ahead and do rooms 
it's going to be document dot get element by id i forgot why i even came to this page so i was looking for that let's, let's make this an id so i'm going to change this i'm also probably going to need to update that in the css file so we're going to get it by the id because we're only having one room container we're not having a bunch here and then let's go ahead and actually create a room so the first thing i want to do is i want to make sure that this room doesn't already exist if it does then we just want to update it so let's just do uh room is going to be document dot get element by id and at this point we're just going to get the room item so this is going to be room fellow underscore and then we're going to get the room name and pass that in so each item will actually have a unique id data dot room okay let's see we're getting the room and then i want to check a condition so i also want to make sure let's update first of all the css i want to make sure i have this id here so room item let's give this an id so let's just do this id equals because this is what we're going to use to update and that's not going to be room item i'm going to call it room message here and then this will just be like the id so that'll be like one and then i'll make that dynamic and room container So I'm going to change this to an ID. Ishuvo, I see you're in the chat. If there was a reason why you made this a class, let me know. Um, if anything, I would like to, I'm just going to rename it for now. But I just want to know if I'm going to run into any other issues later. So just, yeah. Because like I said, there's only one room container. There shouldn't be any reason why it's a class. A quick fix anyways. But yeah, I just want to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, so... Let's make sure it's still functional here. Cool, still working. All right, now in this section, uh, we're gonna first check if the room exists. So let's just do this. We'll do if room is equal to null, then what we're gonna do is simply create the room. So if there is no room, that means we queried the room right here. If there is no room, then we're just gonna create the room item and just append it to the rooms container. Um, and then if there is a room, well, we're going to just update the room count if we need or remove it. Okay. So the room equals wait. Hold on a second. This doesn't look great. Oh yeah. Okay. So here's what I here's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to create a build room function. I want to separate this code because that's going to be a lot of code to build in right here. So I'm going to make this inside of the initiate function. Build room. All right, and this is going to be an async function. And I'm going to make a request from here. Okay, let's see. So the first thing I want to do is get the room count. So I want to go ahead and get the room attributes. All right, now I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me think. Okay, I want to get the room attributes, all the information about it. Okay, let's do that last. Let's let's just go ahead and continue here. So with the room build room function, uh, I just want to make the room item. So just do let room item. And you'll see why I'm making this into its own function later. I just want to separate it just to make sure that we're not like overloading a bunch of logic inside right here. So we're just going to return the room item. Okay, let's see. And in here, let's just go ahead and get the room itself room item how long have I been streaming for let's see four hours and 25 minutes i don't know if you're asking me a uh, quick thoughts on davinci resolve i like it um, this is the first thing i started using for video editing there was like adobe premiere i think or something like that my brother used it but i don't really like it not that i don't like it i guess i just got started on this and it seems like a, a better version of it but who's to say it's better i don't know Okay, so 
when I call the build room function, so I just got this room, let's actually remove it from the DOM right here. So our room container is now empty. I made a build room function. Right now it's just gonna be the same thing with some static information. If there is no room, we're gonna call await and then call the build room function. And that's gonna be it for now. Okay, let's give this a shot. Let's see if this works and then I'll add in the information. So right now there's no rooms live. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new room. Let's see if this is working. And we'll go into our lobby, create a new room. Okay, so that room should have appeared right here. Um, someone's asking about a discord. I mean, I have one for other stuff, but I'm, it's really hard to maintain those. Like I, I feel bad because I'm not active in them because I'm always working on projects myself. So I wouldn't even recommend it because I'm not in there unless, you know, you just want to find a place where other people are at, but those don't, they, they tend to kind of die out naturally unless the creator is in them. Okay. Okay, so let's try this. I don't know why the channel message should work. Just do console. Oh, I see what happened. That was dumb. Okay. So I didn't actually append the room to the DOM yet. I mean, that might be, there might be other issues, but for now I know for sure. So I, I get the room back, the room item, but I don't actually, I don't actually do anything with it. So after we build the room item, let's go ahead and do rooms dot insert adjacent or new HTML. And this is going to be before end. So we want it to add on to the end of it. So before end, and we're just gonna do room. All right, let's try this. Got an error, RTM client get channel member is not a function. Get channel member. What is the function then? Get channel member count? Count, yeah. That's what it was supposed to be. All right, just a couple of errors. So lobby, JS, execute, insert on an element. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so let's watch this. Let's see what's going to happen. Um, oh, Shuvo, I asked you about the class thing. And I, I can't tell if you answered that or not. Maybe you just did. Tends to use, let's see, what are you saying? Tend to use class for everything. You never know when you, you need to use that section on another page. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could do it that way. I I, I just figured out. I know I'm only using it once, but yeah, it's, just want to make sure. Okay, so let's check this out. So here we have this room. And we're gonna have to do you know a little work on this still, but uh, let's refresh it. So right now I just left the room and there's no room in here. Now, if I uh, zoom out a little bit. So if I go to create a room, you're gonna see this room appear, but only when the user first joins a lobby. So we're gonna have to add like different event handlers to know when to do this. So let's make a room. And at this point, it shouldn't appear here. Okay, so there's no room, but if I refresh, now there's going to be a room because we got that message back from peer and we still need that information. So let's work on that. So right now when I first, or when I create a new room, select so like right here, 
if I close out this room and then add a new room, it won't appear here. It's like we have a room right here, we're in the room, we're chatting, but the room is not displayed here. So in this case, I need to listen for when, let me think. I got it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add uh, a heartbeat method. This is a uh, someone saying she was saying sip coffee. Is that to me? Uh, I'm going to add a method. I, I heard somebody call it a very smart developer I talked to uh, called it the heartbeat method. I don't know if that's the official term, but essentially we're going to check the pulse of a room, and we're going to check every two seconds if there's a user in that room. I mean, we can do one second, five seconds. It really doesn't matter. Um, in theory, I think thirty seconds would be fine. But basically every 30 seconds, we're going to run this interval and we're going to check if the room still has any members. If the member count is at zero, then we're simply just going to remove the room from the DOM. If that member count changes, we're going to update that room member count. So we're actually going to update it. And then we'll work on adding in um, like the room name and stuff like that because that, that information is still technically static. Okay, so let me start building that in here. Okay, let's see. Where did I want to add the heartbeat method? Okay, so all right, the functionality for this one's going to be a little bit annoying, but let's go ahead and just start. Okay, I'm gonna call this check heartbeat. Again, it's checking the pulse of a room. This is kind of like I guess the analogy is um, the analogy is like in those movies when you see someone go into a, a meeting with some with some gangsters or something like that. And they always say, if I don't come back in five minutes, you know, shoot, you know, kill someone or whatever. I don't know, like how they, they always say that. It's basically saying that if we don't return back a signal, you know, terminate the room or whatever, or that sort of thing. So we're checking the polls. So we're checking if something's there. I guess that's the best analogy I can think of. I don't know if that one makes sense, but I'm sure we've all seen movies where they say that. I know someone's going to laugh at that in the comment section. My awesome analogies. Okay, check heartbeat. Let's see. So we're going to go through this room data. So all rooms will be added in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and create the loop this way. Someone's asking any reason why I'm choosing JS over Python. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to do this with Python. I mean, different parts of it. This is where if you're really looking to build out different types of applications, depends on what you're doing. But in order to communicate with this API, we need JavaScript to do this. So some of it could be built in Python. In fact, our backend where we have our, uh, our users when we add an authentication, that will be in Python. But this part, we're going to need JavaScript here to work with the API, specifically with this SDK. As a web developer, I mean, there's times where you can maybe not use any JavaScript, but in most cases, if you really want to add in some features, it's going to be necessary. Okay, so let's go ahead and do room underscore ID. So we're going to loop through in rooms data. So we'll just do it this way for now. So we're going to loop through. So on every check of the heartbeat, we're going to loop through this object. And then what I'm going to do is check the count of that room. So just do count. Let's see. Uh, I'm not on a laptop. I'm actually on a desktop right now. I had, this, I had this one custom built out by my brother-in-law and then laptop. I don't I actually use it a lot less. It's a Lenovo. I'm trying to remember. I don't even know the details, specs of it right now. Sorry, my brain's just not working that well. I'm trying to focus on this. I'm already four hours and 35 minutes into it. All right. I need some energy. Some more coffee. Okay, let's see. I'm going to check the count, and then we need to check if the room count is less than one. So 
So if, if this if the count is less than one, that means there's there's no members in that room. So it's obviously at zero or below that. I don't know if it, how it can get below that, but it's less than one. Uh, then we're just going to go ahead and we need to delete this room from that list and we need to remove this room from the DOM. So let's go ahead and do document. This is why we passed in that dynamic ID that's added in right here. So I'm just going to get that room and then we'll just remove it. And we'll delete it from the object. Okay, so at this point, there's still more to write to this method, but I want to check and make sure that it's working. So let's go ahead and create this interval. Okay, let's see, set the interval. We'll just call it check heartbeat. So we're gonna check the heartbeat. And then at this point, let's go ahead and call it every two seconds. So it's 2000 milliseconds, I believe. And then we'll just do return. We need to clear it, otherwise that's gonna give us errors. Okay. Okay, so every two seconds, this method runs. So let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and add a room and then we'll leave that room and this should update live. So open this link up a new tab. At this point, uh, we'll just do another room, select an avatar, hit join room. Okay, so we're in the room. Now in this, at this point, we still have to refresh this to add the room. Okay, so we see the room. Now, if I close this room out, that room should disappear. So once the heartbeat checks, and huh, let's see what's going on. Okay, cannot read properties. All right, so it looks like get element by ID room double underscore. For some reason, it seems like it doesn't know about this room ID. Let's try this again. Let me uh, refresh it. I'm gonna have to refresh it this way. Room is there. Does it have this ID? Maybe the ID is being added in wrong. <coughs> okay. Yeah, room double underscore one. Okay, so that's being added. And then message data. Oh, I think, hold on, I think I know what happened. Yeah, so as I'm adding the room to the DOM, I might not be adding the ID in. Here we go. So this section right here. Okay, in that case, uh, I think into I need to pass in the actual room. Not build, but room ID. I want to throw in the count too. We're going to update that in a minute. But at least I can get the initial count.
Okay, that's account and then Okay, message data room. Okay, cool. Now that should work. I mean, it could always go wrong too, but. Okay, so when I leave here, that room should disappear in two seconds. There we go, cool. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's also update the count too. Let's make sure that that's live. Let's get this count and then we have to also update this. All right, so the next step here, let's see. Um, when we first load, the room is displayed, the room gets removed after two seconds. Uh, we also want we also want to send a message anytime a new room join. So when somebody is in, if somebody's in the lobby and a new member joins a, a new room is created, uh, we want to we want to alert the lobby of this room too. Okay, so that's the next step here. Let's see, when do we want to do this? Hmm. I think this would have to be on the initial load of the actual room. Shiva, I can't tell if this message is to me. So you said you have to check the room exist if the room is existing in the DOM or not, then remove it. I'm assuming somebody else is asking that question because that's what I did. I, I check if it exists first. Um, okay. I'm trying to figure out. Hey, how's it going? Is it? Haram, I'm trying to make sure I say that right. Maybe pronouncing that wrong. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And yeah, I just like vanilla JS for now. We'll do React later. <laughs> okay, I'm still trying to figure out how to do this. I'm like completely spacing out. Let me see if I, like I have some notes on this when I did the first round of this. Okay. Okay, on the first load, I have to send a peer message. <laughs> Raymond says he's de he debugging this code too. Someone's asking about the project. Yeah, we're building a, a streaming application. We're just at different points of it right now, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be like a Twitch for developers. Um, okay, so. Hmm. Okay, so we have a get participants function here inside of room.js. In this function, I think I can, let's see. So basically, yeah, anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quiet for now because I'm gonna keep confusing myself trying to explain it. I have some old logic written here and it's not making sense to me right now. I guess I don't need to drag that in there. Got it, okay. So we only need to send 
Let's see, we only need to send the room. We'll, we only need to send the initial load. If, let's say somebody's in, a, let's say somebody first joins our page. Well, no, okay, so that's on the join method. We already call that. But if a room gets added, here we go. So when we're getting the participants, what we're going to do is we're going to have one of these participants send a message to the lobby and say, hey, this room is here. Uh, go ahead and update your information or something like that. I'm just trying to figure out because I have a function in my in the first code source code that I have that doesn't really make sense. So I'm trying to like dissect it from there. Update participant total. Here we go. Okay, this is how I'll do it. <clears throat> Uh, it's mumble and no, it's not a placeholder. We'll see. It, it might be the replacement to the original mumble project if you know what that was. Okay, so in get participants, we, we're first gonna get, let's see, get participants. Uh, hold on, where am I querying these participants from? Update participant total. Oh, shoot, I just realized I removed that, okay. So we since we have participants here, so before we start updating everything in that sidebar, let's go ahead and test this out here. So we'll just do if participants. So basically, if the current participant count is less than one, less than or equal to one, that means we're the first person in the room. That means we just created a room. So I guess I could do this by the host value and I might fix this later, but for now, let's just go ahead and do this. If the participant count is one. Hmm. Yeah, let's just do it this way and then I'll fix it later. Okay, so if the participant count is less than or equal to one, it means that we're the first member. Okay, so we're the creator. Now, as a creator, we are responsible for sending out this message and letting the lobby know that this room exists. So let's just go ahead and create a variable and we'll do lobby, lobby members await. And we're just gonna do lobby channel, a get member. So we're gonna get all the members. So this is everybody that's currently in the lobby channel and we're gonna send them a message. So we're just gonna loop through and I'm just gonna copy the same loop that I created earlier where I sent out the message. So we're gonna loop through all the lobby members and we're just gonna send this out. So get participants, where did that go? And we're just gonna send them a message. So RTM or RTM client send peer message and that should be good. Okay. Yeah, I overcomplicated that one. That threw me off there. All right. So now if we go in here, let's go ahead and create a new room. Select an avatar. Should have got the message from the room. Let's check this out. Maybe there's an error. Heartbeat is checked. Did I check the length of the participants? No, I did not. That's probably the issue. Can't oil that thing up. That's really loud. Okay, I realized I left the lobby, so we're gonna do a new tab here. Boom, there we go. Sweet, so if I leave, 
If I close it out, the room goes away. And then if I go to add a new room, let's just do this right here. So as you can see, there are no rooms right here. So if I go to add a new one, just add in some room information, hit join room. There we go, room was added, awesome. And at this point, we see the count, we'll fix all this. Okay, so if the room is closed, the room goes away. So we're dealing with, we've kind of went through most of that functionality. Um, I think the next thing we need to do is simply update the room name. So if you notice that room information is static. Uh, the title, the total count, all that, that's all the just um, based on what was in the template. So let me see if I'm missing anything. So we took care of, when we first load the page, we took care of when a room is first added, we added the heartbeat method. Um, at this point here, I think what we need to do is we need to update the actual, the actual room stuff here. So let's see, uh, in the heartbeat in the lobby. So if the room is less than one, we delete it. Now we need to update the room. So we check it on each iteration. And then what we need to do here is we also need to call an else statement. So that means that the room does exist. Well, we need to update it. What if a new member joined the room? We wanna update, we wanna update the, um, the total count. Let's see, someone's asking if we copy cookies from one browser, can we authenticate the user and another? Um, at this point, I'm trying to think, because there's not much authentication. Technically, you don't even need to be authenticated to join it. The only person that can make a room is the host. And I don't think so. I don't, I don't see how that would work. We're not checking anything up against session storage in that sense. Okay, so. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to need to think through some logic here real quick. I might not even talk in this next section and just write it out. Yeah, Hermod, um, I am going to make a Django Channels project. Um, I, I have the Jing, uh, Jano, Django Channels oversimplified video, but I'll do something with that. I'm going to make a project. I'm still working on that one. I was doing a lot of other things. Okay, so the logic here, I guess I'll try to think it out, think out loud. If the room count is not less than one, all we need to do is simply update the room. Okay, so let's just do this. Let's go into the else statement. We'll just do new room. The variable here. And the first thing we're going to do is get the room. So we want to check if this room exists. So we'll just do uh, document dot get element by ID. And we'll just go into these back ticks here, room, double underscore, and then room ID. First, we're gonna get the room. And what I wanna do here is check if the room doesn't exist. If it doesn't exist, we wanna build the room. And if it does, well, actually, let's not do that here. Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and build a new room Hmm. Okay, here's what we'll do. We're gonna go ahead and query the rooms variable. So let's just do let rooms. Document that get element by ID. And this was rooms container, I believe. Let's see what I call that. Rooms container. Okay, so we're gonna get the room container, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say 
new room is going to be equal to the weight and then build room. And then in here, let's see, we need to throw in count. So we have count right here. So we're just going to throw in, <clears throat> we're going to throw in the room ID. So we need to know what room to get the count from. Hey tech, so yeah, we're, I'm just having fun building a, a project that I'm probably gonna push live. It's gonna be a Twitch-like application for developers to stream and chat, and I'll show some of the functionality we have in now. But yeah, give you an update, I guess. I know a lot of people are joining and leaving. Okay, so room ID. And we'll throw in the actual room ID here. So that's to get the count, that's to get the room ID, we're gonna build it. And then we're just gonna do rooms dot insert async HTML. And then we'll throw in the new room. Okay. So yeah, we're basically, we're just gonna, if the room does exist, all we're gonna do is query, we're just gonna go ahead and Well, shoot, I just realized we don't even need new room here. I don't even, I'm not sure. Well, hmm. yeah. So yeah, uh, tech, this is what we've been uh, <laughs> dealing with the whole time and just problem solving and thinking out loud here. This is a pretty big project, so I don't have it all planned out or anything like that. And yeah, I'll probably end up posting the recorded session. If I don't like the video, I might just make like a channel for like, Dennis Ivy archived or something like that. Okay, so let's do this. We're not gonna we're not gonna do insert adjacent to HTML. I'll comment that out just in case I might want to do that, or just in case I do that later. Then in this case, what I'm gonna do is get. The room again. So we'll leave it like that. And then what I'm gonna do is query the room ID because I just wanna replace the inner contents of it. That's all I'm trying to do here. So we're just gonna get that same room ID and then just do inner HTML. Then we're gonna throw in the new room. I know this isn't like the best way to do it. And this again, where is this is where React would, would help a ton. And this is why I'm, I'm gonna build out the final version of it in React instead of like this. So let's try it. Okay, so let's create a room. We'll just do Dennis for the room. Get some random information. Okay, the room is there now. Now, what if we add in another user to this room? So let's see, right now we see only one watching. So the count is one. Our hope is that this will update and we'll take care of the thumbnail later, but you can ignore all this. It just says one watching. If we join again, now we're as a guest. Let's join the room. Now we see two. And if I close out, now we see one. So I hope everyone in the chat is seeing that. So. This is actually really cool. We're seeing the live count. We're gonna update the name of the room in a second and the host information, but let's say we have all these people join a room. So we see two people in the room. We'll join it again. Three people and the count is three. So I don't know if you can see that. Like I said, it's pretty zoomed out, but here you go. That's the current count. If I close out one person, they leave, it's at two. Then it's at one and I can always rejoin. So there you go, there's a live feed to the room. So I think that is it for this section. I think what I need to do next is actually update, I need to update the the actual information. So let's see. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, so let's pass in the information. So what we're gonna do here is um, we're able to add in user attributes. Like I said, for whoever was here this long, we were able to add in user attributes and pass in things like this uh, this user 
picture here. Let's join as another user. So both users can see each other's information. So we did this with, or I did this by adding in user attributes. So now I'm gonna add in a channel attribute and that's gonna help me with this. So if you all can, whoever's watching, uh, let me know how long you've been in the chat, whether by minutes, hours, whatever, It'd be kind of cool for me to see. This is kind of encouraging. We're officially at five hours. Okay, so yeah, that'd be awesome to know. Just throw in like the time, see if it's still active. Okay, so let's see. Okay, here's how we'll do it. Let's go to the initiate function instead of the lobby page. And just after we join, so let's see, we, we join or we set the client and then we join the channel. So I think in between here, what I can do is add in I'm gonna run a try catch here. So here's what's gonna happen. So only the senior member, only the person, someone says 15 ish minutes, 30 minutes. Cool, cool. Wonder what the max length is if anyone's here for a couple hours. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna set the room attributes here. So in order to actually do this, I'm gonna use a try catch here. And essentially, when a user first gets on the page, I want to see if they can, if we can pull in the channel attributes. So we'll just do attributes. So we'll just do attributes, and this is going to be await, and we're going to do rtm client dot get channel attributes. So this is another Agora function that we can use: get channel attributes by keys and in this case we want to specify the room so that's going to be our current room so this is the room that we want to get the attributes for and we want to get the room name okay so if the first user loads the page they're going to try to get the attributes and these attributes aren't going to exist so we want to create them so in the catch here that means this is going to fail what we're going to do is call await again and then we'll just do Wait, RTM client, and we'll just do set channel attributes. So set channel attributes, and we're gonna set the attributes for this specific room. So that means the very first user, and there can be another way to do this. Like I'm gonna specify some kind of channel host later. Um, that's where authentication would help. So we wouldn't have to do it this way, but because we're, I'm, I'm avoiding all that, we'll just leave it like this. So let's see all right i want to set the attributes here now so the attribute here was going to be an object and we're first going to pass in the room underscore name so only two people have been here for a while huh <laughs> let's see we'll just do room What the heck did I even call the room? Oh, this is the lobby, dang it. Okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna back up here a little bit. I was wondering why that looked funny. I was so confused. Okay, right here. Now we see it. Hold on a second. I haven't even created the channel yet, though. That doesn't make sense. Huh. I think this should be after this. I feel like I should join the channel. Yeah, I feel like I should join a channel before I set an attribute for it. So let's do this. Let's just go ahead and pass in the room name and let's test this out. So 
now that we set the attribute, what I can do in the lobby, someone said, I think I'm, oh, I think mine was almost like two hours. And because when I came, it said three hours ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be two hours. We're not here too long. <laughs> oh, let's see. Someone else here. Cool. Seriously, thank you guys for, I mean, I'm hoping, I'm, I hope I'm providing value, but I just appreciate you interacting in the chat. It's always kind of cool to see. Okay. So once we set the attributes, this is basically how we want to get the room information. I could send this through a message on that, on the initial creation, like right here where we send the message. I could do that. But in this case, what I'm going to do is in this build the room section, uh, in this build room section, I'm just going to go ahead and query this information. Okay, so let's do this. So we're gonna get the room attributes. So this is gonna be inside of the build room function. I'm gonna do let attributes wait RTM client get channel attribute. Okay, so we're gonna pass in the room ID. So we wanna get this specific room attributes right here and we want to pass in the list of attributes that we want to query so we want to get the room underscore name so that's going to be it for now and then at this point let's just do name and i could destructure that but i guess i'll just do it like this it doesn't really matter um i'll actually do room name okay so room name we're getting attributes the room name value. Okay. Now let's see if this works. So we'll um, let's see. Right here. Here's the room name. So we'll just replace that. All right. Let's try it. Okay, so it looks like I got an error somewhere. Yeah, this is getting recorded. I see someone asking. And if you're asking for a Django chat app, I mean, this is pretty much it. Just not using channels for whatever part Django will be in this, even though we haven't used it yet. Okay. Um, we're, let's see. Let me console, so, console out a few things. Maybe I just didn't save it. So in room JS here, uh, let's see. I'm also going to console out that error. I want to see what it says. Issue might not even be here, so. What am I calling this? Set channel attributes. So get channel attributes by keys. That's correct. Hold on. No. Yeah, that looks right. Never mind. I call the wait.
I just realized I didn't. Even, it's not actually the room name. I'm just passing in the ID. But before I even get to that part, I need to fix this issue. And it's not throwing an error anywhere. So let's just do this. And I just want to see if this even shows up. Like maybe we're getting an error before this. Okay, so the try. Working. So this is where the error should start. Attribute with self, no issue. Okay. Then in that case, why isn't the room showing up in the lobby? That makes no sense. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so in the lobby it says cannot read properties of undefined value. Okay. That's in the lobby. Attributes dot room name. Call it room underscore name. Okay, so let's just console out the attributes because that seems like where the issue is being thrown. So the console dot log. So it says there's no attributes. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, what's the room name then? A room ID. Okay, let's try this. I don't know why, but maybe this works better. Before, oh yeah, I think the channel attributes have to be set before the channel is created, which makes no sense to me. But that's just how how it works, I think. No, that doesn't do anything. Okay. So first we get the attributes. Let's just console out the attributes right here then. Okay, that makes no sense. If there is no attributes, then it should throw an error. Get channel attributes by keys. Yeah, so I guess we're never even setting those attributes. That's making no sense right now. <clears throat> I'm a little bit stuck right now. Why is this working? This shouldn't be working. Hold on, is it the room maybe?
<clears throat> yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> well, I guess that's the whole point of this is just to work on it live. I know I'm getting hungry at this point. I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> Get irritated now. RTM client get channel attribute by keys. That's making no sense. Okay. I might have to just create my own. Yeah, I might have to. Let's do this. Okay. Here, this is what I'm going to do. I'll just do attributes uh, dot room. So I'll just, mm, that's why. Okay. Let's do this. I got it. I, I know why. It's technically, it's still querying the attributes. It's just not like. It's just not throwing an error. And when I do this the first time, room name. Okay, let's just do this. Uh, we're gonna store the room name somewhere. So let's just do this uh, by avatar. I'm gonna add in the room name. So room name is gonna be session. Yeah, okay, this, is, this makes much more sense now. Okay. So if we don't have the room name for whatever reason, if we can't get that from session storage, that means that we're a guest. So a guest joins by the ID, not by the room name. So the guest also needs a room name. This is why we need to get the channel attributes here. So we need to query that so the guest can render out the room name somewhere. But if they don't have them, then... What we need to do what we need to do is we need to get attributes and we need to we need to try to set it. So if we try to set it by getting room underscore name dot value, this is gonna throw an error. So this is where catch is gonna come in and save our asses right here. So if this doesn't work, this means that this is the first load, then that means that we're the host, then everything is gonna work. So I need some water, I'm actually getting like lightheaded. Okay, let's try it from scratch. We still might have some issues, but we're one step closer. Okay, session storage dot get is not working. Okay, get item, I think. What did I say there? Get item. Yep, as I go along with time, more mistakes like that happen. Okay, so let's restart it. I'm going to have to open up a new tab. Where did that open? <laughs> what do you mean, Shubo? Shubo saying, uh, let's, have a, let's have a chat. What do you mean? As in here or just go uh, Q&A? Like, with the audience, or do you want to like start messaging on Discord or something? Okay, all right, let's try it. I think we're good. Boom, there we go, sweet. Okay, so the room now displays, right now we see the room ID, not the room name. So we're gonna get that, we're gonna update it, and then we're gonna update the room host and the host avatar. So like right now, I'm the host, right? And here's my avatar. But the avatar being output here is just the default. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix this. Okay, so that just means that in here, inside of build room, let's see. Inside of build room, oh no, that's the wrong one. I'm in lobby. So inside of build room, we're gonna get the room name. We're gonna pass that in right here. Hold on, that doesn't look right. Oh no, um, in room JS, when we set the attribute, how do we set the attribute? So we set it as room, but I want the display name. So we're gonna take that. That's gonna be the display name from the creator when that was submitted in the form and that name is passed in 
So let's try that again. So we'll close out the room. I don't want to actually set a real name, so. For some reason, it's giving me the host name and not the room name. Why is that? So display. Oh, I did display name as in my display name. Okay. <clears throat> okay, display name. All right. So at this point, let's just pass in some more information. So we're going to pass in our avatar. And let's see, how can I set this? Actually, we'll pass in host, and then that's going to be display name. So that's going to be my host name or whoever created the room. And then we'll just do host underscore image. Okay, host image. This will be my avatar. Okay, now in the lobby, I can get this information. So we'll just do room name. Post image, and then this will be post, and then okay, perfect. So, um, dang, I think I just overrid. <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. copy that so if I need to create the room multiple times okay so something's not working let's see the undefined error okay uh, host host image let's just console this out and, and see all the attributes so Actually, I guess I can see that right now. Okay, so we have the room name. What the hell did I do here? Okay, so I updated the attributes wrong then. I think. Yeah, what I don't get is I'm seeing the attributes, but they're just displayed in a weird way. So attributes.host.value. Okay, that seems correct. Yeah, Shuva, I think I will. I need to actually take a break and drink some water. I haven't had water since this, I guess, like six hours ago. Okay. Kind of a weird issue. That's, oh, okay, got it. All right. So the attributes need to be passed in here. This is, I need to basically destructure it and get the list of attributes. We'll do host and... If you have any ideas, I mean, I don't want to get too technical in the chat um, at this point because I'm going to keep coding probably. I don't know. I think I might just go for the 12 hours again. Uh, my brain's too fried to answer too many technical questions. Let's see how many people we have in the chat. 43. Nice.
Still dealing with issues. Okay, I'm seeing the host. I'm seeing the room name. And it looks like there's host avatar. Is that what I called it? Host image. Yeah. There we go. Uh, well, technically the avatar is not fully updated, so I think I just need to update it right here. So host image, this needs to just be updated in this section. Okay, um, I think that's, oh, uh, host name too. If I forget, remind me the next step here is to add in a link to the actual room from the section, but I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so hold on, that's not correct. Okay, one man, uh, let's see. I'll go back because I forgot what the URL was. Okay. Host name and then the avatar. This is what I was going to update. The image can be updated later. I can add in a section for thumbnails. Um, host image. Look at that. Cool. So here's what's going on. Uh, we have a room. We'll create a new one. Or we, now we don't have a room. This is going to be Dennis. Room is let's learn to code. Then I'm gonna select this pink guy for the avatar. I'll join the room and chat a little bit. Um, let's say somebody else wants to make a new room. So we see, let's learn a code. We see only one person in the room and we see the name and the host image. Now, if I try to join as another user, let's just do uh, Shuvo for the name. And let's say who wants to learn CSS. We'll uh, pick this avatar for Shuvo. And we're gonna see that up here. Here we go, we see the title, one person in the room. Now, if I wanna join from here, and this is basically that Twitch look, so I hope you guys uh, kinda like this. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, let's see, I'm trying, oh, I need to be able to click on links from here. So that's what I'm gonna add here. So uh, then we'll actually be able to see users join. So we'll see this number update, even though you've probably already seen that by now, I guess for whoever's joining late. So yeah, this is kind of what we're dealing with. Again, as the rooms are updated, that's all live in real time. So what I need to do now is create a link. So for this uh, join room button, let's see. We'll just do room.html. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass. Oh, no, we're going to join. Join.html. And then we're going to pass in the room. And this is going to be the room name. So this is how we know where to send the user. And we'll just do room underscore ID. I really need to get a new chair. This thing is squeaky. OK, so right now, like if I want to join this room, I can go ahead and click on it. And I'm just going to open this up in a new tab. I'm sent to the lobby. You can see the room ID passed in right there. And I can join. So let's just join the room. We'll just say. Uh, Peter, let's just think of a name. Select this avatar. Oh, what the heck happened? So Peter. Why is there room null? Okay, give me a second. Is that your view count is not updating? I'll fix that. I'm trying to see what the heck is going on here. I guess we found a little bug. And the view count updated right there. So let's close out this other room, the other room here. So that one, yeah, it looked like it was because of that bug. I don't know what happened there. I'll double check and try to figure out what was going on in that redirect. I'm sure there'll be more to fix up. But here we go. So we have a live count. Rooms are displayed. The host right now can't upload a thumbnail yet because we do need some kind of backend for that. You ever get, let's see. Hold on. 
Someone says, do you ever get to get a look at the leak source codes of Twitch? No, I've never done that. Never seen it. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we're pretty much uh, to get everyone caught up here. So let's just do this again. We can have multiple rooms here. So if we join rooms, we have two rooms here. The member count is always going to be live. So we can see exactly who's active in this room. So if we join again, uh, let's just do Sam. And what avatars haven't been used? I guess it'd be nice to kind of store that. Okay, so if Sam sends a message, every single user in this room is gonna get this message. So let's try to bring this out here. So this is all in real time. We haven't added in any video or audio chat, but this is all in real time. So if Sam sends a message and says, hey, everybody's gonna see that message. You can see it output here, here, and here. Now, I forgot what user this is, and it would be kind of nice to maybe to display that. But if this user sends a message, it's all going back and forth. Everybody sees it. So one thing I do want to fix, actually, is the fact that as I'm typing messages or as messages get added, the scroll bar should send me to the bottom. Like if I say new message, it should automatically push the scroll down, like on Discord. So I want to be able to do that. I, I thought I rewrote that in. So this is supposed to be a room JS here. Um, on add message to Dom. Message container. Let's see. Uh, Shuvo, if you can help me out here, I know you know this stuff very well. Basically, I'm trying to scroll down as the messages get added. Um, I don't know why this isn't working right now. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out why this isn't working. Someone's added in some code. Scroll to bottom, const. Would I invert this? I mean, I see what you're doing. Let's see this function scroll to bottom. I'm trying to figure out exactly how to implement that then. I'm so I'll just create the function on its own and then call it. Yeah, exactly. It's trying to scroll to the bottom of that frame. Um, I, I swear this worked right now. Like I said, I'm at that point where my brain is not functioning, but this was supposed to work. Let me just try to review it. And I'll try to implement that code here in a second. I feel like there's gotta be an easier way because I'm just getting the height, changing the scroll. Cancel out the message container. This should be working. <laughs> Christian says you've been going too hard. Yeah, I don't know. If I, I if I get into it, I don't like. I just don't feel like stopping. And then I kind of wanted to get this entire thing done in one stream, and I could. I might take like a five minute break. Um, I do that because I still I still need to add in the video streaming, and I wouldn't mind making this go live. In fact. Let's do this. It'll probably break a bunch of code, but I might do and add an ngrok here, and then just try to um, like post a link so you all can jump in and see it, and actually join the chat if you want that. I mean, I think people would, but just let me know. I'll see how long that would take to set up, and then we can kind of mess around with that for a second. Okay, so we got messages. All right. OK, 
Okay, let me see this function real quick. Well, let me copy and paste it. That's annoying. Okay, uh, scroll to bottom. Document get element by ID. So that's going to be our messages. And maybe that's what's changing it. It's just the way that message is set, is set up because I this worked for sure. I know that for a fact. So um, let's just add this down here. Oh. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna call the function here. In this case, we're gonna do document I get element by ID. I think it's it's it might be the wrapper itself because I, I had it working and then when Shuvo rebuilt it, he might have added something that completely changed the positioning because it's not the entire screen. Technically, we have like a viewport height to it. Yeah. So Okay, just give me a second to try to finish this function up and then I got to take care of something. Okay, get messages. Then we're going to go ahead and So S is equal to the variable, okay? So I actually may have used this variable already, so we'll just do just do s like that. I'll just have it how you had it. So scroll height is going to be minus s dot client height. Oh, that's in the, okay, hold on. Um, S dot scroll. I didn't realize that was a function. I guess I'll just throw in the smooth behavior for extra curricular. I'm not sure. I think I got that right. No, it's still not working exactly. Let's see. All right, um, let's see. element failed to read behavior property score options provided to. <clears throat> okay, scroll to. Yeah, it's, it's weird how it's written because I can't copy and paste it. So scroll to bottom, and then we set the variable document to get that to messages, and then s.scroll to top, and then how does top look weird? And then s scroll height minus. Oh, client. Okay, that's a scroll height and client height and the behavior smooth. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna, I might just skip this part. It's kind of important, but. Um, I don't feel like getting stuck on this for too long.
Someone says you have behavior set wrong. Yeah, I definitely know that. I just can't catch her now. Like I said, I'm not in the best state of mind, I guess, for this. I don't see where the air is. Um, yeah, well, I'm just going to ignore this one for now. Let's just uh, comment this out and we'll just... Let's leave the original and eventually we'll get it to work. But let's just see what I have. The value itself. Okay, and that gives me a little bit of a hint. <laughs> okay, let's scroll to bottom. Yeah, I'm just copying what, uh, what I got in the chat here. So scroll to bottom. So we've got the function. Behave. <laughs> Yeah, I see that. See, I can't even catch that after this long. Okay. The behavior set to smooth. Yeah, I just noticed that. So the room URL, we'll put a new room real quick. I don't know if that was why. I mean, that might have, that, I think that definitely is the Agora issue. The scrolling is still not working. That's so the error went away, but the scrolling is there. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to ignore that for now. All right, cool. Let's see. Let's see what else I have to do. I don't know if I'll finish this today. I mean, the chat's all done, like the live room. Let's do this. Let me, let's let's make it go live. Not the message div itself. You need to get the container of the messages. That I thought I did that. That's that's what's throwing me off. Um, yeah, I did messages right here. Not the message div. The container. Oh, you might be right. Like I said, I had the code written one way and then when my designer rebuilt it, it threw a few things off. Is it room container? So I, I thought I had that set to you know, the messages container. Let's try that. And if that's the case, and that would mean that the original method would actually work. Okay, so let me try the method that was given to me. Whatever the heck it was. Common to the function. Okay, so it all should be refreshed now. Yeah, um, well, let's try one more thing and then I'm going to give up on this section and I'll see if uh, Shuvo is in the chat to help. It sounds like, or it seems like he's, he's already left. So messages container. Yeah, that would have to be to the container that 
that doesn't it makes sense why it's not working but cool all right well we'll just get rid of that for now or just ignore it um let's try doing this let me uh let me get ngronk installed and let me see if i can provide you guys with a live link to check this out okay i'm just gonna start setting it up i know i have an ngronk account somewhere To hide the emails. I want to have those out there. I haven't used it in a while, so I actually don't remember how to do it. Try to remember the steps. Glad you enjoy the course, Natash. Is that the, I'm assuming that's the one, yeah, for Brad's. So Angrok, uh, someone's asking for that. It's basically a tool that you can use to make the website go live. Like I can start this up on a local server and actually like have a link to share so you all can actually see the site. You'd actually be able to visit it and use it. Okay, now I just need to figure out how to set up I know I have an account. Yeah, that's the answer right there. Okay, log in. I'm just gonna try to log in with my email right now. Don't want everybody to see that. I don't get a bunch of spam. Well, I guess everyone's going to see that anyways, whatever. Um, let's see. On Windows, let's download it. And all I need to do is put this into my file here. Or into the project file. Okay, there we go, Ingrock. And then to start it up, I remember there was something. Um, let's see, zip it, and then you have to get a token. No, somebody knows a command. Uh, yeah, just shoot me some pointers here. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so that's to do it. That's how you do it. All right. So in that case, I'm doing port fifty-five. Like that I think. For this the agora js file that's the sdk that we're using okay um i think that's ready now and here we go so I'm using live server and it let's see Shiva saying message container I'm assuming you got that working locally okay let's let's fix that issue um well I guess let's try ngrok first all right what did I do here all right let me fix that issue if anyone has the ngrok solution if you can send code that'd be awesome uh Shivo came to the rescue we have room JS scroll bottom. So he's saying messages container is equal to message container or messages container. Okay, we're good there. And then messages container. So that's how I had it here. I said message messages container dot scroll top equals to messages container dot scroll height yeah that's what i have am i missing something that's exactly what i had at shuvo um still not working all right one more time some messages container 
Did I set this variable twice maybe? Like that could be it. I could just have overridden it. No, that's correct. Check Discord. Okay, so. All right, let's try this. I'll, um, what I'm going to do here is uncomment this section or comment that out. And then Shivo just sent me some code. It's like inverting it. That's what I'm confused about. Am I? So it should give me the last message or the most recent. So Shiva, I think we're just scroll bottom, maybe like that. That maybe I just did that wrong. I don't know. Is that a thing? Yeah, like I said, I, I know the code has worked before. <laughs> Live coding a new streaming platform on an existing streaming platform. Yeah, I know the irony, right? Well, maybe we'll, do, we'll be doing it from here soon. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to ignoring that issue. Let's see. Uh, let's try getting Ngrok working. So actually, that's one of the features that, are, that I want to build into it um, with... With the Agora SDK, I'm actually able to broadcast out the stream onto YouTube. So I'll actually be able to stream it from Mumble, and then this can actually go on YouTube too. So that's going to be built into it. Hmm. Why is it giving me this port right here? That makes no sense. Yeah, I'll share the code. Like I said, it's going to be a full tutorial. This is not the tutorial. This is me just trying to figure life out. <laughs> Go back to ngrok, HTTP. I don't even know if I'm supposed to share that token, but whatever. It's the worst that can happen. Yeah, I guess we're just not going to do the ngrok thing. That's all right. Cool. Well, um. Yeah, I'm going to try to see it's working. Someone's, what do you mean it's working? If it's working, can you share the link? I now, I, now, I actually lost the link now, so. <laughs> Confusing me is that it says it's forwarding to port 4040. That makes no sense. It shouldn't be forwarding to that. Is there a way I can open up live server on that port? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ngrok is showing port 4040. That's what makes no sense because I'm on port 55. And I don't know actually after end instead of before end oh i think i, I think shivo just pointed out the issue with the other thing um i think this is supposed to be after end well no because then that, wouldn't that appear outside of the div Yeah, see, like it's. <laughs> We're gonna hate this issue. No, it definitely should be before end because you're just trying to keep it in the div. This means that it's it's appending after the div, right? 
All right, Muhammad saying good night. <laughs> Thanks for being in here. Yeah, all, like I said, the Angrok thing makes no sense. I'm trying to figure out why the heck it's running on this port. It should be like I'm specifying port 55, but here, let me just close out the project completely. And try restarting this. Okay, so you're saying you can change the VS Code settings and uh, for the port number. I'll have to try that. That is still, yeah, it's weird. I mean, I might have what what might have happened is that I may have something running on a different port without even knowing it. That's so. If that's the case, then that makes sense why Engrok would just turn me to a different port. Well, no, because then it would just. Okay, let's try this. So we'll just open this up. Yeah, it just keeps opening it on that different port. It makes no sense. Hold on, did somebody, maybe that link is working. Somebody else in the room? That would actually be really funny. on the port you are using. Yeah, that, that's exactly what's going on. Someone's saying that um, I'm using port 55, but it's not like, it's just, it's opening up port 4040. That's that's the issue. The, port, the 4040 port is just your Angrok interface. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, so yeah, if I click on the link, this is what it's giving me. It's just not working because it's pointing to the wrong port, it seems like. <clears throat> yep, and that's what I'm doing. I'm doing 55. It just keeps giving me port 4040, which is not a real port here. <clears throat> okay, meanwhile, if anyone has suggestions on how to fix that, let me know. I'm going to start going to the next section. I think I might take a small or a little break here and... Uh, and then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna start building in the video side. So at this point, we've done pretty much everything with the chat. We're pretty much ready to start doing video streaming. Try running on localhost port forty. Okay, so let me look up how to change VS Code localhost or the local port. I think that is the issue. I don't think it's an Ingrock thing, but. I just need to figure out where to change the live server setting. So someone saying this, what do you mean it's working? I, I, that's, that's what's confusing me. <laughs> like working as in you're seeing the site or Oh, that's hilarious. There's actually people in here. If you're in, okay, share the link if you can, please. Okay, I'm gonna join. It looks like somebody's Andy's hosting room. I don't know how this happened last time. Okay. This is hilarious. Oh, here we go. This is, okay, this is sweet. What the hell, how did that even happen? Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to deactivate the token soon if too many, too many people jump in this, but whoever's here, go ahead. 
So check it out, guys. Oh, man, looks like there's some small issues, but go ahead and jump in. We'll do video streaming later then. Um, I share the link. It's in the chat. So join in and... Oh, this is so cool. Ben just joined. So everybody, we're in Andy's room. So this is where the, this is where the cool kids hang out. <laughs> I have no idea how this is working. This cracks me up. See, what I need to do, I need to add in some chat history. Oh, okay. So as I'm typing, you're going to notice that the messages are still at the top. That was a dang scroll top issue. All right. Hey guys, this is awesome. I'm, but I, I'm probably going to take a clip of this and post this because this is really cool. The scroll top issue is really bothering me, but okay. Let's see. We have Shuvo. Shuvo just joined a room. This is so cool, guys. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Nice. All right. We're all in Andy's room. We're all in hello right now. That's the name of the, yeah, that's the name of the room. Shuvo, you cocky asshole. You just named your room Shuvo. And then you say Shuvo is here. <laughs> yeah, so when you get in, it's not going to have any chat history. Um, I can build it in right now. You guys want to see that? Hey, if you want to see the uh, chat history, join. Damn, this is so freaking cool. Uh, join the chat room. Hello. We're 12 people watching right here. You can see that. Uh, so, yeah, and just say, uh, just say yes. Now this is out. We see the chat history. This is awesome. Hell yeah! All right, tell me this wouldn't be cool if this is a new mumble, but this is the first part of it. This is just a chat room. It's gonna look like Twitch. And okay, you guys all got me amped up. What I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna go get a sandwich. I'm gonna leave the stream on, and I'm gonna start. I'm going to add in some chat history and then um, I'm going to add in the video streaming and then we'll do this live again. So uh, pretty cool. Check it out. Oh shit. We have how many people in here? 100 or, or 13 out of 113. Damn. Cool. Right guys. Damn. You just made me so excited. <laughs> Bam Dennis Ivy. I'll oh, screw off. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do some uh, we're gonna do some video streaming. So let me write this down while I take a quick break. So chat history. I mean, if you guys want to, I guess I, I'm sure there's some people watching that would continue. Uh, so chat history, and then we'll add in video. This just may be the new mumble, guys. There's no, there's no SQL injection here, so sorry about that. We're not running on a back end. Frank, Frank Burley. This is so cool. Yeah, we'll change the, here's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, for the for the thumbnail, I feel like everybody should be able to, it's almost a CSS rocks. I, I feel like you should be able to update a thumbnail or you should be able to make your own thumbnail, but I feel like once a stream starts, to get rid of the, uh, basically this whole thing where people are creating these super fancy thumbnails and kind of using it on that, or banking on that to get to make their room popular, I feel like we need to, uh, basically to where the second the stream goes live, we need to eliminate the default thumbnail and only do snapshots of the, of the live stream. I feel like that would be the best way because Sometimes someone's live streaming and like they have a super fancy thumbnail and then it's just like code or whatever. I feel like a thumbnail should be a viewport into, into the, the actual stream. So this is why I think what we can do is we can have the user upload a thumbnail, they can schedule a stream. And then the second they go live, we just take a quick snapshot of their stream and then make that the thumbnail. So yeah, um, Shuvo, if you can't, I mean, I don't know what time it is, Shuvo, it's probably like 2 a.m. for you. If we can figure out like, I know you have the code base. If you can figure out that scroll top thing, that would be really cool because I want to solve that. And then I want to add in the history and the video stream. Cause right now, like I'm, as I'm chatting, 
I'm able to chat, but then I have to scroll. Like I have to scroll down and that's really stupid. That's really annoying. Hey, 14 people in the chat. Awesome, awesome. How is it on mobile, Shiva? I know you made this mobile responsive, but is it functional? Scroll top. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break. Um, send you the source code. Yeah, um, here. Can you send me your uh, your GitHub repo? Is it Havan? Um, if you can send me your GitHub uh, your GitHub email, I mean, I don't want to put it here because then everyone's gonna have your email. Um, I can just share the repo with you. I'm trying to figure out how to best do that. Yeah, probably it'll be live. I mean, or it'll be posted after. Really cool. All right. I got to go take a break. I hope nothing breaks. I'll just leave it up for y'all. Um, and uh, yeah, cool. And yeah, let me put a note here, like a banner for anybody that comes. Um, so taking a short break. I'll be back. Yeah, that totally pumped me up. Like that gives me energy to keep going then. Like I said, maybe this will be another 12 hour stream. Uh. Eighteen people. God, that's so cool. This is there's something different about yeah, there's a lot of undefines in the chat. We will fix that. I, I think I know where those issues are coming from. Um there's something cool about working on this for hours and then actually seeing people on it. Like it just completely changes it. it makes it so exciting. Okay. I'm going to mute my mic. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back in like five to 10 minutes.
Oh, that's hilarious. I don't know why I'm putting these in. Okay. All right, now I need to figure out how to close out Anchor Rock so nobody's on it. Okay, let's see. Is there a way to is there like a way to terminate it? Like let's see. Man. All right. <clears throat> Okay, let me uh, find your GitHub here. Give me a second. Let me make sure that nothing's, you know, no critical issues with the site or anything like that because it's local, but, you know, I don't know what can happen with it. Can y'all hear me? I just want to turn on my mic. Let's remove this banner. Yeah, okay, it looks good. Okay, yeah, I did that. Um, it looks like it yeah, should be good. I had a stream one time where I turned it off and yet someone was still able to join. I mean, I have no idea how you all joined right now. I like the link that I clicked on didn't work, so that makes no sense to me. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> okay you're saying it's gone yeah i just turned it off yep i did that just because i while i'm working on it i don't want anyone messing with it all right so um i guess the next time we'll go live again let's see you missed an o in your link it was cut off because of t really but i didn't even, i didn't even copy it I even notice that um i guess at this point i'm six hours into this uh, all that prep work. And I think at this point, it's probably gonna take me a couple more hours to finish up the video thing. I think I can still do that. Yeah, I think I'm good to do it. I'll see. I'm feeling a little bit lightheaded, but here, one second, I'm getting a, a message from my designer. He's, I think he's fixing that scroll top issue. I just had a sandwich and I just need water too. Cause I think the water is why I'm dehydrated. I'll keep drinking a lot. Okay. Let's see. Now with Ngrok, people can't see the code, right? I mean, I guess someone was doing the, the those um, well, was updating the HTML or the the style or whatever through the console. Is that correct? Like I said, I've only used it like twice in my entire life. Ngrok is still on. How do you how does that how do you turn that off? <laughs> someone says we had fun. Awesome. It's gonna be cool once the stream is added. Here's what, here's what's cool about this. This is how you beta test an application because I've I've launched a few projects and this is this is where oh, okay, you just insert a style tag, it accepts your HTML. Um, I've tested a lot of projects like this before, and this is exactly how I see if the market will accept it or not. Like it, you always want to like just do a little bit, get a snippet out there, get like a very early version of it, and then and then you see if people like it or not. Like, I mean, I know that was just chat and it's fun because we're doing a stream, but once we actually have video, like, will it continue on be beyond me trying to promote it? Does it have value on its own? Someone said through the input tags. Okay, gotcha. Um, someone saying Ngrok is still on. Here, Tadas just joined us. Hey, Tadas, have you worked with Ngrok before at all? No. What's Ngrok? It's like a way to basically um, broadcast out like your local server. Like, let's say you're running on like port, you know, 8080 or something like that. You can basically create a live link and send it, and they access like your local port. Nope, never worked with that. Well, so I, I didn't even know you're still going. That's kind of you're kind of nuts. I'm a six six and a six half hours, hours in. <laughs> well, so what, what what have you done? Uh, did you did you watch the stream like a couple minutes ago? No, Were you watch it. So I uh, I used Engrok, and a bunch of people started joining. <laughs> yeah, like here, let me. Uh, do it again. <laughs> well, let me pull up YouTube. I'm actually going to replay my own stream. I'm just going to turn off the audio. Or I guess you won't see it anyways, but it was pretty cool. So I had a bunch Here. of people join that. Yeah, so check it out. I'll show you what I have going so far, but check it out. At, at one point, we had a lobby. 
went down. And these were, we had 12 participants. These were people actually creating accounts and, and, and streaming wow. pretty badass. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So that, that's the, that's the built website, right? That's not the old one. No, this is what we have right now. So it's, yeah. It's impressive. So I'll, I'll show it to you. So we ran into a few issues. So basically what I'm doing here is random guy removed everything on the page. Below the page, it's off. Yeah, okay, I turned it all off. So people started like, I shouldn't swear, but people started messing with, uh, people started messing with everything and screwing up the design and all that. Yeah, I mean, luckily it doesn't, there's no like database or anything like that that we have to worry about. So, and it's just RTM. So like the cost isn't going to be anything. Like you have yeah. to, have like a lot of active users to even do anything. But let me check this out. Let me open up the live server. I just need to make sure Ngrok is off because people people are evil. <laughs> oh, but but yeah, basically, like I said, I'm, I'm into, you know, I'm, I'm someone's still messing with it. <laughs> Damn it. This literally happened during a live stream before. Okay, no, I think we're no, somebody's check it out. Somebody's literally in here for some reason. Their image isn't working, but now I can join as a guest and I have to select an avatar. This is all live now, though. So we have four. Damn it, guys. Okay, I don't know how to turn off Angrok. Someone said I have to reset the token. <laughs> I don't know how to. I'm I'm an amateur, man. Angrok. On Windows machine, go to command prompt task kill slash f slash i am ngrok dot Is this in the chat? No. Or, or you just looked it up? Yeah, I just looked it up. I'll paste it in the chat or send it to you. Andy said ngrok is offline. Reset your Agora token. Like, that I, was that wouldn't uh -huh. stop the local server though, right? I don't know. Shouldn't shouldn't have anything to do with the local server. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Kill all. No, that's not it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> this is so, yeah. So we have three people online right now. <laughs> that's hilarious. Pass kill. Here, let me pull up Slack real quick. And that's what the that's what the the thing said. I don't know if it'll work. It was the first Stack Overflow solution. Because I could do sometimes. I guess I should probably know what I'm doing before I start doing this. <laughs> Here, here's what I'm going to do, though. Before I continue, I am going to turn off that token, though, just to make sure like no one does anything stupid with it. We'll, we'll talk about security later, guys. <laughs> remember, build and worry about security later. Security is not important. Okay, so no one's on the site, but I am going to reset that token, though, because I want to make sure that there's no, like, yeah. Someone just going to use my token and just kill it. <clears throat> so what, Ngrok just, like, takes your local server and lets people join it? Yeah, it basically creates a live URL to your local server. So, like, if okay. you're testing one of your Flutter things, I'm sure it would work for that, too. Maybe not. I don't know. But here, give me a second. I'm going to move a few things off screen so I can reset it uh let's see you can't see my screen right no i had to see the mumble screen kill all was the linux command yeah it would work, would work on mac <laughs> mm -hmm. like someone else joined yeah see we have a few bugs in here for some reason their image isn't working but i am going to reset the agora token so you won't be able to join so let's see what, what they're saying in here Oh, I need to select a, a icon. I mean, this is kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, video will be much cooler. But um, okay, give me a second. Let me deactivate the token. Disable this project for making calls. Cool. All right, we're actually no. I still need to send myself an email. Give me a second, man. Sorry, you just came at a funny time. I just took a break. I went and got a sandwich and. Just had some food and water because I'm starting to get a little bit lightheaded. All right. No problem. So let's see. All right. Looks like we're all going to be done here in a minute then. Or uh, everyone's going to be kicked off because I just reset the token. 
And I'm going to create a new one now because everyone kept messing with it. And I still need to figure out how to do the Ngrok thing. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll do that in a second. But, oh, no, I do need Agora still. Okay, give me a second. I'm just working on my other screen so I don't actually accidentally show some credentials. <laughs> You're good. Yeah, it's pretty sweet though. Everyone's like jumping in and chatting and everything like that. It's cool to actually like see it in action. Okay, so we should be done. I just want to make sure Engrok is truly killed before we continue. Return officer. Open up your task manager and check if it's totally off. Okay, so it'd be in the task manager. Okay. You see Engrok here? Well, let's hope I'm good. I just don't know if if you can actually, yeah. It was, yeah, I did expose my two Gmail accounts. That's fine. <laughs> Where somebody get is a picture of someone's dirty socks or something. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a? Do you have like a? Like I have my Gmail like pretty much on my YouTube channel. Yeah. So is it the, just a public one? Maybe nobody even cares about that one. Yeah, it is. I just prefer not to show it though, just yeah. because. Yeah. Get the random emails. Okay, so I'm good. I'm back in the chat. Okay, cool. So I just reset the token and I hope check the details in the task manager. All right. Yeah, let's try this. Uh, task manager. Can you search? Does that does it not have a search bar? I don't think so. But also, I don't use Windows, so. <laughs> Don't worry, we don't have black hats in the chat. <laughs> Talking crap. All right, cool. I think we're good. Whatever. Um, like I said, I don't think there's much that can happen here. All right. Um, where am I at? Oh, we were trying to fix an issue. Um, right. Last time we, in the last place I left off is I need to fix this thing. So basically, as I'm chatting, I need this thing to scroll to the bottom. Like you don't see the most recent chat, so you need to scroll down. It's kind of you know bad UI thing. Yeah. And Shuvo sent me another fix. So let me see. All right, he sent some code here. Let me just implement this. So you got what, like the the whole operation, but only with chat right now? Yeah, basically. I mean, there's there's still bugs in there, but yeah. um, it's basically everything but video integration i'm gonna do i'm literally gonna do um, chat history next and then i'm gonna add in video um the funny thing is, is i've actually never done chat history i have a couple of theories on how to do that which i'll uh, i'll even try to do some research right now and if i can't find like an official way to do it then hey there we go nice cool so for the chat history, you're talking about those like 10 last chat messages, right? And then you just. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like when you get on it, so it's not just, you know, an empty site. Like it looks weird. Like right now, like if I refresh it, like I'm just here and there's nothing into it. Or... Hold on a second. Now I have another bug. It's not resetting the form. Uh, scroll. All right. I'm just going to leave that down here anyways it worked i'm not gonna touch it <laughs> don't mess with a good thing cool yeah anyways yeah i just want to see what you're up to that's why i messaged you oh someone's like spamming this thing all right mohammed if you're gonna spam it we're gonna kick you from the room sorry man i want to be an ass but you're just like littering the feed here i'm gonna I kick him right now and then I think I have Shuvo as a admin too, or as a, what do you call it? Moderator. Moderator, yeah. 
I mean, I guess I guess I, guess I can't tell if they're spamming because it's in a different language, but it looks yeah. like the same thing, no? Okay, they there's, do look like different messages. People talking, so maybe. maybe okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know. All I saw was like the same thing, so I was like, "What the heck is this?" <laughs> we gotta learn. I don't know. What's is uh, it Arabic or? I, I, that would be my guess, but I don't want to be like. Get it wrong, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sweet man. Yeah. So, oh yeah, let me catch you up. So basically, I mean, this was a demo that I showed you, but we went through like got everything going. Mm -hmm. anybody can create a room you add in a room name we'll just say this is our awesome room you set you pick an nft here we'll get this guy now in the lobby this room automatically gets added like we kind of went through this but like if i wanted to share this room and add another person mm -hmm. we'll pick this for you yes that's what i look like <laughs> yeah so it's all functional like Oh, shoot. What did I click? Hide this thing. And the lobby gets updated right here so we can see two yeah. people watching. So it's all real time. Oh, yeah. That's kind of where we're at. But at this point, I'm going to be doing video stuff. But I am going to take a little break. I'm actually going to give myself some time here. Someone says they, they are swearing. Oh, are they? Oh, somebody asked if you can uh, if you can swear in Mumble. Honestly, dude, I don't give a crap. <laughs> <laughs> I The only thing I would ban people for is is, you know, if it's like, graphic or something like that like other than that i'm like it's not my job to control yeah. you guys <laughs> you create your own room you guys do as long as you're not like you know i, mean, I don't know anyways, it's definitely gonna become like a live cam girl site yeah that, that's exactly <laughs> it i have to figure out how to work that in <laughs> she will send an update yeah he um i just updated the code someone um yeah like that's what you have to watch for like right now like i'm not letting people upload their own you know their own stuff here mm -hmm. I swear, it's just like, there's like a loading lag here. I think I actually know what that issue is. Um, I don't want people uploading their own stuff because I have no way to monitor it. To monitor? I don't know. Monitor, I can't, can't say monitor. monitor. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, uh, I mean, if you're actually going to like pursue this as a more than just like a little proof of concept type of thing, I think there's, there's a lot of stuff you got to deal with, like, yeah, pirating. Like move, people just streaming like actual movies on there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't, I don't know when. It, I'm not sure when it gets to the point where it actually like matters. Well, but yeah, I mean, here's my thing: if it gets to that point where it's actually a big deal. Yeah. God, wait. Oh, I thought someone joined the stream. I was like, I thought we turned Engrok off. <laughs> <laughs> but I just realized that's because I'm in here twice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I figured like if. Uh, if it gets to that point, then that's a good thing. Like that means we we did some damage. Like we actually made something work. So we'll just continue with it. But yeah, we'll we'll see though. Um, I remember I was talking to Hermes and he was saying that you can actually like Agora does provide some kind of filter for that. I don't remember the details of it. I remember hearing something about it, but never used it either. I feel like you can't do it for video. That would have to be Agora's job, or maybe we would have to. Yeah, I have no idea, man. I just realized that. I, I guess I guess the only thing the only thing I can really do, the best way right now would be to a only allow people that are registered to create accounts, like they can actually have an account because this is dangerous, right? Like you just come on here and create a room. Like there's yeah. no there's no um, what do you call it? I don't know why I can't think of the word. There's no accountability because yeah. no one knows who you are. You're anonymous, but like once you make someone register with an actual email with uh, you know, with all that, somebody flags the room, boom, you shut it down, you know, like you get the alert. So the second something inappropriate starts happening. Yeah. What I, what I've been doing for my recent apps is like make, make it only Google sign in. So that like, if someone joins, they have to have a, like a Gmail account in order to be able to join. Cause like, I mean, if you just type in any random email, right. You could, unless you have that email. No, you just do authentication. Yeah. yeah. So I actually really like this. This is what I was thinking for password th password authentication. If I ever even take it this far, um, what I would want to do is, or what I like is not even, not even having the user create a password. Like on StreamYards, for example, uh, I don't even know what my password is. I think I created one in the beginning, but I type in my email and it just either sends me a text if my number's there or it just emails me a, t a temporary code. So that way you never have to worry about anybody you know, hacking into your account with your password, like that's irrelevant as long as they don't have your email, yeah. which nowadays with two-factor authentication, emails are really safe, but yeah. 
So email isn't safe. You got to go with phone or Google, Google verification sign in. Yeah, Google sign in. Let's go. Yeah, it, it, it depends. Oh, I see Hermes is in here. <laughs> yeah. Hermes, I don't know if you were here like 20 minutes ago, but I used Angrock and made this thing go live and a crap ton of people got on it. Started <laughs> messing with it. It's kind of funny. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I agree with the email is not secure. Like, I mean, I everything. Yeah, I think it's pretty decent, but like, I, I personally don't like the whole they send you a code and you have to go find your email and then it brings you back into like a new screen. And then you got like three windows open just to try to sign into something. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not bad either. Yeah. I mean, nowadays it's like it's all on your phone anyway. So I usually just get an alert, check it out and go with it. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll see what kind of pushback there is. Like I said, I have no idea what this thing is. It's, I'm just, we're just streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I mean, I don't, yeah. There are hundreds of temporary mail services. I wouldn't doubt it, yeah. I don't know. If you ban someone, they can come back in like a second. You're saying if they have temporary... Yeah, I mean, I guess in that sense, security would be best. Hey, Hermes, if you uh, if you want, send, send a message on Slack and I'll add you to the stream. I'd actually be interested in talking about how you can filter out like uh, any inappropriate content via video and so on. Like if you have ideas behind that, that'd be really cool to chat. So hit me up on Slack. I'll send you an invite. I know he knows a lot about this stuff. We're going back and forth. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm going to, like I said, this is my my little break right now. Kind of helps me take my eyes off the code. I actually had a stretch because last time I did a 12-hour stream, I got up and I just had sh like a shot of pain through my legs. Like I think my blood just like was still at that point. Mm -hmm. And it was, yeah. Like I kept trying to move around as much as possible, but you still can't really replicate what you would do in a normal day. So did you not eat this whole time? I just ate. I oh, just right. ate. Yeah. Um, my wife just made me like an egg sandwich and just right. had some. You got to get you got to get a standing desk so you could stretch while working. Yeah. So I actually have one. One second. Let me message Hermes. He right. may have left, but um, I have one. But the only problem is the face cam. Okay, so the, the camera is not. Seat. Yeah, it's not on the desk. Are you moving yours? Yeah, and I, I usually I for like when I record videos, I usually have uh, I record it when I'm standing up too. I think it's like a good good exercise if you're mm -hmm. like you get into the mood and everything, and you're standing up. You got the blood flowing while you're recording. It's, it's a good time, and have everything mounted up so like mm -hmm. it all looks good in both positions. It's nice. Yeah, I'll I'll usually work standing, but the problem is like I said my camera is behind on a stand and if I move it up, like it's one of those, um, again, to us, you're talking to someone that's old school, man. I don't deal with <laughs> no electric stuff. I have to spin a wheel. <laughs> is that for Ikea? Yeah. It, I, I've seen that one from Ikea. I was so this is it. what happens when I try to stand. Nah, there you go. <laughs> I have to start my car this way too. <laughs> <laughs> you have the old windows. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, AI is going to take over one day. I don't want to be indebted to it. <laughs> yeah. I'm out. I'll, I'll teach you one day how to get all this electronic stuff set up. Dude, I, it's, it's nice. Once you got, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess it's is, better to just get stuff done, but. Yeah, this is, this is how I take notes. I'm old school. I don't, I don't have a notion or any of that. Like, <laughs> I was just about to ask. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think I'm going to start. I'm trying to figure out. Let me, uh, I guess I'll just start pulling up Agora right now. And I'm going to look up RTM and see if I can find a way to do chat history. I've got to go to the web SDK because I have no idea at this point other than just storing it in an attribute. And there's kind of an issue to that. Um, it's kind of an issue to that because I know um, Hermes was saying attributes take a minute to update. Like they can lag. So that might be an issue. Like you might not get the real feed. You're sharing like a lot of stuff on the screen right now. I don't know if you want to. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, well, technically there's no. Yet, yet, but the app ID could have came out and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good call. So um, th this is just a, a potential suggestion. I'm sure like you're just doing it because it'll be cool. But um, I feel like chat history is not that necessary for like a live thing. Like once you're joining and everyone's, you know, in their live engaging together, then you're, you're there like the past 10 messages. They're not going to be that helpful. But I mean, 
it is a cool thing to explore. So here's here's the reason for that. And I thought about that too. Like if you go on Twitch and you join a stream, um, it automatically like it starts fresh. Yeah. But if you uh like because the platform is empty, like for example, I wouldn't have done this header section. Like this is unnecessary. But the problem is because there's nobody on the site, I need something to fill up some kind of content. So like I don't know, maybe I can add something else. So I just like I don't want it to look empty. So our chat. At this point, the reason why it's empty is because there's not a lot of users. But if there's a full conversation going and all that, then um, then you're good. Like it'll it'll stay full. But it's more the fact that early on, you want people to kind of understand what's happening. Yeah, that makes sense. But um, also, so like the the other, it's it's mainly for video streaming, right? Like the chat is just there to engage with the audience. So maybe it could be like hidden when you start off, and like it, it's not even. Well, you do kind of want to prompt people to talk, though, so you want to show it. Like, again, if some, let's say I'm the first person that comes into a stream, right? Or let's say I'm streaming and the first person joins. And if they don't see a chat, they might not even know it's there. Like, if it's just this black sidebar, they're not prompted to start community. Yeah, they're not prompted to start chatting. Like, right now on, on YouTube, you can see a chat. So it kind of encourages you, like, yeah. to say something and engage. How about, like, you have some on join channel? You have like a default message jump out like hey user like dennis or whatever get involved or something like that yeah get involved in the chat or something along those lines until like and then you could check like until there's 10 to 20 10 or 20 like people within the live and then it stops doing it because the chats are just pumping in yeah 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 there's i mean alternatives if this doesn't work i don't know <laughs> I mean, there's I mean I'll definitely I'll sure. definitely be able to make it work. Like I said, there's yeah. always there's always a way, man. There's always yeah. a way. Um, I just feel like even that would probably take more work than just adding in some chat history. But hey, let's see. Let me try adding yeah. chat history, and then um, or I'll, I'll, I'm gonna do some research. So I'm looking at this, so we see some articles. Log in, log out, sending peer messages, querying status, so you can always check if your friend is online. And so I saw somebody ask about peer to peer messaging. Hey, Medi, good good to see you here, Medi. Somebody that I've worked on in the original mumble actually. Okay. So um, where was I at? Oh yeah. Somebody asked about the peer to peer messaging. That's something that we can definitely do. Like let's say you're chatting with somebody. Um, it'd be nice to be able to click on someone's profile and actually start a, you know, a, a talk or start a talk with them. <laughs> this is me <laughs> after seven hours of streaming coding or streaming slash coding, uh, start a conversation with them. But and maybe you can kind of like hold back until like somebody's authenticated or has an account before you can do that. Yeah. Um, anyways. <laughs> Someone said, I love how Dennis is so excited after five hours of coding. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Especially with I feel like live streaming and everything, like you get even more exhausted than just like coding. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually think live streaming makes it like you get more amped up, keeps the energy going. Um Icon, I, uh, or whatever the user, Icon Elias, Elias um, I deleted that, I, I disactivated or deactivated that app ID anyways. But yeah, thanks for the update. I appreciate, I mean, not the update, but the heads up, like, that'd be nice to know if I did that. I guess I, I should have done an environment variable. I just created an ENV file. Like I just kept it all local. But yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a weird thing. It keeps showing like object and then it just lets it go. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go back here. So channel messages retrieving a list of members. Yeah, I don't see any like specific way to get like chat history. So from what I from what I understand, I don't think there is a way to get chat history from Agora because they don't really they don't store any like information. It's just a connection, right? They don't store it, but there is a way that there is a way to for you to store it. Like it's all it'll almost be like a like it almost be like using the in memory database. Like it, you can create a way like, like right now, for example, I can set a, like how I did this right here. So you notice how when I'm in a room, let's go to the lobby. So when I'm in a, in a room, I have the, the room name, right? Yeah. Like I had to pass this information to the lobby somehow. So what I did is I set a channel attribute. So when you create a room, you type in the name, it gets that room name, sets a channel attribute. And then when I load it up in here, I query that attribute. So you can actually store information just like, you could store like a peer ID so that information can be stored. They, they don't do it for you, but yeah. Yeah. yeah let's see. Um, so like, I'm like, I think ahead. a channel attribute could be like 
anything, right? So they yeah, whatever you want. It's just, just an object. A, you could just have like an array of messages. Let's do that. Right, and then just update it. Yeah. Let's do it. So, um, so basically. Here, let's see, uh, room.js. I'm trying to think of how I'll do this. So when a message is sent, here, um, add message to form. Here, let me delete some of this old code. I don't need this anymore. That's funny, the whole app ID thing, like that's the one thing about streaming is like there's certain things that you have to make sure like don't pop up across your screen, like yeah. your, you know, your, your inbox or your Discord with conversations and that sort of thing. It's like, watch out for all of that stuff. And it's not like you can just, you know, pause the video and cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much out there <laughs> for the world to see. Um, let's see. So when I add a message, see, this is what I was talking about. This is like, this right here is like when I'm like happiest, when I have a problem to solve and there's like no solution in sight and I have to figure it out. It just, it's like putting together a puzzle. So when you get the most amped up. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Like, honestly, sometimes when I figure it out, and it's time to like revise it and make it better. I just, I lose all ambition. I hate that part of things. I'm just like, I, I, I solved it. Why do I need to be here longer? <laughs> okay, let's see, set channel attribute. So on send message. So I have this method right here that I just copied from earlier. So RTM client set channel attributes. Um, well, I don't, I wanna update a channel attribute, not set it. Let me see what the update method is like. There should be a function. In the documentation to update it. So if I do ch RTM channel, send message. I for sure saw one because you can like you can set an attribute or you can update it. Here we go. So query status. Just click on uh go down and click on channel attributes. I think it was in there. Oh, did yeah. you hold on. Okay, we're gonna go right here. I think yeah, RTM here channel. Where did you see channel attributes? Left side, up, up three. Interfaces down right there. Oh, right here. Okay, channel attributes. So maybe there's some stuff in, inside there. What if you? What happens if you click on it? No, never mind. So it's somewhere in here. Like I said, it's you know, yeah. the doc, docs are a little bit. They could be better. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna get better. So hopefully soon. Yeah. And I'm excited because they're going to be merging like all the docs together. So they're just going to have like the theory and then within it, within those lines of code, they're going to have each specific um, language. So like it, Flutter won't be missing mm -hmm. a bunch of documentation every, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Oh, here we go. So get channel attributes. Okay, so I got that. So set channel attributes. Is there a way to add or update channel attributes? Here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Add or update local user attributes. Okay. So we're going to use this method right here. And let's see. Do add or update local channel attributes. Okay. Now I need to know how to use this function. And Grok, and Grok was one. By the way, in the, so I'm just reading a comment right now. Someone said, by the way, in Ngrok, you were able to stay in the messages. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be allowed, is it? Hold on. We're. We were able to style our messages. Uh, no, I mean. No, that's fine because you can do that to any website. Like I can go to you know you didn't style it for everyone. The only reason why we saw on my end was because you were actually editing my file. But I can go to like Agora site right now and like, you know set display none for body or something like that. You know, like you're styling it, but it's only in your browser. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, so that's always available. Yeah, you can do, couldn't go to inspect the site again. Look at the, go to the top body tag. Look at that, div, div ID underscore underscore nuxt. Is that, is it using where, nuxt? Where are you seeing this? Oh, right here. I don't know. So the reason why, so someone's saying it was for everyone. The reason why it was for everyone though was because you all were accessing my local browser. Like that's how Ngrok works. So if this was actually on, we didn't edit your file, people added style tags. Yeah, I, I get that. Like I said, I'm, it's still because you were you were all tapped into my, it was like, I don't know say, like my you know local server. Like, 
Oh, okay. Someone was saying they're able to like send like here. Let's try this. They were able to like do something like this where they can do like H1. Yeah, I mean whatever. <laughs> yeah, like like I'm I'm streaming this live. Like I'm not gonna put in all security measures right now. Like, yeah, of course, like that that can be cleaned. I can clean that. It's a good thing to note, actually. So just for the just for a heads up for anybody that doesn't know what just happened, this is how XSS attacks, is it XSS attacks, cross-site scripting. This is how it works. Basically, like you can inject code into someone else's site and you don't want them being able to do stuff like that. Like how I just wrote an H1 tag. Like you want to have something in your forms that clear all that out. And this is where front-end frameworks like React actually take care of that or Flutter or whatever. Um, they a lot of those already have this kind of validation built in so the, they're aware of the way hackers can hack your site and they already look out for that yeah like let's say if i do like script um let's just do like alert this is how hackers can get into your site even though that yeah i guess that that one was clean but anyways you, i think you get the point the fact that I'm able to do that, that shouldn't be allowed. Um, Damn, so that, like, <laughs> that's all handled by th the frameworks, like you said? Oh, yeah. Most frameworks, like Django right now, like it's super secure. Like you cannot, like they already build in a lot of that validation for you. Um, like I at one point built in a form, like a contact form on my website and people simply just trying to message me if they had like any special characters in their message and they weren't like trying to be malicious. Yeah. Uh, Django already like would like, what do you call those? Um, not comment them out, but what do you call it? Where it's like, it adds all those weird characters, like breaks up the code basically. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm so bad like yeah. thinking on the spot with that kind of stuff. But yeah, like, so Django does that, React. Like if you're using like, there's a couple of uh, libraries that you can use to have forms with React. I'm sure Flutter does it too. They basically- I just didn't even know that was a thing that like you could do with HTML, I guess. I just thought that like, I mean, I mostly work with frameworks. So like, I just yeah, so, so you're works. probably, that, no, that's exactly it. So this is why like outside of like the fact that frameworks make things faster, it's a lot of it's for security too. Like yeah. they're, they're already building that stuff in. So with Flutter, you're probably not like hand coding your own forms out, right? Like there's probably some kind of component for that. Yeah. Yeah. That component already has a lot of that validation built into it. So that's why, modern day developers don't even have to think about a lot of that stuff. Like XSS attacks used to be number three in 2013. Like it was like the number three issue outside of like SQL injections and that sort of thing. And then the most recent OWASP study they released in 2019 and it dropped down to like number seven, like as a security threat, like the top, you know, the ranking of the threat. Yeah. And that was due to frameworks just getting better. Like people escape it. That's what I was looking for. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it escapes. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, basically, uh, because we've gotten better at knowing how people attack, we can prep for those and frameworks already have that built in. So what's the, what's the number one threat? Let's look it up. <laughs> just, just casually distracting you from the project. <laughs> I, need, I, I need a break anyways right now. Like this is actually good. This is uh, why it's kind of nice to have you on here because I'm going to get back to it. Like, you know, oh no, that's, I clicked on an ad. <laughs> here, top 10 web application security risks right here. So number one, broken access controls. Number two, crypto, cryptographic failures. Three, injection, insecure design, design. And, uh, security There's misconfiguration, something. vulnerable and outdated components. And then let's, oh shoot, XSS isn't even on here, is it? Service site. Yeah, like it's completely been delisted. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of what, yeah, like I said, modern, like this is where the no code tools are nice, but you don't think about a lot of this kind of stuff. So it's kind of nice to, you know, still have some old school knowledge. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of funny because before, before like Flutter and everything, I worked as a, like embedded C developer. Like my, my last job was make working making embedded software on like semi trucks. And like 
so we have to think about all these little things that you could possibly imagine. And like most of our time spent in engineering was just like trying to figure out a way where something could break. So like, uh, so I mean, doing I, penetration I, testing, basically what it's like penetration testing, right? Like you were basically trying to screw up your own stuff to see where the vulnerabilities were kind of, I mean, I mean, like, yeah. We, so the test we would get, we'd get, like, we'd get like two weeks to like implement the counter or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it'd just be very little tests. And like, we'd have to just go through like so many security related things. Cause I mean, it is, it was software that's like controlling trucks. So like it was super security, you mm -hmm. know, focused, like we had to write up documentation and like offer different ways it could mess up. And then how we defend against those ways and everything like that. It's, a, it was, a it was, it was, it was a mess. Like it was a lot of, um, it was very little coding. Like when you got to the coding part, you basically had everything like written out in there and it was just, that, that's why I left. It got boring. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds boring yeah. as shit. Yeah. <laughs> I um, got bored of hearing you talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, that's why I started like doing like flutter and side projects at home. Cause like, you know, my job was just, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was interesting. I was giving, I was giving you shit. I wasn't, I didn't want to make it, make it sound like I thought you were born. <laughs> yeah, you're good. It just um, sounded like a headache. <laughs> yeah. Now at the very beginning it was, it was super dope. Cause like you had to understand like the whole system and how trucks work. Like, it's like semi trucks, like, right. Have you ever heard of international brand? I mean, the probably, brand international? probably. So they're, they're the number two biggest semi truck company in the U S and, uh, then the ice, you know, the yellow school buses, like that, the normal yellow school buses you see everywhere. Mm -hmm. So there, the brand is IC. So the, I was working for the parent company that owned the truck and the school bus and they had a oh, okay. like military, like defense thing too. And like, uh, the, the software I was specifically working on was the body controller. So we had the same one in all of them. And mm. yeah, it, it was, it was, it was definitely cool for the first, I think I left after like almost three years. So the first like two years was, was pretty cool. I was learning a bunch of stuff, like how the heck all that, all those things works and like operating systems within embedded controllers. And it was, it was dope, but then it just got just repetitive boring. Yeah. That that's about the time I, I started losing interest. Like when it gets too easy or just like, what the hell am I doing with my life? Like, <laughs> yeah like all like all the i guess i got like proficient enough to where you'd get assigned a task for what like two weeks and then i just like chill for like a week and a half quickly like get it done then on the last day and then just wait another week and a half until it's time to work on it but yeah i got a question for me he said how well do you know kotlin i don't know kotlin i kotlin I, Trying, it's for uh, app. It's for apps. I'm trying to think of. Is it Android or is it Android? Yeah. Okay. So with Android, you used to be able to write apps in Java, and I know I that's how I used to do it. And then I started working with Flutter and everything, and I haven't used Android since then. Well, I've never used. I, I've I've worked a little bit with React Native, and uh, I know you do Flutter. I cannot get into Flutter, man. Too many pre built components. <laughs> I cannot get into React. I know that, that, that's why it's funny. <laughs> like, uh, so I mean, I'm sure it makes sense to, I want to know React. React Native is just really easy. But the thing I hate the most about, like, I mean, what you're doing here is, is a little bit better. But with React and like Next.js, I hate how everything is just mixed together. Like, it seems so messy, like HTML, like CSS, everything's just mixed together. And then yeah, you got like sort the of. JSX, you got JSX or whatever within Next.js. And it's, it's weird happy. because it's weird because they um like it seems like that, but everything's so like broken down into sub components that it, it actually like makes it clean. I don't know, like I, I didn't like that either, but it is kind of nice not to have to sift through two files just to figure out one little thing and things like event handlers. Like I know that if I'm working with a component, I have pretty much everything I need within that component. Like, yeah, I mean, it's each his own, but yeah, kind of, kind of interesting. Like I, I mean, with Flutter, are you really breaking everything up? So like Flutter, there's only one thing, like there's only one language. There's only like 
if you don't have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, what was that? What was some of, some of the other ones I remember? Ajax, like whatever other crazy things that I, I remember you had to do. Um, you just have Dart. That's it. You have Dart and you have widgets and everything's just a widget tree. Hmm. Simple. Yeah, I mean, I remember when we did our stream, like everything was like a built-in component and that was so confusing. I'm like, but you got to build something out from scratch, all right? No, it's like, I, I, there. <laughs> okay, here, so it seems cool if you can do that, but what about when you have to like completely make something of your own? Like, let's say you have a design that you've never seen before and you want to- so, uh, a lot of them, the um, they have tools to do that. So a lot of them, they have a lot of basic things so you got like app bars and all that stuff you see in apps, but you have things like, let me, let me show you a quick link of, of this cool. Almost that. Uh, my friend did. I have a, I almost have the messages integration complete. So I added an attribute and now I just need to query that attribute and I'm almost done with it. You're like even right here, like this would be broken down into sub components where I wouldn't have like a massive file like this. Like if I was using React. Yeah. All right. I have so this. Oh, it's, it's in React. Too much stuff. And here you're saying React. Uh, both. Thanks, man. <laughs> so then let me and my, uh, I want to, let me send you this it. video that me and my friend, we did like a collaboration kind of in uh or a flutter app that we built and you could just turn off the volume and watch like the first like 30 seconds and he built this like it was a custom login screen that he built are you going to share it right now i sent it on slack oh you can share your screen if you want nah, cool. too much. Can... okay gotcha <laughs> just want to turn off your volume and watch like the first 30 seconds and like it's a fully custom all right give me give me a second let me see if i can console this off if i don't close out a thought right now it's gonna stay in my head and bother me for some reason when i'm a hold on when i'm when, when i submit the form it refreshes the page like did i give me a second let me just comment this out now it's really gonna bother me you see that though like when i uh, when i submit the message the form like completely refreshes i screwed something up but give me a second yeah let's, mm -hmm. let's pull yours up um i don't i think i might have to add my stream Wait, did you want volume on it or no you know see it's just look you can just look at that app being built you don't have to do a full stream but like all those motions and everything is custom built like oh really he drew those shapes and everything like within flutter and yeah this, so you, it's all custom built you have all that like opportunity to do it That's i guess easier, a lot easier i think than see it doing that with css or something yeah yeah i guess one of my issues with uh um, with stuff like that is that when you build something, you have to do it like their way. Like I like the freedom. I, I like the idea of, you know, so something. The, he, the thing you use there is a widget called custom painter. And with that, you literally have to write out your own like mathematics for it. And like, so it's, it is doing it like fully like raw in yourself. It's just like, you know how in CSS you'd have to define, like if you were to do some, some sort of animation like that in CSS or something, you'd have to um, draw out the map and math and all that all that type of crazy stuff. And you have to do the same thing in Flutter using a custom painter, which is what it's called. Mm. And you literally can, it's just like drawing on the screen, like how, however you want and what you want it to do. And like that, that part was like, so he, he's a little bit better at UIs. So I don't think I'd be able to do that just because like, that's a pretty complex animation, but he, he was obviously a lot better with that. And I, I did the second part of the app where I just added all the, social authentications got it wait oh you're saying you worked on it with him i didn't catch that yeah we did like a little collab he did like the, gotcha. the ui yeah, he did the ui and i did the social integrations got it hmm. Hermes said next just feels like they just want to be php or python <laughs> i can see that it just all looks like a mess unless it's dart and flutter. <laughs> just my bias opinion. <laughs> now, nah, actually, so like if, if you're like biased. Do... <laughs> uh, now, nah, if I was, if I actually, 
like was to do web development. I mean, I definitely go for React and Next.js just because like that's the one that makes the most sense. But I do I I like just basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript just because that you can understand what's going on for the most part everywhere. Okay, so I, I added this in and then it just threw a bunch of errors and I have no idea how I fixed it, but now I have to rebuild it. So let, let me see if this is what's causing it. Okay, there we go. We're good to go here. Oh, those are uh, Hermes. He's a uh, her, Hermes. I can't say it plural. These are Hermes uh, NFTs. He sent those over for me to use because I didn't <laughs> want to use like somebody else's. I don't know. You know, you know what I mean? Like someone get pissed yeah. off if you're using their stuff. Like I don't want to do that to someone. Those are his? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, stole the, you stole the NFTs, you just screenshotted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just downloaded. Dude, I don't even know what an NFT is, man. I'm so out of touch with that side of the world. Okay, so last messages. I should be able to console this out. So, like, okay, so here we go. Um, for some reason, it's telling me there are no attributes. Am I doing something wrong? Get channel attributes by keys. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of debugging here because I know I added them. Let me try to re restart the page that I, I might, it might be because like I rejoined. By the way, Hermes, if you're, uh, if you're still in the chat and you have a second, we were, um, we're talking about how to do channel or chat history, like store the least, the last like 10 messages. And I'm going to try doing it by adding channel attributes. But if there's another way, like, I guess something more practical or more correct, I guess, kind of interesting to hear your take on it. Yeah, see, the, I think it's this method. I'm, I'm doing something wrong here and how I'm getting it, getting the channel attributes down here and it keeps throwing this issue. Now I'm just confusing myself. Got last messages. I think I'm supposed to throw in an array here. Get channel attributes by keys. Yeah, that's the right way for sure. I did a hard refresh. I think Hermes messaged me saying that you have the most senior person store the messages in an array. That's right. Yeah. We, yeah, that's true. Okay. So I, I already implemented something like this. Um, what you would do is every single message. So you pick a senior member, like we talked about this whole thing, basically where like, if you're having a conversation with a group of friends, right? Let's say like you and I start this conversation and let's say I was the first one in the room. And then let's say we have Hermes join the conversation and then I happen to leave. Does the conversation end? It doesn't end. It's still an open room because you guys are still talking. So the conversation should continue. So basically what you do is you have the person that was there first store all the information and they're in charge of sending this information out. Then if I happen to leave, that information would get passed down to you. And then if Hermes was the last one in the room, it would get passed down to him. So he would be in charge of doing that. In this case, you would just do it through that. Um, yeah, in that case, I'm going to I'm gonna not implement that right now just because um, it might have to do a little twisting and pulling here. I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start with the video. We'll hold off on the chat thing. If anything, I'll just, yeah, I'll maybe do that in the last part. Also, one more thing to keep in mind. You said, did you ever figure out like if a person leaves the live stream using the little X at the top instead of like the leave live stream button, you said sometimes it doesn't catch it, right? Yeah, it or works. I mean, here's the thing. I, I think it works 100% of the time, but I'm going to say 99% of the time. Okay. But here's the thing is if it that one small fraction of the time when it doesn't work, it's not going to be an issue because it's just going to take the room or the lobby like another couple of minutes to not a couple of minutes, but like 30 seconds to actually catch up to it. Yeah. So it should be good. So let's just say, hey, this is a new room. Select our NFT. So we see the room. We should see the room pop up. I think I have, I didn't comment out all the things. Yeah. Okay. So let's see, let me just get rid of this old code because I'm just screwing things up now. So we're just storing an array here and get rid of that. This is why I always duplicate my code though. 
like while a cop oh here we go so there's there's a live room so yeah that was the back button thing hermes if you're watching this is basically all taken care of like if you hit x it just updates that in the lobby it's all good right now but like i said it's only a 30 second delay it's fine or i haven't seen anything that could be a major issue with it all right well let's, let's get into the chat or the video stream then let's go ahead and start doing that i'm just going to continue here the last year you're like good to like you know engage with the chat if you want or if you got to go like i totally understand you can bug me too i'm totally cool with it i'm just gonna be doing my thing it totally helps me that you're here though i might have to leave soon to go to the gym but i'll stick on i'll stick around for another 10 minutes or something you gym rat <laughs> Uh, I had a question for you. So how often do you change VS Code themes? Um, let's see. I set up this theme in uh, in 2019 and um, now 2020, and I haven't changed it since. So I guess zero or never. Um, I'm at least uh, I'm, I'm proud of you for at least not going with the default one. <laughs> oh, no. I, yeah, I saw that one too much. That bothered me, actually. Like, I always saw it in tutorials. But, yeah, I, I definitely... I don't know. I don't. I don't like the yellow. I really like purple and green. Like those are like my favorite colors. Mm -hmm. Orange is kind of up there, but it's a certain shade of orange that I actually like. Purple and green. I don't know about the how that how well that mixes together, but I mean, it, this one looks doesn't look bad. Purple and green. Those are those are complementary colors. Purple and green. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a good UI guy, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I wouldn't doubt it. See, this is satisfying right here—the purple and, and red and blue. Yeah. I like that. Anything else, I pretty much just keep it gray. All right, so I have to redesign the UI right now. So what I'm going to do actually is jump back to to the template because I have to design the UI to actually store a stream. So what I'm going to do is just simply add in the template that's already pre-built, and I'm going to comment out, or I'll just call this one like old or something the current room and I'll just say like chat or something like that. Cause this is chat only. Then I'm going to import or bring in the new room. Now I'm going to have to like update a bunch of stuff to it. Well, actually, I don't know. Let me think about this. Ah, damn. I'm going to have to completely start redoing everything because I haven't I, like, because my designer did it. I don't know all his variable name or not variable names, but um, the class and ID names. So it actually might, complicate things but let's just give it a shot let's see because i don't want to spend time like having to redo like a bunch of stuff that i just finished doing the last six hours <laughs> or seven hours <laughs> but it, it wouldn't be all of that but yeah it would be a good chat I, I got a question for the chat now i had a bunch of questions today so i'm assuming you've never worked with remix no no so out of if anybody's had any experience with the remix how does it compare to like react and all that stuff because i know it's the new it's the new cool javascript framework around but i mean i'm not a web developer i never tried it so i, I have no idea what was remix exactly i, I watched a couple I, mean, a I watched fireships video and then yeah. i just kind of like just checked it out a little bit but that was it it's like a a next.js direct competitor mm. So they get they do server side as well, but then uh, I think they simplify a couple things like um, and Next.js. I had, so this is the part where I think I got stuck when Next.js like there was like get static props and then get server props, and I got kind of I don't think I ever got past that little part um, just because I stopped working on the project overall. Oh damn. That's a nice, nice responsive UI. Yeah, it's a little bit zoomed in because my I'm, I'm zoomed in in general, yeah. so it kind of looks a little bit funny. Like the screen is kind of tiny, but yeah. So this is what we're about to have right here. So this is all static. I need to update most of this. So basically, all we did was took the. Sorry, that I just realized I just kind of interrupted you. I'm like, I'm like deep in my own thought, and I'm listening at the same time. Basically, we took the chat right here that was over here and we move it over and then we just added all this stuff in here. And then here you got like the room details and the host. Now you get out. Well, you weren't interrupting. I was just, I just, I finished asking my question about the next year stuff or the remix. remix. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think either of us really know much about it, but I was wondering if someone else out there does. All right. Let's see how this thing, works if it does at all so 
this is what this is what I was worried about right here because I don't know what the CSS and ID names are. And uh, I'm gonna have to start like reconfiguring everything. Hermes says I code everything from, the, from vanilla JS, vanilla JS React on the front end. I use anything from Node.js Go. Oh, that's he's referring to the stack. He said he's a full stack polyglot, which I don't, I don't know. My English isn't that good. Let's <laughs> see. All right, let's see what I can do here. Polyglot, an adjective about knowing or using several languages. Interesting. He needs I'm like to learn Flutter. You're like the, the Mac guy of Flutter, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just, if I just, the, the thing that's come easiest to me, the thing I know the most, and I'm like, uh, it literally does everything. Why learn anything else? Except for web. It it almost does web only for React, certain situations. React Native does web. No, nah, uh, React Native does web through like React. Yeah, right? yeah I guess yeah. yeah. But right, then again, remember I don't I don't like I don't like how they mix all the languages together. <laughs> <laughs> but not. and then the Flutter web for those who are curious is it's probably not the best solution for most websites. You're saying React or. Flutter web isn't the best solution. Oh, gotcha. Flutter web, that's what it was. Yeah, was, so Flutter does have a web version. I mean, like you said, it's not maybe not the best. But yeah, they, they have they released the stable this year. They have a web version. They can make like desktop apps too. I, I would say Flutter was best for desktop applications and mobile applications. And then web, if you just want to have something without having to write any extra code, but there's no like SEO or anything. So you kind of get gotcha. on that end. But like if you have a web app, so like their big like use case, they're saying if you have something that's a web app, like you need to log into it or anything like that, it should work well for it. But yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay. I've seen, I was running into a couple of issues. Um, basically what's happening here is there's a completely different JavaScript file linked up to this. So I have to like redo a few things and there's no Agora SDK. So I'm trying to figure out why the heck none of it's working. And it's because I completely imported a different template and it just doesn't have like this in the template. Like there would be no reason why my designer would know about that. <laughs> so now I'm fixing it and let's see. Yeah, see, there's a couple of divs that are named differently. Dang it. All right, let's see how I can make this not a pain in the ass. So let's see. Hmm. And try leaving and re-entering. So it's tracking the participants. So that's live right now. And then if I add, okay, so messages are working. Sweet. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of these. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was. There's something about when your code works that's really refreshing. <laughs> it drives me nuts when it doesn't work, but then it starts working and then it's it's all worth it. <laughs> For about five minutes. Yeah, until the next thing doesn't work. Okay, so I need to get rid of uh, the sidebar chat. Here we go, messages. So I just got to get rid of all these. So I want this to be the real chat. Yeah, I definitely, the more I think about it, I definitely want the, the message history. I'll just do that last. And I'm going to have to, I probably won't, I don't know if I'll go live. I mean, I might go live for like a couple of minutes and then I'm just going to shut down the Ngrok server right away because I know video is going to be, <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit more, I guess, uh, challenging to maintain. And I'm probably going to have to set up an environment variable too for that API ID or app ID. Okay, let's see. Some nice, fun, tedious stuff here. <laughs> here we go. Oh yeah, there we go. That's looking good. Now I just gotta get these guys out here. So if I add more participants, it all works. Icon. 
Nice. Yeah, why isn't um, it's not rendering these? So I, I think there's got to be like a variable name that's a little bit different. So let me pull up the original room with the chat only. So we have our container, members container, and then I have the member list. If I go in here, that's why I don't have a member list. What do he call it here? Let's see. Member account. I think I deleted it. That's funny. I must have deleted it without even noticing. Yeah, I definitely did because he wouldn't have made that mistake. Control Z. Yeah, but then I would have to undo a lot. I'm just worried that this. Oh, hold on a second. Is this. Okay, yeah. So that's the opening and closing div on the member list. I might have a nice VS Code extension for you. Let me try to see if I can find it. Share it. I'll give you my unsolicited opinion. You're gonna like it, I think. Hopefully, it was for it was for web. Okay, so member list. This should be set to zero. Okay, so. When we append the members, let's see, we go to initiate, we have member joined, add a participant to DOM. The issue is definitely happening somewhere in here and I cannot figure out why. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think we had like 20 plus people at one point. <laughs> Are we creating the new YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, think, think. Let's see. Member item. Okay, let's just console this out. Let's check out the member wrapper. I just want to make sure it's even getting this. You were getting that theme, right? Or did you already have that? The, the VS Code thing I was looking for it was, uh, I can't find it. I must have uninstalled it. But it was something where it, like it would line up your HTML tags, um, like very nicely, so you could see exactly where things ended and where things like started. Oh, um, th that's not a theme though. That would be like an extension, right? No, that's I said an extension. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. See, this is my thing, dude. I'm getting like thirty percent of what you're saying, <laughs> <laughs> so I just jump into the conversation late and then argue that you didn't mention something. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is going on here oh i think what's i think i know what's happening i maybe i'm wrong but i think what's happening is the the video template that he gave me the dom element itself looked completely different so the one that i'm using has probably like a different class name so the styling is not even like it's not even relevant to what i'm adding so it technically is there it's just not reading it so let me get a second let me find that I can't, oh, I'm going to get that top bar. So let's see if it was any different. So this is the template, and then we should have the members list somewhere here. Participants, member list. Yeah, I had a, I had a name completely different, so let's recreate this then. It's not good. We definitely want to fix that for the course or the tutorial. He's a mad genius, man. The one that built <laughs> this. I give him any template and he just like, I'll give him like a, a rough mock-up of what I need. And he just has sick looking designs for me like a day later. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, they all look pretty sweet. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Def Folio, the original mumble, this, like everything. It's crazy. Yeah. I can't find that extension for you, but I think there's one out there that like matches up your div. So it's a lot easier to tell what's going on. Like which one's the closing one and everything. Hmm. Yeah, I think I had that. I, I had it at one point and I must have just got like, maybe I could reset my settings or something like that. Maybe they stopped like, maybe it got removed or something because I'm pretty sure I had it too, but can't find it anymore. It was like bracket something, bracket pair colorizer. Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah I, so. I have that one, but that's, uh, mm. I didn't know whether that was for divs or not, but. Hey, check it out. I got it. So 
Add that ass to the stream. I'm the cat. Ugh. <laughs> oh, that doesn't look good. Why is there all this space? Here, I, I think I may have grabbed like the wrong class. I, I feel like it should be. Hold on, not member. That says member list. Should it just be member? I yeah, know? but that's how he has it. Oh. So check this out. Like he has member list. And then member wrapper. Oh, I, I think he just I think he just messed something up here. Because it doesn't it has no closing tag. I think it's supposed to be right here. Give it a shot. So I think what needs to happen is this needs to get removed. Or I guess actually, yeah. Yeah, because I was wondering, I was like, I'm pretty sure we're a div short here. Didn't look right. Okay, I need to fix out why those aren't rendering, but let's try that again. <laughs> Yeah, this is um no now it's not even rendering them out. Yeah, so definitely a bug here. So he has it as member wrapper. Maybe just needed to add a closing div. I don't know. Let's see. So we have an opening opening div right here, span tag, and then a name. So it's something with how he named. Oh, he named the list, I think. I mean, let's see. Like, it, it is a pending. I think it's just not reading it. So let's see. Members container. Yeah, it's here. Hmm. I'm going to have to check the CSS file, see what he has here. CSS color transparent. Yeah, <laughs> opacity zero. Yeah. Let's see. So I'd, looking at this code, that's another reason why I hate when they're all mixed together. Like things aren't nicely from the left side. You got this uh, member item that's like four tabs over hanging out. Just looks messy. Where, this thing right here? Yeah. Well, th that's just because I'm I'm using... Like if I was using JavaScript like this normally, I wouldn't. This isn't how yeah, I do it. But like in React and something, you ha like have to do it that way, with like the JSX and everything and all that. Yeah. Kind of stuff. But it's fine. Just complaining. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do the old school debugging, not min height, but um, I'm just gonna give it like a height and width and just see what the heck's going on here. So let's see. Let's add in a width of. I don't know, 200 pixels. Okay, so it's it's there and it's just like invisible. Do you see anything wrong with it? Maybe just my my, my weary eyes. I mean, you it, it must be like a comma out of, okay, we have name two quotes, name. class, name. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks perfectly fine. What Let's is just the, add a, the style of the member name? Member name. Yeah. Oh, um, but uh, maybe the CSS of that looks weird. I don't know. It's a silly issue, but it's important, I guess. Here, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm like so zoomed in. <laughs> this is killing me. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's retry this. Let's do this again. Create a room. Let's join. Grab this guy. <laughs> Feels like you're, yeah, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly what's going on here. That's what, that's what I feel like too. I feel like I'm missing a closing tag. Do you have a list wrapper? Ah, I think I, let's see. Okay. He's probably right. So we have a, a member list. It opens and closes right here. And then if we go into, no, that's the room chat. Okay, so member list opens and closes. Then we have the room JS file. It opens and closes right here. Like I said, unless I'm not seeing, hey, let's just do this. Let's just do an H1 tag. Because if, if this is it, it's definitely the CSS. 
This is such bad practice. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be learning from me, guys. <laughs> Ignore everything I say. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, like, even that's not popping up. What the heck am I doing? So maybe, maybe you're moving that very first member list was a mistake. You remember how you All had right. that? Yeah, let, let, let's do some control Z. <laughs> okay, let's go into the room. Right, I, I think I might have to leave. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining, man. Appreciate yeah, thanks, it. Thanks for having me. It was a, I learned a lot and it's looks like it's coming together. You better finish it tonight. Only got like five hours left. If I can get this dang bug out, man, that's <laughs> all right. That's tough. All right. Later. Good luck. Appreciate it. All right. I'll have this thing done soon. I promise. Good old friend control Z. Here, let's try, I got an idea. I'm gonna go back to the original template. Yeah, I'm still alive, I just want to make sure. <laughs> okay, let's just grab one of these items. And I basically just undid everything I did. Get the member. I guess I'm gonna have to watch the chat now that I don't have the dust here. This is how you find your missing, the missing comma. <laughs> All right, let's see, participants, member account. I'm close. All right. I need to re-import the Agora SDK, actually. I just realized I completely undid all of that. OK. Member header. Yeah, I tried to do control Z as much as I could. Um, I guess I must have closed the file and reopened it. So it only let me go so far. But I I think I kind of have an idea of what's going on here. Let me finish this up in a second. So we have our members header. This div shouldn't be here, I don't think. I think that's how it's supposed to be right there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's get that ugly styling out. Take out the height and width. There we go. Okay, so now um, I, I think there's still an issue with how it's trying to append it to the DOM, like the actual item, the tag. Let's see. Okay, cannot read properties of null inside of inner HTML. Okay, so we'll just go back to that, fix that up. It's that awkward, quiet part of the stream where I just sit here and talk to myself for a minute. I've got nothing to entertain with right now. Okay, so let's console out the member item. Well, we already have that, so actually I don't need to do that. And member list. Okay, let's paste this in. 
It looks like the member wrapper is actually not being read. So let's see what's going on here now. That's null. Why is that null? Oh, because... All right, I, I shouldn't cuss on a stream, so I won't, but that was that stupid class list issue. It was all because Chuvo made that a class instead of an ID. And my JavaScript was written to read that as an ID. Yeah, I, now I fully know what it is now. Okay, I just need to fix that. That is, that is funny. There goes 15 minutes of my life right there, and I guess everyone who's watching. Okay, there we go. So we have that. I can get rid of the static item right here. And then I can get rid of all these messages. Hopefully I don't delete something that I shouldn't. I'll we'll just go up through all these. Okay. Just making sure I don't delete like a closing tag or something. Okay, all of that just to reset the code. So I'm gonna go back in here. Let's check it out. We'll go to the lobby, create a room. Select this guy as our avatar. No. Okay. Add participant to Dom. Okay, I, I think this is a small issue. I thought we recreated the entire bug. Okay, add participant to Dom. So this is inside, I cannot read inner HTML. Member item is still null. Uh, I might have not, I might have just not saved HTML. Let's try this again or save the file. No, it's still an issue. Okay, get element by ID member list. I deleted that that entire section. <laughs> I rem yeah, I, I okay, let's I, I think I, I that's a small fix. Let's hope it's nothing serious. I deleted the entire section. I'm just working on this is gonna drive me crazy, guys. This is after how many hours of streaming? Seven hours and forty three minutes. I'm not working the same. Always collapse the code before deleting. You're one hundred percent right. I'm going to go through this one more time. Let's try to do this fast. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'll just collapse. Yeah. I'll definitely collapse it all this time. And then we won't have the issue. Okay. It's all good. Here's our member list. We're going to get rid of this member. Cool. And I'm just trying to get rid of the messages now. This is exactly where I caused the issue last time. All right, let's see. I'm just gonna collapse all these. Good suggestion, by the way. Hard coding that we did. <laughs> Yeah, like I'm just getting lazy right now where I'm just trying to like do things fast and with my brain at the state that it's in, not a good idea. Okay, let's see. Undo. Boom, there we go. Okay, we'll bring in another member. Let's test this. Oh, and I just realized, so the reason why the name is not showing up correctly is because I need to replace these values. So I need to throw in the member ID that needs to change. Then I need to change the actual name. And then I think that's it. So I join as Dennis here. Now we see Dennis, but that's because I joined twice as myself. So let's try this again. All right.
Okay, there we go. So we see Dennis and Hermes in the chat now. And we'll just say, hey, that's from Hermes. And Okay, so our video format is almost done here. Always take a break. Yeah, I know Hermes. I wouldn't code this long <laughs> straight. I've took a 10 minute break, but it's kind of fun to mess with your brain sometimes. Sometimes you can go into God mode and just do really good or you can completely just suck. But yeah, um, for now, we'll, we'll stay away from breaks. Um, we have the video chat section done. In fact, I think the entire sidebar right here should be gray because I don't want it to have to fill out as I'm chatting like that. So I'll fix this in a second. But now what I'm going to do is change the room details. So that's not the room name. I want to make sure the room actually is displayed. I'm going to update the host information or I might just do that a little bit later, actually. And then um, we're pretty much ready to move on to video integration. So give me a second. Let's update the sidebar. So I just need to get this hex right here. And I promise the, the entire tutorial will not be this long. It's probably going to be done in about three to four hours, if that. You're not going to have these issues and me thinking here. So let's see. Um, this is a message wrapper, I think. That's what it was called here. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm just trying to get the background color here. So messages container. So this entire sidebar. Let's see room.css. And this is messages somewhere here. I'm just gonna grab this background color just like that because it's getting a little bit too challenging to try to find it, the file. <laughs> yeah, actually React probably would solve a lot of these problems. This is like the code base getting just too crazy. You know what, we're gonna ignore that then. We're just not gonna deal with that section then. Hold on, is it this color? Maybe this was it, let's try this. No, that's not it. All right, we're moving on to video integration. Okay, so let's see. Um, to get the video integration done, what we need to do first is download the Agora RTC SDK now. So RTM and RTC are two different things. So I first need to download that. And then what I'm going to do is just display a local stream to this section here. So once I display it, we'll, we'll figure out how things are going to work here. And then we'll start adding in the ability to broadcast this out to all the users. Then we'll start adding in controls and so on. So Let's go ahead and continue on here. So let's go to downloads here. In this case, we're selecting web, real-time messaging. So I need to grab RTC. Here, let's just start with the website fresh. Okay, so video SDK. In this case, I'm going to do interactive stream. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm actually confused why the heck that's not here. It's supposed to be here somewhere. All right, we'll just do video. Oh, never mind. That's the same SDK, though. Okay, let's grab this, throw this into our Mumble folder. Okay, so the SDK is here now. Let's bring that into the JS file. And here we go. I'm just going to copy this. All right, let's see. So I'm going to bring this into the room. That's the only place where I'll need it. So 
bring it in right here. I won't need that in the lobby because we're doing RPM with all of that. Let's make that happen here. So take out everything up until .js, bring that in, and let's configure that section here. So I'm gonna pull up some code I was working on earlier. Just so I can reference that. Okay, so for RTM, I'm gonna make this, I probably could make it into its own file. That'd probably be a better idea. Let's see. Mm. Let's just do it all in here. I'll, um, I'll just keep it in like this. I know it's gonna make some people mad, but we can fix this later. So we still have the same app ID and we have, we're just going to generate a new token for this. So we're basically, we're going to do the same configuration that we did for RTM. And I know that nobody who started the chat is watching. I'm technically not doing a tutorial, so I'll just kind of go through with it and kind of explain what's happening. But there's a lot of stuff that I did about seven or eight hours ago that we took care of and started setting this stuff up with that it's not going to be relevant to anybody now. So we'll just bring this in and say RTM config from here on out. generate the ID the same way that I did before, except for in this case, it's just going to be an integer, not a string. <laughs> Thanks for joining the chat, man. Have a good night. 257, where are you from? I'm trying to figure out what side of the world that's at. We were in here for a while too. I remember you like three hours ago. Jeez. So in this, at this point, I'm gonna bring in the app ID and I have that variable imported right here. So I'll just set that. We'll use the same thing. The token, because we're not doing token authentication, we'll just set this to null and the UID. Be the RTC UID channel is going to be the room name. Cool. All right. Now I need to create some local audio and video tracks. So we'll call them local tracks. So this is basically where the audio and video source will be. I'm going to present or store it in here. So this is how we're going to display this to people or to other users. And we'll do local screen tracks. So this is for when we're screen sharing. So I'm going to be able to. Screen share. Hey, have a good time in class, man. Seeing some people taking off here. I know it's going to get quiet around 6. I guess it's 6 p.m. my time. This is when the least amount of my viewers are online. So um, anyways, we're creating tracks. So we're going to have the video source and the screen source, so like screen sharing, because you always got to be able to share your screen. And it's about right here. Local screen tracks. All right, now we want to set up the RTC client. And this is going to be Agora RTC. All caps, I made this mistake earlier on. Create client. Yeah, I'm just gonna be a little bit quieter from now on. My voice is <laughs> starting to go. It's like becoming an effort to just talk right now. Let's code along and explain what I'm doing, if anything. Dang, you've been watching for four, five hours? <laughs> Jeez, you're the real champ. I'm at least busy. You're, uh, you're having to watch me go through bugs and just say <laughs> nothing good. Have a good night, man. Jeez, that's awesome. Okay. All right. So we have the client and then let's just initiate RTC. A basic function. 
I can't even write async. I actually blinked out. That's how shot my brain is. This is usually why it's good to have somebody in the chat with me because then it helps it not be awkwardly quiet. And I try to do the music route. And in fact, let me just turn on something for my phone. If it sounds weird, let me know. But I try to do it from my computer and apparently it was just way too loud for everyone. So let's see, let's turn on some of my favorite mixes. Let me know if you can hear that, and if it's too loud, I'll turn it down. Is that too loud? Okay, cool. Awesome. This is usually what I work to, so it's not so weird to sit here all quietly. All right, so um, initiate RTC. So the first thing is I don't want users, let me turn this down a little bit. I don't want users to start up the stream right when they join because as a host, I should be able to create a room, have people join and then present the stream when I click start stream. And I should also have full control over the stream itself. So let's do this. We have initiate RTC and this is gonna get triggered right away. So I'm gonna fire this off immediately. So this is gonna be also initiated with RTM. In fact, we'll initiate this after. So we're gonna initiate it. And then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add in some buttons and we already have those buttons in the template. So I need to add in some event handlers to this. Let's see where those at. So in our template, man, that sidebar really looks ugly without that. So in this template, we have our start stream button. Let's see, that's our screen share. Oh dang, I just realized we don't have a start stream button. I guess this can be the start stream button for now. Um, Yeshiva didn't think of that because I want to change what that icon looks like, but for now that's going to be it. So let's go ahead and find that. Here, let me find this uh, this color. I just can't do it on this screen because it's way too way too zoomed in. Give me a second. I'll I'll figure this out. It bothers me enough to where I need to fix it. I thought I could ignore it. Funny thing is, is I don't even see a class on it. Like, I don't even know where that background's coming from. I think that's, no, that's not it. Dang it, I thought I found it. I found it. Okay, give me a second. It was the same thing. I don't get it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, here, let's let's just do this. I'll um, I gotta find another icon. I'll just duplicate it. It's gonna look a little bit weird right now, but until I find it, I might just look up some kind of icon right now. But let's uh, well. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it like red, I think, because I think start stream should be a different background color. Okay, so I just need the actual icon to to change because 
it's like a leave icon and it should be something else. I don't know. I don't know exactly what that should be yet, but like in in a, in stream yards, it just says start stream. Like that's it. There's no icon. Maybe I can just change it to text. Okay, room.html. Here we go. Okay, so here are the buttons here. So there's no IDs on them. So let's go ahead and add that. So this will be toggle stream or toggle BTN or let's just do stream BTN. So that'll be because that's going to be for on and off. Yeah, I'll leave the music like this. I try to figure it out earlier. It was supposed to come from the computer and I couldn't get that working. Okay, so for this button right here, what's the second one? Let's just give them names right now. I think this is screen button. So this is to share the screen. And this should also actually change because that should be um, a camera or a screen. So that should change. It should be toggled just like any other button would. Okay, so uh, this next one is going to be mic, so mic button, and the camera button. So that's going to be to toggle the camera on or off. Cool. I can get rid of some of this. Okay, so at the bottom of this page is where I want to start adding these event handlers. So let's just do document, uh, get element by ID. Start with the stream button. I'm going to duplicate this four times, I think. Okay, so now what i want to do is toggle the camera or toggle the actual stream we're going to create a function here called start stream cool cool everyone's saying audio sounds good okay so Let's do this. Let's set some variables here and we're going to do a few. So the first one is going to be streaming. So are we streaming? In this case, it's just going to be false. That means when we first load up the page, we're not streaming and this is only something that an admin can do. Uh, then the next one is going to be sharing screen. Are we sharing the screen? Answer for this on the first load is going to be false. Later on, we can change this to where a user can start with a screen share. But at this point, a user will always start with the webcam on and then they can change that. So we want to set these and in start stream, the first thing I want to do is I'm gonna check if we're streaming. So for the stream button, let's add an event handler. So we'll do add event listener on click. So when this button is clicked, let's start the stream. So let's trigger start stream. Now, start stream is probably not a good name. So let's call it toggle because we're just toggling the stream. We can also click this button to turn off the stream. So let's just call it toggle stream. Yeah, I actually just noticed that. Thanks for the heads up. I saw the arrow function error. Okay, so I'll just alert real quick. Let's make sure everything's good. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about right here. So starting stream. Now I'm also going to change that color right there. So I need to know what that class is. So it looks like we have an active class. So let's just get rid of that. I'm just gonna comment this right there. So class active, that's the class that we need to add in order to make the buttons active. So now if I remove that, that's like this. Now, I think for, for the stream button, I should probably always have this as red. So we'll just do style, we'll call it inline, background color, and it's gotta be a shade of red, that's good. Let's try crimson. Yeah, I think that's good. So this is, you always know that this is important right here. 
Yeah, and I feel like I'm gonna just change that to text at some point too. Let's see. Let's just try this. So, no, that actually doesn't look too bad. What do you guys think? I think it looks good. I mean, like I said, I'm really zoomed in, so it'll look better on a normal screen. Got to zoom out. That's kind of what it would look like. And I got to fix this background. But yeah, I think that's pretty good, actually. So this is going to change to end stream the second we toggle it. So let's see. Let's go back in here. Okay, so we're just going to alert everybody that the stream is starting, or at least the current user, but that's not going to be permanent. So if the stream is... If we're not streaming, so we're going to use a not operator. If we're not streaming, what do we want to do? Well, at this point, we want to toggle our video. So let's do this. Let's create another function. We're going to call this toggle video or let's, let's, call, let's call it toggle video share because there's going to be another function that's going to be called toggle camera later that I'm going to use for turning your camera on and off. See, the music just gets me into flow and I just feel better now. Oh, I probably should drink water. <sighs> I usually have like 10 glasses of water and I've had two today. That's not good. Okay. This chair is really loud too. I would stand, but I, uh, the camera would be blocked out then. Only way I'd be able to do that is if I stop sharing the face cam. Okay. If we're not streaming, we're going to toggle the video share and we're just going to set streaming to false or to true because we are now streaming. And we're going to get the start button. Let's just do this. Let's just grab the entire button. And let's see, I'm going to change the inner text to stop stream. So when we click it, we want that text to actually change. So oh, what happened? Stream is going to be true. Stream button. Toggle stream. Make sure we don't have an error before we go too far. It looks like we're good. Let's try to do a hard refresh then. Okay, stop stream. Oh, okay, gotcha. So um, this is, so if we're not streaming, start it. And if we are, let's do this. Let's just set streaming to false. Oh, inner, yeah, inner text. I was going to say like something looks weird here. Um, we won't do inner HTML. Inner text is safer. I need, to, I need to wing myself off of using inner HTML. It's better to use inner text. Okay, there we go. And then if we are streaming, then let's just turn... Let's turn streaming to false again. And then the same thing, I probably should set this in a variable, but I think this is the only place we're gonna use it. Start stream. Okay, there we go. So it just toggles it on and off and that's how we can control it. I feel like maybe it should be like a different color, maybe not red, but I don't know. Okay, so let's, let's actually do some real work now. So we just finished that up. Okay, so we wanna just toggle that. And if we're the host, so the only time we're gonna be allowed to stream is if we're the host. So we actually, first of all, need to set a host. I completely forgot to do that. I think I was supposed to set that earlier. Let me try to figure this out. In fact, for now, we're just gonna stream as anybody, then I'll add in the host functionality. So uh, we're ready to go. We change the status of streaming or state, and then we toggle video share. Now for video share, this is what we're gonna do. So let's see, toggle video share. Let's go down to this function. 
in here, we're going to call RTC client. And what I want to do is set the role of this client. So we'll just do dot set role. And we're only at this point, we're not going to have multiple peers streaming. I can add that in later. So like anybody from the chat, I can bring up and have talk to me. Um, so we can have like a group chat session at this point. It's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to teach you how to host it. And then we'll build that in probably in a future stream. So we'll set the client role, which is, so we're the client. We're going to set that to host. And then everybody else, if you don't have a set to host, you're going to be set as an audience member. So that's like your status. Then we're going to get the local tracks and we're going to go ahead and get those. So we're going to use the Agora RTC dot create micro phone and camera tracks. So we're going to use this function. And what this function is going to do is when you click the start stream button, it's like when you join a, uh, any kind of like video conferencing app where it's going to ask you for your microphone and audio information. So it's basically going to ask you for access to that. This is what this function does. When you confirm it, what it's going to do is it's going to get those audio and video tracks and return it back to local tracks. So we're just sending that. Okay, so I won't worry about this part yet. All right, let's create the video player. I'm going to actually create the HTML element. So basically when we start streaming, we're actually going to throw in an HTML element into that little container where the video is supposed to be in here. And we're going to actually display like a video player. I got quiet. <laughs> Let's see, do we have people watching still? 35 people? Maybe I need to get more enthusiastic, keep people on longer. Okay, let's create a div here. Thank you, man. Let's see some people <laughs> chatting here. Seems like a great course. Going to do it on Sunday. Uh, I wouldn't recommend following this one. Um, I'm actually going to put together a full course. You don't have to watch all eight hours. This is just me having fun and studying. Uh, the course is going to be much shorter. It's going to be like three hours. And we're building all of this out. I'm just working on it. I'm gonna keep up the good work. Thank you. Is it? How do you say that? Is it Adam? Or it's not Adam. It looks like Adam. <laughs> we're still here very late at night. Abdul. Thanks for hanging out, guys. All right, so we have the video player out of the ID. So this is the RPC UID. And what did I call that here? I need to make sure I'm using the same naming convention, RTC UID. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, so we have our player. Okay, just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. You know, at some point when we're going to have a video and audio track or the screen sharing and regular, I always want to make sure that I remove the current stream. So what I'm going to do here is get the that container, and I'm just going to set the inner, inner HTML, which I just talked about how we shouldn't do that, but... We're going to do it anyways because we're not going to worry about all security measures right now. We're just going to get that and set inner HTML to empty. So we're going to set that to empty div. And I just want to make sure that it's actually called that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I've had to answer this question like a thousand times today because everyone joins at different times. But just because I want to keep it framework agnostic and then I'll 
change it to React. I just want to make sure that when I do come out with a course, you can see it. Because if you know how to do this with vanilla JS, you know how to do it in React. Like it's just going to require more configuration. If you know React, you can you can adjust it. And like I said, I'll probably end up coming out with something anyways. But um, this helps include everybody who wants to see it. So when they read the source code, if they're a Vue.js developer, they're not stuck to it. So he said, my design, yeah, he's still, he codes, he's an insanely good coder, actually. He called himself a front-end developer. His name is Shirir Shuvo, my designer. Um, but he does a lot more than that. He recently got into back-end. I mean, he built the entire back-end and front-end and designed the DevFolio project. That was all him. Uh, I found him because we were working on Mumble, the version one. We're working on an open source project and he just started contributing a lot and we got to know each other because he became a really consistent contributor, which is, you know, hint, hint for anybody looking for a job, contrib contribute to open source. It can really help you. But yeah, I found him that way because he was contributing and I saw he was doing great work. And then eventually I said, you know what, I'm going to hire this guy. So I hired him to work on projects for me. Uh, not really. I mean, I don't have an opinion on Tailwind. I don't, I think it's good if it helps your project. I see someone's asking if I'm a fan of it. It's good if it helps you. Uh, I just think that people that learn Tailwind, that learn how to do front-end development and only know Tailwind, that's kind of a, a risky move. I'd recommend knowing how to, you, you know, code everything in vanilla CSS or at least, a mo you know, be fluent in it and then move to Tailwind. But other than that, I mean, it seems like a good thing, but I don't really care too much because I don't use it. All right, I got to focus on this next part. I keep getting distracted in the chat. Even though I appreciate you guys chatting here, like I said, it keeps me going. I just want to make sure I can do both. So local tracks and get the video source. Yeah, for sure. To have someone help me with that kind of stuff, it's it's insane. Um, it's worth every penny I pay him. Sometimes it seems like I'm, I'm just allocating a budget for something that maybe I don't need, but it speeds up my work to where I can do other things instead of having to focus on design. Because I can, I can theory design. I'm not horrible at it. It might take me a while, but why focus on design when I can focus on functionality and learning different things and then just implement his designs. It saves me a lot of time. Like I was able to do this stream sooner because of him. Otherwise I would have been stuck doing all this. Okay. Wow. That little function took a long time. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, it took longer than I wanted. Okay, let's, let's just make sure it's working. Un, unexpected word. RTC, set role, local tracks. Video stream. Okay, let's just see what part of this is not working if it's in here. Okay, so it's definitely in here. I guess a lesson on debugging right here. Okay, so it's somewhere in these couple of lines. And we almost found the culprit. Okay, local tracks. Did I not set this variable? Gora RTC create microphone and camera tracks. I don't see where the issue is. So it looks like it is that function, which makes no sense, but I'll figure it out. Video tag? Uh, I actually don't need to add in a video tag. Um, Agora's gonna do that for me. So it's actually gonna generate it. So I'll, I'll explain that, I guess. Um, unresolved word, okay. Speaker. Okay. 
can give me a second. Let me try to paste over this and see what's going on. Oh, microphone had an uppercase P. Cool. So here's what's going to happen. When I click... <laughs> now, you're good with the questions. Maybe not so technical because that I have to start explaining, but it's just chatting. That's cool, actually. We said it keeps me company. Um, so when I call this method right here, what I'm actually going to do is create this container. We're going to append the container to the entire video stream player frame, basically. And then this method, when we call play, it's going to grab that container. Well, it's going to grab this ID value that we have set. And it's actually going to insert a video player into there. So I don't actually have to create that. Hold on, I got to change this playlist. This is horrible. Sounds like a commercial for some a horrible. I don't know. It just sounded bad. <laughs> No, nah, I'm not definitely not gonna get Web three for me, man. That's, I mean, not in the near future. Definitely not my thing. Okay, what the heck? This, is, this was supposed to work. Okay, comment this out again. And I just turned on resolve. <laughs> okay, maybe it's a set client role. Dang it, that's what it was. Okay, set. Client role. So I had two mistakes in here. Yeah, I accidentally turned on resolve. Give me a second. This is going to load up and then I'm going to have to turn it off. Make it async. Oh, did I not do that? Oh, good call. I actually, it didn't even run into that area. But okay, one second. Let me close out. All right, the air is gone. Let's give this a shot. Okay, so you notice this camera icon, how the stream starts right here. Uh, let me actually clear this. Give me a second, I'm gonna move this over so I can reset my settings. Okay, inside of my browser, I can go to security or clear browsing data, site settings. I think it's site settings. Here we go, camera. So I can basically remove this from. So you know how I was just resetting my settings? I apparently did that for StreamYards and that's why it closed me out. I see coding phases here. Yeah, I'm still alive, man. I I don't know, I just dis decided to go for it. We'll see, I don't know how long I'm gonna go for it. Maybe I'll do the full 12 hours again. But I just wanna get the project done. Okay, so let's do this again now that the settings are here. Okay, we start stream, it's gonna ask me for this. I'm gonna allow stream and it should place this in here. And it looks like we have an error. So insert adjacent element, uh, something went wrong here. <laughs> you broke my record. What was your record? I, I did 12 hours before, so I don't know if you've, have you done that? Oh, okay, sorry guys, I wasn't sharing my screen. Um, share screen. There we go. This is Jason. Hi, Jason. Thanks for subscribing and following along. Yeah, I, <laughs> I accidentally closed the, the camera feed. Camera's full screen. Yeah, I just updated it. Five hours. Coding phase. Yeah, I did 12 like a while ago. Naveen says his record is 15 hours. I got to check that out. Okay, so let's see. This is supposed to be before end. And what I need to do is I need to set some styling for the actual feed. 
or for the actual stream because otherwise there's no height or width. Okay, so yeah, it looks like it's working. So what I need to do is I need to go into the video container. So what was this thing called? Let's see. I basically need to find the parent div to it and then set some styling to the actual video feed. Stream container, here we go. Actually stream box, I think this is it. I'm gonna set just 500 pixels just so I can see it just in case percentages don't work. So I just don't wanna have to start debugging that. <laughs> is it posted? Is the stream posted? There's somewhere you can see it. Oh, let me hide this. Okay, so I think I also have to set the size for the video itself. So for the video player. supposed to be a class so in theory there can be multiple streams like video streams so if i'm adding users on which we'll probably add uh, you want to make sure that people can join in so here we go okay cool so we're getting there guys let's check it out uh, i'm going to reset some sizing here so let's just do 100 percent by the way, I'm going to put a quick tweet here. So just kind of let people know that we're streaming. Yeah, if, you, uh, if you're if you on Twitter, follow me there. I just put out the tweet. It's at DennisIV11. That's my Twitter. It's actually linked in the video description. All right, so let's see. Still at 500 pixels. Let's just do this at 100%. So it's going to be of its parent container. Crap. Okay, let's see. Oh, that's supposed to be 100%. It's just 100. Okay, cool. So I'm going to zoom out here. Check it out. That's my feed. Um, I can stop it. I should be able to stop it. So I'll, I'll build that in next. So at this point, again, that sidebar is going to piss me off. Uh, at this point, we're we're able to stream. I want to be able to make it to where we can toggle the stream on and off. So let's go ahead and start building this in. So I can't toggle it off, or I can't toggle it off. I couldn't even say that. So what I'm going to do here is start building that in. So to toggle the stream off, to turn it off, basically what we have to do is uh, we're going to create another function here. We're actually, no, we're going to call the same function because we're still going to toggle the, let's see, what did I call it? We're going to call the toggle stream function. So in here, we're going to check if we're streaming. If we are, we're going to turn it on. And then if we're not, what I'm going to do here is turn off the stream. So let's see, to do this, there's a couple of functions I need to call. So first of all, I have the local tracks array. So I'm going to go through and turn off the audio and video track. Uh, Naveen is asking if we need to pay for this SDK. It technically is a paid SDK, but here's the thing. Either Agora does not require any card information when you first start. And they also, for video streaming, I think they give you 10,000 free usage minutes each month. So I'll just put it this way. If you're just testing, there's a good chance you're not going to get past that on a demo app. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, and if your app does get past that, you're probably going to be you know, potentially making some money on it anyways. And then if you're doing RTM, which is a signaling, I think you get like, I think it was like 10,000 concurrent users before they even charge you. And even then it's like, they have a really good pricing. So I'd recommend checking it out. Okay. So we're going to loop through local tracks here.
So let's go ahead and increment I. I know somebody's making fun of how I write my loots nowadays. I don't know, I just stick to the old school stuff. So we're gonna go through the local tracks. So we're gonna get each track. So the audio video track, and we're just gonna call stop, which is gonna stop the stream. And then we're gonna call close, which is gonna close out the stream. The second you close out a stream, you cannot reactivate it. You have to create a new stream or a new feed. And then you see the I. Oh, it is I. Okay, I thought I did one. Okay, so we're gonna close it. And we are gonna unpublish that stream. All right, give me a second here. Just thinking. Okay, so we'll just do RTC. RTC or, yeah, RTC client. And then we're going to call the unpublish method. So we're going to officially unpublish the stream. I can't spell unpublish, so unpublish. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to unpublish both the audio and video tracks. So just like we did with the publish method, we're going to take these, put them in an array, and turn them off. Okay, now I think we're good at this point. Let's go ahead and test this out. So I can publish a stream. Let's zoom out a little bit. I can stop it, and I can publish it again. Yep, just CSS, JS, HTML with the SDK. Okay, so here's the thing. I can do this locally. I can publish my stream and I can unpublish it so I can go back and forth. Now, what I want to do next is um, I want to actually broadcast this out to another user. So let's say I join as another user. So right now, well, I guess the last user I set was Hermes. But if I join as Dennis here, so let's go ahead and join this room. See what? Uh, we're going to use a different avatar here. So right here, when I'm in this side of the, or if I'm logged in as this user, I don't see the broadcast. I want to be able to see the broadcast be output here. So I want to fix that. This is really easy. All we have to do is add in an event handler on the other side, on the receiving end. And we're just going to, let's see, we're just going to add an event listener that's going to listen for that and then broadcast that that message out locally too. So at this point, all we did was add our stream. We published it, but no one's listening to it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna add in another function here. This is gonna be an event listener. I'm gonna call this handle user published. Okay, so the first thing I want to do when, I, when someone publishes, I want to subscribe to their stream. And we're just going to do RTC client. And then this is going to be subscribe, not substream. Okay, and we want the user and the media type. Okay. Okay, uh, right now the backend is using the Agora SDK, but when I add in authentication, if I want to add in like message history and stuff, um, speaking of which, I actually need to write a note down. Give me a second. Okay, um, essentially Agora is taking care of all of that signaling in the video, but at some point for authentication, we're just going to probably do Django to upload user images and so on, even though right now I'm only allowing users to use about four different or six different avatars. And I'll display the, I'll present the actual stream here or the, well, I can't think. Uh, I'll demonstrate it again. I don't, whoever was here earlier, we actually 
push this live. We use Ngrok and a bunch of people joined the stream. It was really cool, actually. <laughs> so still, holy S, he's still live. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing with these things sometimes. I just have fun with it. I like to code and it's fun to share it with somebody. Working remote for the last you know, several years, kind of kind of miss hanging out and talking to people. So I enjoy it, even though I don't see everyone. But hey, maybe I can start bringing people on to the stream with, uh, with a new mumble, a new and improved mumble. Okay, so first we want to check if this video player exists. If the player does, we just want to remove it because we don't need it there. So if the player is not equal to null, that means it does exist. Let's remove it and then let's rebuild it again. I am pretty sure there's a better way to do this, but we might as well do it this way. Now for the player, I'm just going to copy this same thing. So we're doing the same exact thing right here. So for this is going to be how the remote user sees our stream. Okay, I gotta stretch a little bit. <laughs> Gary's in here. I don't know what I'm doing with these things. Gary, if you wanna come entertain me, let me know, man. Send me a message on Discord. You know, you made the mistake of, you know, popping your head out and uh, I'm gonna invite you here. So, hey, judge, judge my design, man. You should check out this, uh, this sick layout for this new platform. You know, let me know what it looks like or what you think about it. I can't imagine I'll get less than an A minus. All right. Oh, I can't write document dot get get element by ID. And let's see, at this point, we're just gonna get the video streams div. On the phone at the moment, about to eat dinner, we'll see after, cool. Yeah, let me know, like I said, it, it's, it's fun. Plus you can keep people entertained, you're a funny guy. Not like funny looking, just funny. Looks like Discord is a dark theme. Yeah, I can see that. Kind of looks like it looked like Discord more or looked more like Discord earlier. But now that we've adjusted it. Let's see, we create a player, we select the player, we add it to the DOM and we trigger that player. Okay, that looks good. I also wanna get the audio source. So if media type is equal to audio, user dot audio track. About that for a second. Okay, so we have this function, and essentially what's going to happen is we're going to do the same thing for the remote user as we did for the local user. But in this case, I'm just reading the chat, guys. Uh, after poor Dennis, I guess. <laughs> oh, after poor Dennis, now you have to stay here and do more. Okay, so we have this function, but when do we call this function? So at this point, let's see, I need to add an event listener and I'm gonna add this at the start of the original initiation of, uh, of RTC here. By the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna, I'm, my standing desk doesn't work. I'm just gonna get on my knees and code because my freaking back hurts. All right. So RTC client. And we're just going to call the on method. So this is the event listener. It's going to give us a callback when the user published. 
uh, we're just going to call this function. So handle handle user published. Okay, let's give it a shot. See what I did wrong. Okay. If you all hear an echo, let me know. I think it's echoing right now, but maybe you don't hear it. Oh, I'm just going to turn off my headphone. Let me know if you hear an echo. It'd actually be helpful to me. So let's bring up the remote user. Try this one more time. I might need to do a hard refresh. We'll just use Gary's name here since he was just in the chat. Okay, so basically when I'm when I'm displaying it, it's not something's wrong. It's not broadcasting out the stream, even though I don't see any errors. So no echo? Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's just in my headphones then. If I bring it up here, I'm sure you can probably hear that. I don't know. Anyways, okay. So there's something wrong in this section. Let me turn down my volume because I hear the echo. It's actually bothering me. So on publish, handle user publish. So let's do this. Let's uh, let's console this out. Let's see what's going on here. So console.log. Let's say host has published their stream. Let's just see if I can even see this. Okay, so the function is working. That just means something that the function is not right then. Okay, so someone's asking, please upload it to YouTube. Um, yeah, don't spam, um, but it's going to be published after probably if not, I'll just create a channel for my archives and store stuff like this. If it's entertaining. Um, but I am making a full video. I've said that a bunch, but I understand people are filing or coming in and out of the stream. I'm going to make a full video on this and it's not going to be this long. It's going to be about three to four hours, probably maybe five, but it's going to be polished and you're going to have to go through all this extra, you know, talking and me stressing out here. Okay, let me see what's wrong here. So we got the user container. Is that the right name for it? User container, user.uid. Yeah, that looks good. Um, if the player is not null, we remove it. Then we get the player, call it video-container, ID of user container, RTC. Ah, I found it. Because this is the remote user, we're getting the remote user's UID, not the local user's UID. I mean, this is one of the errors, I guess. All right, let's give it a shot. So user number one starts the stream and user number two sees it, perfect. Now, if I stop the stream, now here's gonna be, there's gonna be an issue here. So if I stop it, it just freezes because the stream was unpublished, but I have no way of handling this locally. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is create another function that we're gonna add an event handler to. And this is gonna be hand called handle user unpublished. Yeah, is that what I wanna call it? Oh, handle user left. So user leaves a stream, which technically is unpublished. And I'll make this an async function. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna throw in the user and all we need to do is just to remove their, uh, just wanna remove that stream from the DOM, that's it. So that way we can re-add it when the user publishes again. No, I'm not using React. Someone's asking. No, I'm definitely going to use React later, but not here. The reason why this is good is because it includes everybody that wants to use this if they're not 
tied to a framework, but at the same time, to those people that don't want to use something like React, this is a perfect testimony to why something like React is so good. It's going to make your life a lot easier. I know you're going to have to go through the learning process if you haven't done that yet, but it's going to help you understand. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't even think right now. It's basically going to help this entire UI, you know, make it a lot easier and uh, just make our code cleaner. So let's see, when the user leaves, I'm still trying to figure out this situation. We're just going to do video underscore stream. And then we're just going to do inner HTML. We're going to set that to blank. Okay, cool. So handle user left. That's all the function does at this point. And what I'm going to do here is add in another event listener. And this one's going to fire off for the remote user. So they're going to subscribe to whenever we unpublish. So right here in toggle stream, when we call the unpublish method, this is when this event or this callback fires off. We're just going to throw in handle user left. Let's try this again. Okay, so I'm going to publish it. I'm going to try to refresh. So we publish our stream. The remote user can see it. And then we stop the stream and see what's going on. Handle user left. Unpublished. Yeah, I mean, that looks. All right. Let me actually try refreshing that again. Okay, user unpublished. Let's see. User left. Video stream .inner HTML. Let's see if I can see this console out because I can't even tell if the Function is even firing. Um, it, oh, here we go. We got an error. Beautiful. Yeah, okay. So it looks like it's not even firing. So let's see. Um, All right, so it looks like I have an error before that. Let me fix it. I'm, just, I'm assuming it's breaking something prior to this. I'm going to bring this into my other screen so you won't see it. Refresh the second browser. Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. Let's see. Let's refresh both. Well, I'm, I'm, I have live server on, so it should automatically refresh. But who knows? Yeah, okay, um, this is a small issue because I, I can see all the code. I can't imagine what's going wrong, but I guess that could be a big issue on its own. Um, let me just think. So, okay, so it didn't get called because I turned it off. User unpublished, that's definitely the event name. Handle user left, I have the function. In the function, I'm consoling that out. Async function. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. So let's see. Oh, here, let me um, first join as a separate user. Pick an, oh, I need to pick an avatar. <laughs> now it's not even streaming. All right, this is when I need to slow down because I'm starting to move too fast and just can't even find a simple issue.
console to feed from the other users, see if there's any data in the transmission. Yeah, I'm doing that right now. So basically where I'm running into the issue is this function right here is not even being called. So that means that, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to console this out. Let's see, so what's happening is, or I guess I don't know what's happening, but user unpublished, it seems like this right here is not working, this event listener. So I'm trying to figure out why that's not working because this event listener should fire off the function. User unpublished. Hold on a second. I, I feel like I, I think I got it. I think what's happening is I'm not unpublishing my stream. Well, no, I am right here. All right, give me a second. I think. Hmm. Sometimes the simple answer is the right one. So I'm trying not to overcomplicate it. I just know it's somewhere out here in front of me. Local tracks. I think I, well, let's see. Here, let's see if this section, if this else condition changes. That actually might be it. So if I start the stream and stop it, no, that's, that's working. Let's just try to completely close out the room and I mean, maybe that's it. It looks like I still have DaVinci Resolve open. Okay, so we're gonna create a new room. We're gonna share this room with another user and I'm just gonna Again, bring this up into the other screen here so you won't see it right now. I just need to see if it's working. So we see both users in the room. Okay, we start our stream and we stop the stream. It's making no sense. All right, let's try this. Let's just get rid of that function. I mean, it, that function should work, but let's just add it right into the into the event handler. Let's just scroll in here. Where's that? Here we go. So just add the function directly in here. So we'll just do. Hold on a second. I have an idea. Is a user supposed to be passed in? Yeah, I mean that looks right. Okay, never mind. Clear cache data. Yeah, I'll do that. I mean, I'm doing the hard refresh and it does not seem like it's, that's what the issue is, but hey, I'll try anything. So It says undefined for the remote user. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Unpublished. Uh, video. Well, no, it's not the DOM. Okay, hold on a second. Let me, I think it. Conditions in the loop are wrong. Uh, what loop? 
Yeah, you're right. That's the only place where it could be. Let's see. It's got to be here somewhere then because there's no reason why this event handler shouldn't fire off. So let's see. Toggle, else condition. <laughs> I had this matched up on zero, so we never close a stream. That's why. Right? Yeah. That's it. It was a damn loop. All right. Let's see if I uh, to eat my words now because this should work. Oh, um, before I do that, though, I need a call. Good call, by the way. Who was this? Is it Darius? Darius with a Z. Yeah, you, you pointed it out. See what I mean? Like, it's sometimes it's the easy answer. And we're just going to do handle user left. I think that was a function name. Okay, so we start the stream. Good. Start it again. We're good. Look at that. Sometimes you just have to sit and enjoy it. Don't code for a little bit. All right, I'm going to go get some water, guys. Uh, I'll be back in like three minutes, maybe five. I'm going to take a small break. I need to use the restroom and then reload up here. Get my third cup of water and probably another cup of coffee. I'll, uh, I'll keep going, though. We're still going to – we're going to add in a lot more. We're going to do screen sharing, uh, muting of the camera, mic, and and uh, or muting of the camera and mic. And then uh, we'll do screen sharing, and then we'll just – oh, I also want to make sure that – only the host can share their screen. So we're not allowing everybody to, uh, <laughs> someone says nice debugging skills. I can't tell if you're trolling or if that was, you actually thought that was good. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to make it to where only the host sees these controls because at this point it's a broadcast. So only, only the, the host can do it. And unless somebody can, oh. I'm reading, I'm trying to read the chat anyways. Yeah. I'm just going to stop talking. I'm too tired. I'll be back in a minute. Drink water. Chemistry says it will reduce your concentration. So you mean make it? It'll make it worse. I highly doubt that.
All right, I'm going to get rid of the chair because my back is starting to kill me. I got a pillow. So I'm going to stand on my knees because my standing desk is not working with the camera. Otherwise, I won't be able to do the face cam. I'll try to change the focus back here. Yeah, I think that's good. Just make sure it's not on that thing. All right. So what was the last thing? I'm going to write this down because my memory is not good right now. Um, hose controls. So we're going to do controls only for the host. So we don't want remote users. <laughs> Legend is back, Naveen. Um, so host controls only, I guess that's the way I'm going to say it. And then we want to do uh, audio and camera controls. So we want to basically be able to toggle this. Oh, and then screen sharing. I think those are the final three things. And again, we could do some kind of back end later for authentication and all that. I don't know. We'll see how long this takes. Oh, what's up, Hermes? He's back in the chat. Yeah, I'm a, I'm on a pillow now. I have to be on my knees because my, my back is killing me and my bladder sitting in that position is just not good. I'm trying to drink more water. Okay, so screen share. All right, cool. Um, I think we're ready to go. So the first thing I want to do is let's eliminate the let's eliminate this right here for a remote user. So I don't want to do this. At some point, I need to establish a host. I need to figure this out. How did I do this before? Okay. So basically, when a user first loads up a site, they're going to be a host. So the first person in the room is always going to be the host because they created it. Um, and then later on, again, with the back end, you can easily change that. So let's go into this top section. So when we first load up the site and we set the channel attributes, for any reason, if people need to know who the host is, I think what we can do is add in, in this, or add that in in the try catch here. So basically, once the room name is set, let's go ahead and set a host ID. We'll just do host ID and this is going to be true. So if we're the ones that are setting the attribute, actually, hold on. Let me think. No, that's not how I want to do it. Um, so if the UID is equal. To, okay. I need to slow down. Got it. Okay. We'll go one step above here. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to set the host ID. And this is going to be host ID attribute value. We want to set the host and then we want to make sure all the other users don't get the actual stream. So at some point, we want to check if our UID is equal to the host. So that's what I was trying to do here. So we'll just do... Uh, host ID, and we're going to say if it is equal to it, well, then we're the host. So we'll just do host is equal to true. So we're going to update the value right here. So let's do this. Let's set the host. So host by default is going to be false. We're going to check that if our UID is a host, host is true. Let's open this if condition. Oh, okay, so that's the problem here. Um, Here we go. Okay, this is what it was. In that catch, remember that the first user is the one that's going to set all these attributes. This is where, because I was trying to remember what my thinking was before. Uh, at this point, what I want to do is set the host ID to our UID right here. So we'll just do host underscore ID. And that's going to be equal to our UID. So only the first user in the in the room will be able to create this. So we are now the host. And then we're going to set host to true. Host is equal to true. Now, if someone else joins, they're going to get the channel attributes. And then they're going to check if they're the host, which they're not. But we're just going to run a check and confirm this. 
So we're going to say host ID, and this is going to be equal to attributes dot host underscore ID, which we just set right here. So this is just in the other, in the next condition. So host ID, we're going to get that, and then we're going to get the value. Okay, so we're going to query the host ID, and then we're going to check if RUID is the host ID. If we are, then we set that to true. Why does this look funny? Does that look weird to everyone? Oh, shoot, a donation. Thank you. Can I get early access? <laughs> oh, hold on a second. As in what? <laughs> oh, okay. I thought, you, I thought this was a, I thought you donated and then trolled me. I mean, you kind of did, but that's funny. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to, I don't know exactly what the plan is. I have no idea what we're even going to do with this. This could just be a tutorial or it could be the new mumble. I have no idea. So I'll, I don't know, I guess keep a, keep an eye out for it. And anybody that comes early, will have early access. So why are there these two lines under here? So host ID is equal to, so we have the host already set. So it's not like a, oh no, we didn't. So we need to set that actually. Host ID, and we're just gonna leave it like that. So let's actually not set this to true. So we'll just do host and host ID. That was, that's why it's funny. So the host ID, we're gonna query that, and then we're gonna check it for the host and that's it. Okay, so if we are the host, or if we're not the host, and what I'm gonna do is document that get element by ID, and there's other ways to do this. Again, this is where React would be absolutely fantastic. But all we're gonna do is get the controls. Let's see what I call those. We have stream stream container, stream actions. Uh, let's just do this. Let's add an ID instead of resetting, it'll do a stream underscore controls. We'll get the stream controls and we'll just do dot style dot display. And that's going to be none. I guess we could remove it, but whatever. Well, I mean, because at, at some point I do want users to have the ability to uh, to actually have some controls. They should be able to like mute, you know, the mic or something like that. I don't know. I just feel like at this point I don't want to get rid of it. All right. So let's try this out. Um, we're going to refresh it. Do I not save it? Hold on. No, no, no. Okay. I got this wrong. So we're going to do display block. That's what's going to happen. So if we're the host, we're going to do display block. If we're not the host, well, then I'm just going to go ahead and get this stream controls div. What was the other one called? Stream action. So I want to make sure to set right here. Stream actions. I guess I'll just set it somewhere right here next to stream box. For the style, we'll do display none. All right, so right now nobody has controls, but I think that might just because I might be because I need to refresh it. Okay, so we're going to create a room. Okay, for some reason, oh, okay, that's what it was. So we want to set that to true. And then also, if we, are, if we are the host down here, we want to set that to true too. That's what it was. Okay, so I'm going to join as another user, move this to the left and right. I don't know why this user has controls. And also what happened to the styling. Streamer to style display block. Um, stream controls. Let's just remove this all together and see what's going on.
All I'm trying to do is set display to none. I don't know why it's giving me an issue. Yeah. Um, I must have. So someone's saying start streaming first. That's not the point. The point is that uh, the the control shouldn't show for remote users in general. I don't know why. I, maybe I added stream controls somewhere else. Let's see. Control F. Um, oh, that's why. Okay. Because I'm doing display block, and I think the original code said display flex. So basically, remove the flex box. I think that was flex. Yeah. Okay. Let's restart. So I want to see controls, and I don't see them for now. Display, display flex, not fix. Let's see, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, so now okay, let's see. So how the hell does a remote user have it? Now it's display flex. Display number. Yeah, yeah. So okay, okay, those are old messages. Um If UID is equal to host ID, okay, so host ID. Just console this out real quick. Let's just see. Our RID should not be the same as the host ID. Okay, I, I think I see what's happening. So we have an error, I think, being thrown somewhere here, host ID. And what's happening is it's throwing it to the catch, and basically it's making if UID is not host ID. Well, either way, this one should be flex. Um, no, I, I think I got it. Uh, let's see. I think what's happening is we're throwing an error. And let's just do this. Let's just, if there is an error, I want to console it out. I just want to confirm that this theory is what I think it is. And let's also console out the attributes. Got it. Okay. Fully found it. I keep forgetting that you're supposed to, and I don't like that they have to do that. We have to throw in the host ID here. That's why. It's basically saying here, get this list of attributes and then, you know, then get them again. Like that's, that's that part I don't get. Okay. We're going to create a room and we're going to do Dennis. Okay. The room name is going to be test room. Okay. So we're the host. Let's change up the name. I don't know why that matters, but there we go. Boom. So um, this person's the host, and this person is not. This person has the controls, the host does, and this person does not. So I can stream. So if you're the viewer, you're just going to see this right here. You're not going to see any controls. But if you're the host, you see full controls, and we're able to toggle this for the remote user on and off. Look at that. All right. I know it looks funny that I'm low. I'm just trying to squat now. All right, so we did that. Now what I want to do is actually add in some controls for the camera and mic. Let's do this. Mm. 
Okay, so these two functions are actually gonna be the same. I'm just gonna add in some event handlers. This is gonna be somewhere at the bottom right here. Um, I'm gonna do toggle mic. Let's do our camera first. Because you won't be able to see the mic, so we'll do. All right, so to toggle the camera, all I'm going to do is check the local video tracks. So if local tracks and specifically the video tracks, so video tracks are on index one. So if the local tracks are muted, they're currently muted, then we want to go ahead and unmute them. So we'll just do local tracks one, why image flipped on the other side in browser, what image? I accidentally turned on OBS. Um, oh, I think you're referring to th this output right here. I'm not exactly sure, honestly. That's something I haven't looked into. I guess I should look into it. I'll, I'll check it out. I, I remember actually going over something like this, but yeah, I'm sure you can even control that. Like most platforms, you can usually take care of that. All right, let me try sitting for a while now. Okay, so we're just gonna do set muted, and this is gonna be false. So that means we're gonna unmute, or I guess turn on the camera. Muted goes for video and audio tracks. So we're gonna set that to false, and then let's see, I think what I wanna do is set this to active. So we're just gonna do e.target. Style, and we're gonna set the background color. Actually, hold on. I think I'm just going to add in a class name. I have class listing here somewhere. Nah, okay, it's not in here, whatever. Class list dot add. And I think it's just active like that. And then we could do else. And then we're just going to invert the, invert it. <laughs> My voice just squeaked. I guess I'm going through puberty. <laughs> invert it. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we can remove this class. And I think that'll do it. Okay, now we want to toggle it. So this is going to be the camera button. Add event listener. Yeah, My voice is totally cracking. I need to figure this out because basically what happens is when I'm refreshing the way that I have the host uh, activated, it's actually basically resetting the host settings. So the host has to keep re-logging in or recreating a room. And I, that's not good. I just need to fix up how I do that. And also from this room, I keep sending the user to the join page and not the create page. So let's see, this should be create. I think of a quick fix for that host issue. Okay, create room. I feel like maybe I should have an avatar just selected by default. So the reason, the reason you, is you were using font cam. Okay, so we have to start the stream. Okay, so there we go. Um, camera is toggled on and off. Now, there's a slight issue with this. For some reason, I, the way I have this set up, we need to make sure that that toggle stays. But here we go. So if I do this with a remote user, and we'll, we will focus on that later. Um, actually, here, let's just finish this up. Remove active. So I just want to see what this looks like for a remote user. Okay. 
Okay, so if I turn the camera off, it should basically just, yeah, just mute it. I mean, I, I can change the state to say like camera is currently off. Here, let's change this hover. I think it's on hover that, that that's set right there. So that's just a small thing, but there are a few bugs in here that are kind of bothering me. Okay, stream actions. All right, we're not gonna worry about that for now. Okay, so what I wanna do next then is do the toggle the, the mic. And the unfortunate thing is you won't be able to hear anything, but you'll know it's there, I guess. Um, I'll just try to see if there's an issue. Actually, I guess I can listen for the echo. So let's just do this. We'll just change this one to toggle uh, toggle mic. And we'll just set this to zero. So this is literally all we have to do for the mic. The audio track and mic is an index zero. So we just need to simply do that and that's it. Um, again, this is, Frustrating because I have to keep resetting the room. I to care about the room names now. Okay, let's try this. Are we learning Python? No, definitely not Python right now. Okay, I'm gonna start the stream and I need to give this to another user real quick so I can hear the echo. Okay, so I hear an echo. Now when I mute it, it should be muted. Let's see. Apparently it's not muting it. And oh, did I not add the event listener to the to the button? Is that what happened? Toggle mic. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this host thing's starting to bother me. Okay, let's just create a new room. Let's just start adding. I'm too tired to care about the names. All right. Um, share it. Let's just start streaming here. So if a user joins while the stream, so let's like start at the lobby. Um, let's go to our lobby here so we can see that there's a stream. We can join. So if the user's already streaming, the stream will just start. And hmm. the muting of the mic is still not working, so I need to toggle mic. So let's see if local track is muted, set muted to false, activate it. Did I call it mic button? Maybe it's just not even toggling it. <laughs> yeah, add event listener, thank you. And a bus just joined, I think. On click. Okay, now it's working. I don't hear an echo. Yeah, I added the event listener. There should be, yeah, everyone's, <laughs> I'm just not paying attention. All right, so we can start and stop a stream. We can also mute and unmute our mic. For some reason, 
The mic is all right. I, I might not focus too much on this bug because this would be better in the tutorial itself. But um, for some reason, this is also meeting the camera. So okay, when I start this, it's good. And then when I mute the mic, the mic. Oh, that's why I think. Or I think. Um, my brain's not working. Think, think, think. If local track zero, that's the audio track. Go ahead and so mute it to true or false. It almost seems like the video track is also an index one, which that shouldn't be the case. All right, well, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna fix the mic issue. I'm going to write these down so I don't forget. And then I'm going to fix the uh, senior or the host issue. So basically when I refresh, our host just kind of gets kicked. And then they're a viewer now. E mm. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Got it. E is not defined. Good call. The event. Damn. I freaking love having. Can you, <laughs> can you imagine just coding and always having someone looking over your shoulder helping you with this kind of stuff? Be awesome. Okay, we should be able to. Now the audio is not working. Okay, hold on a second. What I do here? Um, e and then e right there. E dot target dot class list. Is it list? It should be list. Maybe that's why that wasn't working. I think it's supposed to be list. E is not defined. Let's see. Might be because of this issue. There we go. Well, no, damn it. Both value is zero. Why? Um, that's a good question. Let's see where. Okay, so these are zero because zero is the index of where the audio track is. Okay, let's see this. What am I doing wrong with class list? So basically, that has to be zero. It's just saying which one that I'm getting. I feel like I'm just using class list wrong. Uh, let's just console out E, I guess. Hold on, let's see. Add event listener, toggle mic. Mic button. The answer soon. Just console E and see. See if it's even this function. I mean, it is a function. It is getting muted. It's just turning off the video stream. I actually have a theory on what it could be now. Let's just try refreshing completely. Do a hard refresh. I don't see any errors. If I didn't know any better, I think toggle mic is not even being triggered. So mic button. Uh, 
add event listener, click. I'm going to open it up in another browser just so I can see this. Yeah, the funny thing is, is I don't even think that event handler is working for some reason. Cannot read property of undefined. Okay, here we go. Now we have an issue. Console.log error. Yeah, that's fine. That's not the same issue, though. Well, here's the thing. Again, it's kind of like that whole event handler thing, which we completely had run. I don't even remember what that issue was, actually. But uh, toggle mic is not even being triggered. So when we click on it, nothing happens. The mic button, not a, 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 a... Let's just start with this. Yep. And we'll just do console dot log okay i just want to see that it's even querying that like okay mic button um it's there so when we click on it i just wanted to say on toggle mic we're just gonna console this out right here nothing's wrong with the function so we just want to say Mike was toggled. Mike was toggled, Mike. So it does work partially. All right, let's have someone join the stream. Should do this on the other side. Okay. Now, okay, so the mic is being muted. All right, so the issue is completely not with this button then. Um, I have something set up elsewhere. I'm assuming what's happening here was kind of my theory. And I'll have to fix this later, but I'm assuming what's happening is that here, somewhere inside of these event listeners, I think I'm just repla replacing that inner HTML somewhere. Is a mic button class ready? Um, it's an ID, but I, I figured that out. It is working. It's just the fact that it's not presenting the stream. So let's just let's just move ahead and go to video streaming. Uh, video streaming is the last thing I have to do before I, we need to go to bug fixes. That's pretty much it for the project we're just gonna finish that up and then i'll see what the heck i'm gonna do next all right so let's see i don't want to do video streams all right not video streams um video share or screen sharing not video streams just give me a few minutes to think about it um basically what i'm gonna do here is when we toggle toggle a stream we're going to check another condition and we're going to see if we're sharing the screen and depending on what we're sharing, whether it's the video feed or the screen, we're going to change what we toggle. Where do I want to put this though? Let's 
44 people are still watching. Wow. I figured everyone would have left by now. No need for that anymore. Okay. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create another another function and I'm gonna call it toggle screen share. And we're just gonna trigger it when a screen share button is clicked and then we'll worry about the positioning of the actual item and so on. Boss, you've been watching the whole time? Oh, okay, so the the whole night. Damn. You have code for sharing screen. Um, I, I think I know how to implement it. Are you talking about with Agora? How did you do that? Actually, I'm actually curious, let me know. Um, the screen sharing is actually very easy. So basically what happens is you have this function right here to create the the camera and microphone tracks. Now, all you have to do is call a function called create screen tracks or something like that. Let's see, let's create screen video tracks and that's it. That's literally all you have to do. Now, the only thing you have to change up is the logic on what's sharing at what time. Um, someone's saying they're seeing mistakes again at, at event. Listen, okay, let me, let's look at that one more time. Let's see, maybe add event listener. I cannot see anything. You see something wrong here? I'll, I'll keep watching the chat. Oh, it's for WebRTC. All right. Hey, you shared your email, I think, right? I didn't catch the GitHub because we had the issue resolved by then. If you can, can you email me? Is it Havan? I don't know how to pronounce that. I, I want to talk to you about that, actually. That'd be really cool. Because I'm actually going to be doing some stuff. Oh, an issue right here. That's what you meant. Um, I'm actually do, I'm going to be, I'm going to be putting out a couple of videos on WebRTC, and I would love to see what you have. That would be really cool. I'd love to ask some questions. So that, is this a Gmail? Okay, let me write this down. I guess I have a recording of this. So as long as I put that on the screen. Is that a, yeah, is that a Gmail or what is it? Or is that was that the GitHub? If that's a GitHub re, uh, username, I'll I'll find that too. So I just wrote that down. So as long as I have that, if you're down for sharing something there, that'd be awesome. Okay, so yeah, in the event listener, I'm gonna fix up this thing right here. So yeah, sorry guys, my brain is not working. I, I feel like I have somewhat of an excuse to make these mistakes. Okay, let's see. So it's a screen button, screen and stream. That, that seems kind of risky to have that name because they look exactly the same. All right, for toggle screen share, let's do this. Here we go. I actually realize the logic is pretty easy here. So if we are not, shoot, did I click control Z? All right, I didn't do undo too much. So if we're not currently sharing, we want to share the screen. So if sharing screen, then what we want to do is quickly change sharing screen to, hold on a second. If this is true, then we want to turn it off. So basically we want to turn on the, the video stream. And then all the logic is going to go into the else condition. Else, that means we're currently in a video stream and we, we want to share our screen. So we're going to do sharing screen is equal to true. So the default value is going to be false. Let's move that over. And let me know if my face cam ever blocks the code. I want to, it's kind of hard for me to watch that. So basically we have somewhere here, sharing screen, so that's false. This is what we're gonna use, okay. So if it's false, we're gonna set it to true. And then what I wanna do here is first 
change the button here. So we're going to do document dot get element by ID. Um, this is going to be the stream or screen. BTN. The first thing I want to do is change the inner text. And this is going to say share screen. So basically, we want to change the text button. And if we're trying to invert it, then what we're going to do is change this to share or share camera. And we'll just vice versa there. So we're just going to flip it back on click the old way of it. If an ad event listener with click is preferred way. Okay, so you guys are having a conversation between yourselves. I'm trying to, that, that's the problem with these bugs is I have a hard time letting them go. If like I see it, it just it just keeps coming back to me and I just can't move on. So I need to do a better job of just forgetting about them and dealing with them later. Okay, so local screen tracks. All we're going to do is go ahead and call Agora RTC. Uh, create screen and video track. So it's pretty much the same thing. So it's going to throw that in there, except for in this case, I don't think we're going to get the audio track. It's going to be a little bit different. So we're going to get that value. Then what I want to do is also make sure to reset the current video feed that's in there. I want to make sure to clear it. So we're going to do document dot get element by ID and we're going to do video underscore stream dot inner HTML. And we're going to set that to an empty string. Then we're going to get our player here, so new player. And at this point, let's see, for, I guess we're going to do the same thing that we did here. So we're going to check if this player exists. If it does, then we're just going to remove it. So let's just grab all of this functionality. We're going to check if it exists. If it does, we're going to clear it and then we're going to recreate it. And then we're going to grab it and we're going to append it to the DOM. Now, at this point, instead of presenting the local audio and video tracks, what we're going to do is let's see. I think we're going to call local screen tracks. Local screen screen track so we're going to play it in our current stream and then what i want to do is go ahead and unpublish so you can't publish two feeds at once so what we want to do is actually unpublish the rtc client or not the rtc client but the the video feed so we're going to do dot unpublish so you need to do this well i guess it's not a tutorial i keep forgetting that i don't know why i'm talking like that and we're just going to unpublish the local tracks. This is going to be the video stream. So we're going to do zero. And we're going to do one. Okay, so we're going to unpublish those. And then what we're going to do next is publish the local tracks, the local screen tracks. In this case, we're just going to throw it in like that because there's not, you don't have two audio tracks, you have just the one. All right. <clears throat> we're going to publish it. And let's see in here we want to change the button text if screen sharing is false document like element by id we want to change the text well at this point let's just do this if we are currently streaming and we toggle the same button uh yeah this will be posted live just responding to the chat uh what i want to do here is toggle toggle the video share was that what i called it Text that I call that function. Toggle video share, yeah. So essentially, we can toggle the video stream by first starting a stream or by clicking that the um, the screen button, basically. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out what that looks like. I see Tadas is uh, in the chat. <laughs> He's back. You want to join me? You can always join me, man. All right. Um, okay, so we want to toggle that. Then I want to change the button. So the button's good. Let's just move this down here. I feel like it'd be better to have like a hierarchy here. And I also want to unpublish the 
the um shit where did i do that no i didn't do this in the right area dang i i, I accidentally touched the wrong code give me a second let me fix this toggle stream Now that should be left alone like that. Toggle video share, that's good. And then so we're toggling the video share. We're gonna change the button here. Oh, okay, here, this is where I wanna unpublish it. So we wanna do a wait, and then we'll just do RTC client dot unpublish. And at this point, we're just gonna unpublish the local screen tracks because if screen, sharing screen is true, we that, that means that we've published them and we wanna just change that. <laughs> so that was the saying, I'll join tomorrow morning if you're gonna keep doing that. Yeah, I don't know, man. I thought about doing a 24 hour stream. I don't know, I feel like crap today actually. I started feeling like crap like two hours ago. I'm gonna sit for now. Okay, so we're just gonna unpublish it. I think that's it. Try it. No errors. I'm going to recreate a room. Start stream. Okay, so here's the screen sharing button. That didn't work. Okay, create screen and audio track is not a function create screen and video yeah that seems odd why did i call it like that create screen video track yeah i just create screen and screen video yeah i was gonna say and doesn't look right that doesn't make sense because i'm not trying to produce a video track too i'm trying to create a screen video track not my camera feed <laughs> get some food i had a, i had a little bit of food earlier actually so let me the made me a, a sandwich so I can wolf down real quick. And I don't know, I, I'm, I'm gonna do a 24 hour stream. My ego won't let me not do it because I said I'm gonna do it one day and I'm gonna do it, but I don't know if it's gonna be today because I am just not feeling it right now. Okay, so there's a couple of issues here. Cannot read properties of undefined. I know I, I, I missed. I accidentally pasted some code into the wrong place and now I might have screwed a few things up. Console, okay, that's fine. That, that error is done. I, that's me consoling that out. Okay, so start stream. Perfect, look at that. Okay, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna prompt me and it's gonna ask me what screen do you wanna share? It's kind of like the initial toggle. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna share the right side. So I'm gonna throw my code in there. And I'm gonna say this one. So let's share it. I don't know why it's not sharing it. It thinks it's sharing it. All right, we're almost there. User ID. Okay, so. Okay, no worries. That was a small issue. Let me take care of that. It's a, it's a happy little mistake, just like, a, was it Bob Ross that used to say that? It's a happy little accident. I did that on purpose so you guys can see. All right, um, so the issue was here. So I try to get the user ID. Uh, I think what I'm doing, I'm getting the wrong ID. What did the error say? Toggle screen share in the player. Yeah, so when we're creating the player, User, you okay? I see what's going on. So this is my local UID. That's what I'm trying to get. In this case, we're gonna do RTC UID. I think that's what, yeah, I was supposed to be like that. In fact, I need to make sure that I'm using the right one. Oh, maybe that's even why my issue earlier was occurring. I don't know. Let me try checking that. All right, let's try it again. Move the code over. Let's close it out. Still got 
an issue. Okay, so cannot read properties of play. Did I? RTC UID. All right, one step closer, we'll figure it out. RTC UID, is that what I called it even? Yeah, uh, okay, generate the ID. Okay, what I do it, what I call it for the original? Toggle video share. So I mean, it looks like I'm doing the same thing. Let me just try to redo this. Let's see. It's partially working. It's the stream is actually being published. Um, the only issue is the ending to the DOM. Okay, so we build a player. We get the RTC UID. Okay, I think I see a slight issue here, and it could be this section because I might be using the wrong UID. So in the video share, it uses the RTC UID. What, maybe a wait before? Yeah, probably. Did I not do that? Someone says maybe you should wait before. That actually could be the thing. Let's see. So we await right here. Yep, there you go. You're freaking awesome. That's that's really helpful. Player has already been defined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move that. Right. Oh, here, let's, uh, I think I need to broadcast a stream first. Let's try that. Share camera. Oh, share screen. Oh, let's go to line 297. See if he's referring to the same issue. Cannot access player before initialization. Okay, let oh yeah, I removed the Ron. You guys are probably thinking I'm a joke now at this point. I'm <laughs> uh. Cannot read properties of undefined toggle screen share. What is under? Hold on a second. That's why. Only a video track. I don't have to specify a video track. Got it. So 
Oh, I guess here, let's uh, let's do this um, share camera. So I can turn the camera back on. I can share the screen in this case. Let me share this screen. There you go. You can see the other side. Just got to take a minute and appreciate it. Ah. <sighs> Who wants to, you guys want to see a demo or, I mean, who's, who even knows what this is? <laughs> we could go through the project again. I mean, I can kind of recap it or here, let me fix up what, what I need to fix up a few things. So this sidebar, that color, I don't know why I can't get it. And so basically this background color, I don't like the fact that I have to wait for um, oh by the way i gotta make sure that the screen share is shared to both users so let's try this and that's we haven't, we haven't passed all tests yet okay so i'm gonna start streaming mute the mic share the screen Boom, now I'm able to broadcast my screen share. So this is how this can be, you know, the new version of Twitch. I mean, that's a bold statement. I'm just kind of testing something out, but this is where as developers, a platform dedicated to streaming publicly just for developers can be awesome. Specifically bringing on public help if you're working on something, sharing your screen, that sort of thing. Maybe even adding whiteboarding into this would be kind of cool, but, uh, there's a few bugs in here. Uh, the first one is I, I want to fix that dang chat, and then I want to see if I can fix the host issue. And uh, if anybody wants this, you know, like I said, have has questions about the final product, I can do a final demo on it. I don't think I'm going to go 12 hours today. I don't know if I can do it. How, how long are we? How long have we been streaming? Ten, 10 hours. I mean, two hours left, basically. I might take a break and then I'll let everyone know if anything, I might just finish up with like a Q&A if anyone wants to just talk about the project, set min height on it. On what exactly the, the video frame? I mean, it's like this because I'm zoomed in. If I zoom out, the site is going to be, it's going to look a lot better. You, you guys always see the funny, funky version of the site. Okay, let me finish this part up here. Uh, I need to figure out what the heck is going on with this sidebar. Room video. So, because that color, I mean, it, it just feels weird that it's that color. If it had like at least that same color of a chat, it would, it would look, oh, the height. I think you're, I think someone said, yeah, I said a min height. That's probably it. Dang. Yeah, I think it is because I kept trying to set the color. I kept trying to set the HTML. And every time I did, or not the HTML, the, the background color, and I knew it was the same hex, and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. So let's find that dang container now. And I think it was to, I guess we should put out the room title. I mean, that, I got to do this in another stream. Someone said, what about screen sharing and camera? Yeah, that you can do that. I mean, th these are all things that I, I, I'll probably add, like I said, I'm, to actually build this out in a, a single stream, I'm going to be streaming for hours. I mean, I can make this, I can work on a little bit more and then, you know, basically just work on it daily and stream. I don't know if you all want to see that, but like I said, it's, yeah, anyways, let's see. Stream actions. Now, okay, so let's minimize a few things. This is the room. I almost like got the hiccups. So this is the room here. Uh, the container, members container. I don't need this. This person space stream container. I don't need that. Messages container. I just doing one hundred percent soon. Do 
Right. Um, okay, so that was correct. With height, let's see. Um, is, it's not going to be, we could do, I don't know why 100% isn't working. It should work. I think we can just try maybe doing a height of 100 view per height. Because the message bar is a fixed element. Yeah, I'm going to try doing that. I think viewport height. There we go. Okay, that looks better. Now, oh, okay, I just scrolled. Let's try refreshing that again. All right, we have an issue with uh, the chat, the 100 viewpoint height, 100% is relative to the container. Yeah, I, I get that, but can't we, I mean, what's the parent container? What Room container, should we, yeah. what's room container set to? Yeah, I, I can, okay, I, I think I see what's going on here. Um, I see why Shuvo did that. Shuvo, yeah. I just mentioned Shuvo, Shuvo's name like everyone knows him, but I guess a lot, at this point a lot of people do. Basically what's happening is if we set it to 100 viewport height, it's going to mess with our fixed header bar. Yeah. See those elements hiding back there? Like if I refresh it. Um, let me try to min height. I don't know. I just want it to be seen for now. Yeah, okay. I'll leave it. I'll, I'll just get rid of it for now. And uh, we'll figure something else out later. Yeah, because that's going to throw issues or throw cause issues. What I could do is just set the background color to the entire body like this and then just change the background color to this section. Yeah, you see someone from Bethel Tech here. Awesome. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I did a I did a talk there one time. Um Let's try this right here with the, let's try this method. And you probably set that to the messages container, right? All right, we're just gonna set height. Yeah, it's a small issue. I can, like I said, if this doesn't work right now, I'll fix it later, I'll do that in another stream. Yeah, not working. It's fine. We'll we'll get that later. So the bigger issue. So the bigger issue is the host. If anyone has questions, by the way, I can show the final product. We can kind of go through that. I know a lot of people have joined and left since then. I think I'm going to be done, but I'm going to try to fix this host issue and try to figure out why when I'm a host and I do this and I refresh. So when I'm a host, I get the controls. When I refresh it, it goes away. So I, I have some theories, but yeah. Someone's asking, are you going to make a video afterwards talk about technologies for this project? Yeah, I mean, I'm doing a full tutorial on this and this isn't even a tutorial. This is just me streaming and talking, but uh, yeah, definitely I'll cover all those. Um, let's see, let's try to, I mean, that's, yeah, that's the last part of the actual project. Like the, the whole thing is functional. I guess I can change that back button so it goes back to a specific page, but all right. Let's see the room. Um, I'm literally working on the tutorial like now, so probably the next like week 
or two or three. I mean, it depends how long it's going to fill me, but I basically have the layout for it. And this is nice to be able to practice too. But yeah, we'll be soon. All right. Um, let's see. We have a host. If we are. I guess a host ID can be stored in like session storage. So that way when the host refreshes, they're going to know they're the host. But then anybody can, in theory, just change that value. If I store the UI, the user's ID, hey, I got an idea. I can store the user ID. So when it's refer, okay, here we go. Got it. Solved it. Uh, all right. Um, basically, what happens is, and I see a question here. Let me just answer this. Do you have any tips out of getting out of tutorial hall? I'm a back-end developer, but front-end is my strong suit. I know getting out of tutorial hall, you got to do projects. Like, I don't know. I mean, I remember when I started, I built a few projects and that was like just learning Python. I just built a couple of games. I built maybe like four or five. Worked on like two projects with Django or one actually from Bucky Roberts. That's actually how I learned it was on YouTube. And then just started working on a real project. I mean, I know that's that's harder because, or harder to do than, or easier said than done, but I had an application that I was actually able to implement it to. But I would say find something like this. Like if you wanna build something, don't follow a tutorial. I mean, you can take tips from this, but find your own project that you wanna work on. It doesn't have to be something that you're gonna necessarily sell or make money with. Do something like that. And I promise you, you will learn more than you ever imagined because it's gonna teach you how to do research the right way for a purpose. Okay, so let's do this. Session storage. Um, so we're first gonna get the ID from our session storage. So we're gonna do RPM, so real-time messaging UID. And if it's not there, all we're gonna do is simply create it. So we're gonna ask a question. So this way, when a user refreshes, they don't get a new ID generated. It's just gonna take their current UID. Might as well do that. I don't, there's no reason to create a new UID here. So we can store it. So if this is null, let's just also throw in an or operator and we'll just do or UID is equal to undefined just in case. Maybe some browsers output it differently. Then we generate a new UID. There we go. And then uh, once we do that, So yeah, okay, we're gonna set the new UID. So we only set it in this section. Yeah, and then we'll just set add it to the session storage. Session storage dot set item. RPM UID. I should solve it. All right, let's create a new room. Yeah, did I really? Session storage, yeah, good, good call. Appreciate that, that helps a lot actually. Get item. Session storage dot get item. No, I don't think so, it's get, not get, it's get item. Let's try it, I guess we'll see. I think what you're referring to is this and you have to do get item. I could be wrong, I don't know but that's how I've done it. All right, we're gonna select our avatar. We're the host, and if I do a refresh, still the host, I can do Control Shift R, still the host, awesome. All right, so that solves that issue. Um, we still have the mic issue. The mic and sidebar issue.
Anyone have any questions? I mean, we can chat a little bit. I need to, like, I need to, I might, I, I wouldn't mind going the full 12 hours. So maybe if we just, if I can take my brain off of this, I can find this, the, the solution to that problem. That's usually how it works in a lot of cases where you'll get stuck on an issue. And sometimes just stepping away is what solves it. Yeah, I guess I can technically just turn off my feed here. Just do screen share. Um, I, I don't want to test the live thing. Whoever was here earlier, um, let's do that. Whoever was here earlier, basically people started messing with that token and all that. And it was kind of fun though. Like we, we had like 20 people in the chat or in the stream at one point, people were joining from the lobby. I think, uh, Havan, is it, how do you pronounce the name? Yeah, I think it's Havan. Okay, Abdul saying. Yeah, I mean, I, I try that. I don't, I don't know if that's the issue. Let me try that min height. Let me see what's going on because sometimes I feel like if I just adjust a little bit of it, that can kind of help. So let's just do. Let's just do height in general. Let's just set something, and I just want to. So height, we're gonna do two hundred pixels. Okay, so it's there. Well, let's get rid of the messages. Yeah, so it's there. Um, I mean, we could do a min height. It's just a very hacky fix. I don't like it because if screen sizes change, I look good. Because yeah, I need to ask Shuva about this. You added. Let's see, what did I add here? Where did I add that? Abdul, let's see. I mean, let's try 800 pixels. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's not the best solution. All right, I'm gonna take a small break here. Oh, I guess we can go back to the stream. Anyone have any questions for now or the same issue, sidebar mic issue. The mic issue confused the hell out of me. All right. Yeah, I don't want to waste anyone's time if there's if there's nothing else. I'm just Yeah, we'll get that sidebar issue fixed, but let's check the lobby. So, I guess next the next step would be to fix up the Let's see. I guess you want to add in some kind of pictures. You know, what we could do is just take a snapshot. I mentioned it earlier of just a screenshot of the stream and then present it. You meant, like you should not add comma in calc. Oh. Hmm. So dual saying copy and paste what I wrote. Hmm, interesting. That's a interesting thought. Let's just try it. I should never use calc. Say not to add a comma like that. So just be minus PPX because of the header bar.
Hold on, what did I do wrong here? Um, yeah, I mean, is that how, Abdul, is that what you're referring to? 100 viewport height minus 50 pixel. It's <laughs> freaking issues. Um, yeah, guys, I, unless there's something, something else, I think I'm pretty beat. I would, I could keep going. I just can't think. I guess let me, let me just, yeah, I'll just hang out in the chat and I'll think for a little bit. Um, could add some security measures with authentication. See some people just joining. Hey, Neon. All right. Yeah, I'm going to call it good. I'm out, guys. I'll, uh, I'll continue. I mean, leave me a comment. I mean, I guess I'll hang out for like one more minute. Let me know if you want me to continue this. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm just baffling. We're babbling here. If you want me to continue this, I can definitely do it. And I feel like a lot of people will. Um, the tutorial will come out. It's a full on, you know, Twitch like application where there's going to be live rooms. Like you can add rooms, screen share bring people up, talk to them. I don't know if this is going to be a full on real project or if we're just going to make a tutorial out of it. If I make a tutorial, maybe someone else in, you know, in the audience knows how to make it. If you make it good, I will promote it for you. I mean, I want a streaming platform for, for developers. I'm more than happy to find a cool product. It has to be good. Obviously I won't promote anything, but I am more than happy to present products not i'm not i don't need to build up myself I, i'd rather not actually <laughs> i enjoy what i do william price thank you add an option for private rooms yeah i mean that's easy that's that's personally i mean if you want, if you want private rooms you might as well start a discord i mean there's i don't it can do it but i don't i don't see any reason for that the whole point of this is to stream publicly like right now discord has no discoverability feature there's like when you uh, when you stream and you want to broadcast it, the only way you'd get people in on a Discord group is by sending out the link, tweeting it, whatever. And then I guess you could create public rooms, but it doesn't seem like there's that many people like searching for it. But if people know about this, why not promote it publicly? I mean, I guess if you like want to go into a private session with somebody, like a like a like a coaching or a tutoring session, that might make sense. Not private, but list, but not listed on the live list. Yeah, again, I don't, I don't, I don't see the point. I'm not saying I won't do it. It's an easy thing to implement, but I just feel like if you were to use Mumble, you would use it for that. Like you're trying to get discovered, or you're trying to get public help. I checked it. Add space after minus. Oh, I mean, that's what happened. Hey, there we go. Oh, you guys are awesome. Try script alert. Yeah, I already, I already did that. It won't work. But you are people were able to update their own, you know, add a, basically change their font size of their of their uh, text. <laughs> coding United said, coding is addictive. I have exams today, and I'm still building an API using fast API. Yeah. I mean, if you get into this, I was never a gamer. I was never into that, but this is definitely, definitely something that I enjoyed. Like I can see it that it was that addicting. I'd much rather do something like this in game. Not that I was ever into it, but it makes sense why a lot of gamers become programmers. All right. Let me, um, let me consider making a backend. I don't want to sit here and debug forever. Like I'd rather add features and then just fix that later. Yeah, inner HTML is not good. You're right. The reason why it's not good is because people can inject code directly into your application. Um, we're using it anyways. I'm not going to be focusing on all security features. But um, if I created a backend, 
Oh, message history. Uh, if I, okay, so with message history, there was this method. Basically what happens is the, I was gonna try to add the messages to the channel attributes, but instead of, instead of doing that, I, I add them to, what I could do is I can have the most senior method in the room, or I guess the host, but after the host leaves, you still want history. That person can store, that person can store the messages. I'm trying to figure out how the, this user would broadcast. How would you broadcast these messages out? There used to be an open source project. I don't know if I want to do that anymore. I mean, I could make it public, but I don't know if I'd make run it like an open source project. When I started Mumble originally, that's why I stopped it because I ended up just managing PRs all day and not getting work done. And 95% of them were not good PRs. And that's fine. I mean, people are learning. That's the whole purpose of it. But when you're trying to run a real project, it's not fun to try to fix it. What camera do you use for YouTube live streaming? It's a Canon. I mean, I don't know about cameras. I'm not that technical. But it's my wife's camera. She's a photographer, so we just use her camera. Feature that allows you to rewind a stream. It's actually not that hard. Not that hard. So you can, yeah, my stomach hurts now from sitting this long. Let me put my, take my pillow out from underneath me so I can get on my knees. I'm not like folded. Um, Let me just share, just do a screen share. If you, um, if you do that, what you could do is you can, you can simply record your stream. So there is, Agora does provide recording. So you can record and then, and then just play back that recording so you can store it as you're recording. So that would actually be easy. I'm assuming that's how it would be done. And it's an interesting thought because like, like just how you can do it on YouTube, like it's, or you can, I guess, not even record it. You can store the stream locally. I, yeah, I have no idea about that. I'll have to figure it out. If this does work though, I am going to start streaming from this platform and then I'll just push it out to YouTube. Okay. Let me think. I guess you guys get to see the real thought process here. Usually I'm taking a walk and thinking about this. Yeah, I mean, someone says I think storage would fill up pretty quick, You're right? Let me look up a few things. Give me, give me some time here. Live reaction, that's cool, actually. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, I, that was actually something I thought about. So basically, like here, the problem with a with a stream is I ask a question, and you know, not everybody's gonna want to type something out and, and post in the chat. But if you just have like, let's say at the bottom right here, let's let me share my screen again. Where did that go? Let's say at the bottom of your screen. You can just have like some kind of reactions right here that you can click. And it would just be like thumbs up, down, happy, sad, or whatever. So basically when I'm when I ask a question, instead of having to like type a message out, you can simply like, especially if you're on a phone, you can just hit something or like maybe I could even prompt a reaction. I don't know. Like just throw them into the chat so you can interact with them in here. Like, well, actually, no, then it would mess up the feed. But anyways, yeah, that's definitely a thought like live reactions while you're streaming. 
Because that's that's kind of the issue with the YouTube thing is I guess you have to chat or you have to write everything out. Let's see what's William Price saying. I said I know that Twitch has recording of every stream you do, so it didn't so it shouldn't be hard to implement it. Yeah, I mean recording is easy. That's like I said, Agora already has that. I can I'll just use that. It's the live recording. Still trying to think of the, the chat history. You know, honestly, I feel like just building a backend and storing that in an ape. Well, like if you use Redis or something like that, like an in memory database, then you can just store it there and present it. You make clips shareable. I'm just trying to figure out how to basically like if, if the most senior member is is storing the, the chat messages, so let's say you only have one user responsible st for storing the messages. And then how would you broadcast? Okay, so to broadcast them out to a new member, you can simply send them a message that says, hey, well, you know, like, like a welcome message, here are the most previous messages, and then just display them. But what happens when that senior member leaves? You basically have to pass on those messages to the next member and then that part that functionality just seems like it gets pretty tricky yeah all right guys i'm i'm done um i don't want to build that today and and i'm just wasting everyone's time but thank you all for being in the stream for watching whoever joined in, in chat it's awesome to be able to do this um i'll probably do it again soon and add to it yeah um havan let's connect man you seem like you have <laughs> solutions for everything I'll have to reach out to you on, I think on GitHub is where I'll find you. But if anything, I'll rewatch the stream and see what your account was. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. Or I guess it's a good night for me, but.